Morning. Morning. Meeting is now called to order. May we hear a motion of Marilu? Um, motion to for for what, ma'am? For the best calling of the roll. A uh, motion to um defer. Defer. to what? I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't hear you. To dispense. Motion to dispense the calling of the roll. Ma motion to suspend the calling of the roll. That's right. Okay. Second the motion. There's a motion. To Thank you, Congato. Yeah, there's a motion to dispense the calling of the roll. Second that. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is. May I call on Mom's on paper? Yes, that's well done. Our heads. Almighty God, as we embrace another briefing, we ask that you guide us today in this national vaccination program of the government. Give first persons and experts the know how and the answers to finally put an end to this virus. Please guide us all who are working daily to deliver an effective and safe vaccine. Help them be instruments of new knowledge regarding the secrets of this virus. We also ask that you protect all of us in our families. Expand our faith and buoy our hopes as we shelter in place. Lord, teach us how to wait patiently for you are on all time. All this we ask in the mighty name of your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, I would like to recognize first the members and resource persons present for today's hearing. We have a representative... Rida Robes, our Vice Chair, Representative Maria Lourdes Arroyo, Representative Mohamed Khalid Dimaporo, Representative Adrian Ebkas, our member, our Deputy Speaker, Representative Lauren Legarda, Representative Diego Nonoiti, our Deputy Speaker, Representative Rosemary Arenas, Representative Rufi Biazon, our Deputy Speaker, Representative Evelina Escudero, Representative Suryako Jun Gato, who's also a member, Representative Irene Saulog, our member, Representative Ruth Hernandez, our Vice Chair, Representative Ann Hofer, a member, um, Representative Joseph Stephen Carabs Paduano, our minor, Minority Leader, Representative Princess Sakaluran, Representative Hector Sanchez, Representative Dalia Loyola, our ex-officio ex member, Representative Janet Garin, Representative uh, Sean Akop, our vice chair, Representative Euphemia Kalyamat from the minority, Representative Franz Castro from minority, um, Representative Ging Swansea, also a member, and Representative Leo Cueva. Our resource persons, uh, we have from the Department of Health, the Secretary, Secretary Francisco Duque III, from uh, uh, can you turn off your, uh, or can you mute your gadget? Okay. Uh, from the FD, also from the DOH, USEC, Mirna Cabotaje, Yusek Maria Rosario Vergere. Uh, from the FDA, we have DG Eric Domingo. Uh, from the DOH, also Attorney Jehan Dizon. We have Attorney Pamela Herrera Sanchez. From RITM, we have Dr. Celia Carlos. From the HTAC or Health Technology Assessment Council, Dr. Marita Reyes. From the National Task Force Against COVID-19, our vaccine czar, Secretary Carlito Galvez, Jr. We've also invited a representative from our World Health Organization, Dr. Rabai. From the DBM, we have Director Marianne de la Vega and uh, Just Rex Abejero. From the Department of Finance, we have USEC Mark Dennis Hoven. From the DILG, we have USEC Epimaco Densing. 
We have invited also representative from Union of Local, Local Authorities of the Philippines, um, League of Municipalities of the Philippines, and League of Provinces of the Philippines, uh, League of Cities of the Philippines. So we will call on later kasi hindi pa po sila naka-register. From the DFA, we have ASEAN Eric Tamayo from International Economic Relations. Uh, from the DND, we have Yusek Ricardo Halad, Administrator of OCD. From DOST, we have Dr. Jaime Montoya, Executive Director of PCHRD. From the Vaccine Expert Panel, we have ASEC Clea Buendia uh, from Research and Development. We also have Dr. Nina Gloriani, uh, part of the Vaccine Expert Panel. And uh, from PMA, we have the President, Dr. Benito Achenza. And uh, we also have the Chairperson of the Ad Hoc Committee on Vaccination of the PMA, Dr. Lulu Bravo. Also with us is Attorney, Attorney Leo Olarte. From Philippine Associations of Medical Technologies, Inc., we have the President, Mr. Romel Saceda. From the University of the Philippines National Institute of Health, from Institute of Molecular Biology and Biotechnology, we have Dr. Edsel Salvania. From the Philippine Foundation for Vaccination, we have Dr. Maria Liza Gonzalez, and Philippine Society for Microbiology and Infectious Diseases, we have Dr. Marisa Alejandria. We also have Right now, Governor Presbytero Terio Velasco, the president of LLP and our former Supreme Court Justice. Good morning, everyone. Um, good morning again to the honorable members and my colleagues from the Committee on Health, our distinguished, distinguished resource persons headed by Secretary Francisco Duque III, and National Task Force Against COVID-19 Chief Implementer and Vaccine Czar, Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. Again, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. I wish to welcome all of you in today's briefing on the Philippine National COVID-19 Vaccine Roadmap. And please allow me to thank you for sharing with us your precious time and to discuss the ongoing preparations of the government for the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. I was recently reviewing my notes and I realized that it's almost a year now when the issue about the, the, about the then creeping pandemic was brought right into the plenary of this August chamber, which was followed by a question hour with Secretary Duque the following day. It's been almost a year since I delivered the privileged speech about the emergence of deadly coronavirus, not yet referred as COVID-19 at that time, and when only 81 people in China were reportedly killed with almost 2,800 confirmed ill at that particular day. No reported case in the country was reported then, but now of course the rest is history. As we speak, the country is now over 500,000 threshold of COVID-19 cases and ne nearly 10,000 deaths among our people. The UK variant is now also with us as an addition to the crisis. All throughout since the different phases of the lockdown, we have been praying hard and waiting patiently for a time when a vaccine against this pandemic will finally be developed. And to our great relief and thank God, although it has to be underscored that vaccine is, the, is not the cure-all or the ultimate panacea to this pandemic, the time has come that an inoculation against COVID-19 is ready, which we must all welcome and seize in order to uphold and protect the right of our people to health. The United Kingdom, as we all know, became the first country in the world to start administer administering an up to phase three trial and tested COVID-19 vaccine and many other countries followed suit since early part of the year. And so, this being comes in light of the need to expedite the COVID-19 immunization program, as well as ensure that it is safe 
and effective and that all agencies concerned are on the same page. As a medical doctor and chairperson of the committee, I would like to say that the safety, the health and well-being of the Filipinos more than anything else should be our primordial concern. We cannot afford make we cannot afford to make mistakes at this critical juncture in our fight against this pandemic. We have to be an, on time for the COVID-19 inoculation drive. We need the vaccine to roll out to be prepared without compromising its safety and efficacy in order to build the trust and confidence of the public. President himself recent pronouncement that the Philippines is at the tail end of the line for the coronavirus vaccines should give us the urgency to act swiftly but cautiously. It should, it should serve as a marching order for all of us, especially those in the task force, to seize the day, to get our acts together, and deliver that significant portion of protection against this raging pandemic to, of our people or to our people. So today, the committee will hear presentations from the Department of Health and the Office of the Secretary, of Secretary Galvez on the National COVID-19 Vaccination Roadmap. The committee is also interested to know, among others, vital information on supply, allocation, distribution, and administration of vaccines. In this respect, I believe that the government should be guided by common principles in delivering COVID-19 vaccination program. Firstly, the government decision-making on COVID-19 vaccine use in the Philippines should be based on science, independent regulatory review, and advice of medical and other experts to establish and maintain public confidence in the process to authorize, procure, administer, and monitor vaccines. Transparency is essential. Reliable, comprehensive, and transparent information about all aspects of development, evaluation, recommended use, and the surveillance and monitoring of vaccines is fundamental in order to support public trust. Misinformation threatens public health and safety by undermining confidence in science and vaccines and public health authorities. Messaging and engagement with the public should be informative and designed to support public confidence with consideration given to using accessible language and culturally safe approaches to vaccine delivery. Public involvement is also critical. People are at the center of effective immunization programs. This means that engaging communities, non-government organizations, indigenous organizations and other people's organizations in dialogue and understanding their needs is essential to how the government plan immunization strategies. Moreover, there is a need for all or for overall coherence in approaches to and communication regarding immunization based on scientific and epidemiological evidence while allowing for adaptability and flexibility in immunization planning and implementation on the ground. Finally, fair and equitable access to vaccines underpins government's overall approach to immunization. In the same breath, consistent reporting and timely access to data is essential to an effective pandemic vaccine response. Public health systems need timely and accurate information to monitor program implementation and inform decision making. Ultimately, the committee is committed to contribute through legislation to the success of a national vaccine program so that it can be carried out by the concerned agencies as efficiently, equitably, and effectively as possible. The development of COVID-19 vaccine opens an important period in our fight against the pandemic and bolster the preventive aspect in the, in the delivery of the health care to our people as promised under Universal Health Care Act. The Department of Health and the National Task Force Against COVID-19, together with our panel of experts, are here with us today to unveil that roadmap in a hope that together 
we will be able to walk hand in hand along that road for us to be able to transcend this present crisis and navigate the era of a new normal towards new future, the normalcy that we have all been aspiring for and hopefully that will happen in the soonest possible time. Let me thank our honorable speaker, Speaker Lord Alan Velasco for taking the lead in calling this important briefing today. Now to move on on today's briefing, we will be hearing some presentations which will be followed by question and answer. I would like to request the members to register with the secretariat if they want to profound or profound questions and clarifications on a first come first serve basis. Also, may I ask if you can allow the presenters to wind up with their presentation before asking question. Let us also avoid unnecessary interruptions in the presentation as much as possible. From the list of those who registered with the Secretariat, we will implement the majority minority rule, which will be one minority followed by five majority in order of asking questions. Each representative shall have five minutes to propound their questions. And should you wish to ask more questions, you may register again with the Secretariat. We will also discourage interjections and suggest that each representative to wait for their turn. Um, before I call on the first presenter, I'd like to greet first happy birthday to Director General Dr. Eric Domingo of FDA and uh, Yusek Lilibet David of the Department of Health and our PLLO from DOH, uh, Sir Justine. Okay. May I call on Secretary Galvez for the presentation? Secretary? Yes, Madam. Yeah, to the Committee on Health and Chairperson, a Congress, Congresswoman Dr. Angelina Helen Tan, and members of the House of Committee on Health, Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, and also to our better celebrant, uh, uh, BG Eric Domingo, my fellow cabinet members, other public servants, and other invited guests, good morning. Uh, Madam, with your permission, can I share my slides? Go ahead, sir. Madam, can you see my slides now, Your Honor? Yes, sir. Please proceed. On behalf of the National Task Force Against COVID-19 and also uh, with the IAPF Chairman, uh, Secretary Francisco Duque III, thank you for giving us this opportunity to brief and update the members of the House on the government's current efforts to vaccinate the Filipino people under the leadership of our President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. My presentation will uh, be as shown. I will discuss on a vision mission, the vaccine roadmap strategic framework, the significant updates and the challenges in good practices and lessons learned from other countries. The three-year Philippine National Roadmap is guided by the President Rodrigo Roa Duterte's declaration to provide the Filipino people safe, effective, and free vaccines for all, particularly poor communities. Following the guidance of the President, the vision of the Philippine National Vaccine Roadmap is to save more lives, recover our economy, and restore normalcy in the lives of the Filipino people. Its mission is to effectively establish a fully, fully integrated vaccine de deployment and immunization program against COVID-19, adopting a whole of nation, a whole of society approach. Our ultimate goal here is to protect the public and reduce mortality rates due to the pandemic. To sum it up, the Philippine National Vaccine Roadmap aims to save more lives. This slide shows the vaccine roadmap strategic framework, which outlines the key considerations in selecting the vaccines, 
the processes that shall be undertaken and the desired end state to be achieved. This will serve as our strategic guide to effectively vaccinate our citizens. As an update on the major stages of the roadmap, we are now in the thick of the negotiations, the procurement process, and preparation of the logistics requirement and implementation of the presidented massive nationwide vaccine vaccination program. You will see in the next two weeks, we will be visit, visiting the different mayors of Metro Manila, and we will also visit the different cold chains in RITM and also in Yulinab and Sui League and other service providers. The roadmap is subdivided into four phases in operational cycle, namely assessment, planning, preparation, and execution. Our current critical tasks in bold letters are simultaneously being undertaken. We are now in the preparations of initial rollout and clinical trials during the first quarter of 2021. And this slide shows the potential rollout of the portfolio of our vaccine and also the indicative uh, dates of their coming in. It is expected that we can start our rollout this first, quest, this first quarter in February with the rollout of COVAX vaccines, either Pfizer, AstraZeneca, or j, j and the Sinovac. Our main volumes will be coming from Novavax with 30 to 40 million doses, Pfizer with 25 to 40 million doses, AstraZeneca with 17 to 20 million doses, Sinovac and Gamalaya with 25 million each. We might be receiving more or less 40 million doses from COVAX, from 20 to 23 million people to be benefited. The main bulk of the vaccine will be rolled out at the third quarter and fourth quarter of this year, considering that there is a shortfall of a supply chain during the first quarter and uh, the first second quarter. This is a global, global, and a global reality. In order to guide us in the implementation of major components of our national deployment and vaccination roadmap, these slides show the Gantt chart of the key milestone that we have set per component for next 100 days. The next slide will discuss more on the updates on the achievements of these key milestones. Shown is the organizational structure of the vaccine cluster under the NTF and the IATF. The vaccine cluster is composed of an exocom and six task group and accompanying three different technical advisory groups. Yung advisory group po nito, ito po yung mga ating mga medical expert at saka mga vaccine expert. So yung mga decision bago tayo kumuha ng bakuna ay talaga pong pinag-aaralan ng tatlong separate group po nito. With the president guidance to vaccinate all Filipinos, the National Task Force and DOH came up with a deployment, deployment strategy with geographical and sectoral consideration. We will designate focus targeted areas, priority sectors, and multiple access using the public-private partnership in order to immediately contain and provide consumer confidence and achieve economic recovery. Now we will go on the significant updates of our preparations and ongoing negotiations. The task group on vaccine selection and evaluation is now working with 25 bilateral partners, foreign biotechnology and pharmaceutical companies in 10 different countries that are willing to conduct clinical trials, do local manufacturing, and distribute and offer their vaccines in the country. This slide explains the stages of vaccine development and regulatory approval. Ito po yung trabaho po ni DG Eric Domingo, ang ating pong birthday celebrant. From preclinical trial, phase one to three, clinical trials, the pathway for the regulatory approval by the FDA on the emergency use authorization and certification of product registration. We wanted to emphasize that each vaccine had to undergo a stringent regulatory process before a vaccine can be cleared as safe and effective. <laughs> The Philippines will participate in the WHO Solidarity Vaccine Trials as part of its commitment in contributing to the global effort in addressing the COVID-19 pandemic. This clinical trial involving 15,000 people 
of vaccines will serve as a mini rollout and uh, some sort of an observa observation rehearsal for our immunization program. This will be handled jointly by the NTF, the DOST, DOH, and the UPPGH. It's a quote, clinical trial, pero gagawin po natin, we can observe this as a, some sort of an um, tinatawag po natin uh, yung observation uh, rehearsal para makita po natin kung paano po ang gagawin. So before the rollout, meron na po tayong tinatawag na ginagawang model. Madam Chairperson, Your Honors, the reality is that more than 80% of the global supply has already been pre-procured by rich countries. The 2% has been procured by COVAX. So we have only remaining 18%. So we along with other countries are now trying our best to negotiate with different vaccine companies to get a fair share of the vaccines for the remaining 18% of global supply. You can see at the right hand side, nakita po natin yung mga ibang countries that they bought more than their population. Canada, seven times. Australia, 5.4 times. And nakita po natin yung iba ay may gitna dalawa or uh, more, than, more than twice uh, their population. Shown is the update of the global vaccine tracker, which provides the development of vaccines under phase three trials and indicated approval for emergency use for only six brands of vaccine, namely Pfizer-BioNTech, Moderna, AstraZeneca, Sinopharm, Sinovac, and Gamalaya. In the Philippines, through executive order number 121, series of 2020, Vaccines under development can be granted an EUA or emergency use authorization when, when there is no adequate approved and available alternative to achieve to a vaccine for preventing COVID-19 during this present public health emergency. The granting of the EUA is not a marketing authorization or certification of product registration. Hence, this cannot be used to market the vaccine commercially. American pharmaceutical firm Pfizer was the first to apply for EUA on 23 December 2021, followed by the British Swede pharmaceutical firm AstraZeneca. Russia's Gamaleya Institute applied for authorization of its Sputnik vaccine on January 7, and the China Sinovac applied for emergency use authorization in the Philippines on 13 January 2021. Shown are the different vaccines which are with have emergency use authorization with their originating country. Indicated also are the countries that have already pre-ordered for these vaccines. These are the Russian and Chinese vaccines with many countries have already been pre-ordered and they have also an early use authorization from their originating countries. To ensure that the Philippines will have immediate access to vaccine, the government is utilizing several modes of procurement, namely the national budget through our GAA, the bilateral or the government to government financing, tripartite agreement with private sector and LGU, and again, multilateral arrangement with the Asian Development Bank and the local banks. At this point, I would like to make a bit more time to explain the tripartite agreement being entered by the into by the national government. The pharmaceutical companies, the private sector, and the LGUs can undergo the tripartite agreement. The urgent task we have at hand is to secure supply and accelerate the procurement of safe and effective vaccines for all Filipinos given the immense challenges and supply limitation. Thus, through the national government's whole of nation approach policy and the innovation it has initiated, LGUs and private sector can now have procured COVID-19 vaccine doses. The Philippine situation now must be understood in the light of very limited global supply of vaccines, where every country in the world is seeking to gain access to vaccines and where 80% of available supply had already been taken by richest countries. Knowing there is a limited supply our policy is to build portfolio of safe and effective vaccines and working with the private sector 
and our local government units because gaining access to more vaccine manufacturers and more partners enable us to secure more supply for our countrymen. Given there is not enough supply yet, the Philippine national government approach is to pull national volumes to get a seat at the negotiating table and secure the most number of vaccines at the best prices with our partners in the private sector and the LGUs. Pooling demand enables us to negotiate at a lower price for larger volume. For the information of our house, house uh, members, your honors, yun lahat po ng mga manufacturing company, they volunteered that their product will be, sell, will be sold at cost. Meaning, sabihin po, very minimal po ang profit margin. Meaning, in this time of pandemic, WHO have guided them that they will only sell at a very best price at cost. Looking at the experiences of other countries in the world, you will see that centralized national procurement is the prevailing approach globally for both developed and, and developing markets. The US produces vaccine supply at federal levels at all assets. The EU procures vaccine supply for all 27 member states. The UK procures vaccine supply for all UK nation, England, Scotland, and Ireland. India procures vaccine supply at the national level for all states and union territories. Indonesia procures vaccine supply at the national level for all states. Argentina procures vaccine supply at the national level for all provinces. These are all for the following reasons. Given the limited global supply, it is the best interest of a country to pull its demand in order to gain access and negotiate for a lower price. To fulfill government responsibility, to ensure equitable distribution, and lastly, to comply and align with existing regulation on the use and sale of vaccines across countries. So ito po, to ano po, dito bang po na sinasabi po nila na minomonopolize po ng national government ang pagbili ng ating mga vaccine. Pero under EUA po, uh, ang mga vaccine maker ay authorized lang pong lumapit with the government. As part of the national government full of nation approach to deal with limited global supply of vaccine, it has innovated a solution allowing other parties like the private sector and the LGU to immediately purchase, secure vaccines and augment the country's supply. The tripartite agreement, which is the first of its kind in the world, enables the national government in partnership with the LGU and the private sector to unlock the best, the best prices for vaccines, gain access to more supply and dramatically explain, expand to the sectors that can be vaccinated. This model allowed the National Task Force Against COVID-19 to do more with less. All in all, the national government earmarked a total of 82.5 billion for the procurement of the vaccine, broken down as follows. 70 billion pesos from foreign, foreign bilateral and multilateral loans, 2.5 billion from the DOH fund of our GAA and 10 billion for the continuing cooperations of Bayanihan 2. We'd like to thank the Congress for the extension of the Bayanihan 2. Aside from the, our bilateral negotiation, the Philippine stands to receive fully subsidized doses of 20% of the country's population or roughly 22 million Filipinos through the COVAX facility, which can be deployed earlier by first quarter. The COVAX vaccine that will be given to us, 20%, will be free. We have been pursuing a portfolio strategy and negotiating with seven vaccine manufacturers. These are the Serum Institute of India for Novavax, AstraZeneca of UK, Pfizer of the US and Germany, Janssen or Johnson & Johnson of the US and Belgium, Moderna of the US, Sinovac of China, and Gamalaya of Russia. This proves that we are not favoring anyone, particularly any brand or country. While we cannot yet disclose the numbers of orders, we are assuring the public that we, we will have a fair mix of vaccines options. 
But we want to again emphasize that one, only those vaccines endorsed by the vaccine expert panel will be purchased. And number two, only those issued with the emergency use authorization by the FDA will be administered by the DOH. With regard to the prices of vaccine, we also want to assure the public that the negotiation will result in the best price available given our total volumes. In conclusion, the government will strive to meet its target of 148 million doses of safe and effective vaccine this year at the earliest possible time. We are talking to multiple vaccine manufacturers and our vaccine expert panel and the FDA will ensure the safety and efficacy of the vaccines for our people. For this year, this roadmap is eyeing to inoculate between 50 to 70 million Filipinos so that we can save more lives and recover our economy. On this slide shown is the complex and cold chain and the logistical arrangement that will be ensured that vaccines will be distributed to target areas in our archipelagic country. The DOH is now partnering with the private sector to ensure that the delivery of the vaccine goes unhampered through a supply agreements with the vaccine companies and a culture and third party logistics service providers. The DOH together with its partner agencies have already developed the national vaccination and development plan and initiated the establishment of the incident command system at all levels. This is very important since the local government units are the implementers of the vaccination program and the actual administering of the vaccine will take place in cities, municipalities down to barangays. Shown also is the structure of the COVID-19 Vaccination Operation Center or the War Room in order to synchronize all campaigns activities down to the city and municipal levels. Shown also is the COVID-19 Operation Center timeline and their deliverables from the preparatory period implementation phase and post-implementation phase. This being undertaken and prepared by the DOH in relation with their deployment with the different LGUs. The national plans are cascaded from the national to the regional down to the local government units. Likewise, regional and LGU counterparts are required to do a macro and micro planning. These plans and the implementation of these plans shall then be regularly assessed and monitored at the regional and national level. In the deployment of the vaccines, our strategy will have geographical and sectoral consideration. For priority population, we will prioritize the health workers to preserve and protect the healthcare system, then the poor and the vulnerable sector, the frontliners and essential public and private workers, including OFWs, seafarers, low-income earners, and other workers. This framework shows the various drivers to improve citizen motivation and public uptake for COVID-19 vaccine. This framework also intends to address the impact of the Deng Baksha controversy. Nakita po natin na pababa po, na pababa ang public uptake from 66%. Now I think the, the latest service is 32%. This is a continuing challenge for all of us, particularly on communication and information time. On communication and community engagement, this will include televised weekly briefing every Wednesday, updating and scale up of Vida Solution, the COVID-19 thematic campaign, alongside the need for continued minimum public health standards and dedicated web pages. Town hall meetings and trainings, both online and face-to-face, -face, shall be conducted to multiply champions of vaccination and capacitate our, our healthcare workers to respond to questions from the community. Now we will now go to the challenges and good practices lessons learned from other countries. At this juncture, I would like to share that we have also seen looking at the experiences of other countries to see what we can learn from their rollouts for consideration in our plan. 
A number of countries across the globe have begun their vaccination rollout as early as December 20. These countries are mainly rich countries, which provided a huge amount of funding for the, de for the development of the vaccine. All in all, there are 42 of them, and the majority of them came from the high-income countries. Challenges that have been encountered are many at the different levels in US, UK, Germany, and EU. Shown are the different analytic tools to record all the lapses, the gaps, and lessons learned from all the mistakes of other countries. Ranging from administration, distribution of supplies, communication, and public uptake. Let us now look more closely at the case of Israel, which has shown early successes. Israel started its deployment on December 20, 2020. By January 2021, it had already administered doses to 12% of its population. He attributes its success to early preparations, efficient and highly digitized healthcare system, prescriptive registration of all adults, and effective centralized command and control. The following are the potential early learnings from the first few weeks of vaccine deployment in other countries in which we are closely watching and learning, particularly in large-scale rehearsals and integrated command and control. Finally, from the very start of this pandemic, our president has pushed for a whole of nation approach. The implementation of the national vaccination program is not a sole responsibility of the national government. This must be a hoop of government, a whole of nation approach. To ensure efforts are synchronized and integrated, there must be a strong leadership and governance starting from the president, the IATF, the National Task Force, with the DOH and the DILG playing crucial roles in exercising command and control with a strong participation of the supportive academic societies, engaged government agencies and the private sector, highly committed LGUs and LCEs, adequately informed communities, and then last and foremost, well-prepared health system, both the private and the public. It is only through this that we can implement a sustainable immunization program essential to start economic recovery and restore normalcy in the lives of the Filipino people. In closing, I just wanted to emphasize the instruction of the president that we are not safe until everyone is safe. He always says to us that walang may iwan, walang iwanan. So ang lahat po ng LG po natin at ang ating mga local government units, hindi po namin iiwanan. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay po tayong lahat, Your Honors. Thank you very much, Your Honors. Maraming salamat, Secretary Galvez. Before I call on Secretary Duque, may I recognize first the presence of our members. Um, Representative Arlene Brosas, Representative uh, Lucille Nava, Representative uh, Micaela Villago, our member, Representative Alberto Pacquiao, our member, Representative Ron Salo, Representative Precious Hippolito Castello, Representative Carlo Zarate, Representative Stella Kimbo, also a member, Representative Angelica Natasha Ko, a member, Representative of Representative Cheryl Montalia is also a member, Representative Hill Acosta Jr., uh, also a member, our Deputy Speaker, Representative uh, D.V. Savelliano, Vice Chair, Representative Michael Defensor, Representative Leanda Bolilia, Representative Maricel Nagano, our Vice Chair, Representative Presley De Jesus, also a member, our Vice Chair, Representative Joette Garcia, Representative Dan Fernandez, Representative Faustino Michael D, Representative Edgar Chato, Representative Fernand Gaite, our Deputy Speaker, Representative Henry Iwaminal, Representative Teddy Haresco, Representative B.H. Herrera, uh, Deputy Speaker Rep. Strike Revilla, 
representative, our deputy speaker, uh, Ferdy Hernandez, and representative uh, Isidro Ungab. Would like to call on Secretary uh, Duque for his presentation. You have the floor, sir. Yes, thank you very much uh, to the Honorable uh, Representative Helen Tan uh, and members uh, of the Committee on Health. At iba pa po mga uh, mambabatas na kalahok po uh, sa ating po pagpupuno ngayong araw. Secretary Galvez, sa mga kasamahan sa ibang uh, national government agencies, partners and colleagues, I am pleased to present to you today the Department of Health's Strategic Plan for COVID-19 vaccination, as well as the National Deployment and Vaccination Plan. Patalakayan po natin ngayon ang vision, mission, goals, and objectives, pati na rin po operational details ng ating National Vaccine Deployment and Vaccination Plan, kasama na rin po ang proseso para sa selection, procurement, distribution, and post-vaccination monitoring. Many of these aspects of our plan are already well underway, which will enable our vaccinations to commence by February of this year. On the first matter of this presentation, the DOH strategic plan for COVID-19 vaccination, which I will uh, share with uh, the honorable members of uh, the House of Representatives. Malino po atin layunin to have safe, equitable and cost-effective immunization for all Filipinos by 2023. The many counts of this plan are already set in motion. Our vaccination deployment will start in the first quarter of this year at bibigyan po natin ng pagpapahalaga ang atin mga healthcare workers, frontliners, and vulnerable population. To achieve this, it is our mission to institutionalize an end-to-end -end immunization program for COVID-19, which will protect the public and reduce COVID-19 cases and deaths. Based on our current negotiations, we are on track to provide the immunization services to 50 to 70 million Filipinos, provided the global supply of vaccines are sustained or hopefully even increased within the year. Kung kakayanin ng mga manufacturer na atin na enlist, best case scenario ay mga makakamit natin ang herd immunity ngayong pong taon. Again, underscoring if there is enough global supply. Napaka-importante rin po ng pagpapalakas ng vaccine confidence ng ating kapwa Pilipino. The effectivity of vaccines has been proven by science time and time again. And yet many of our kababayan have dwindling trust in vaccines. And so as to work to generate high demands for the availment of these novel vaccines, napaka-importante po rin siguraduhin ang safety ng immunization program at bantayan at aksyonan ng maagap ang mga posible kinatawag natin adverse events following immunization. Maglalagay din po tayo ng overarching governance, regulatory, financing and performance accountability measures para sa isang sustainable and coordinated immunization program. Dito po, makikita po natin ang um, ating mga strategiya para makamit ang ating mga objectives. Una, para ma-establish ang access to immunization services, meron po tayong national deployment and vaccination plan para sa isang whole of sector, the whole of government, and whole of society implementation. I will discuss more of this plan shortly. Nakapag-training na rin po tayo ng mga healthcare workers para ayanda sila sa implementasyon ng ating programa. Sunod, we hope to secure sufficient demand for the immunization program by closely coordinating with implementing units such as the LGUs, other national government agencies, development partners, and the private sector. Even as we endeavor to ensure the vaccine we procure is safe, and effective. We also face the reality that this is a novel development, a novel vaccine. Hence, we are also laying down mechanisms to monitor and manage possible adverse reactions of the COVID-19 vaccine. Magkakaroon po tayo ng COVID-19 national 
regional adverse event following immunization or AV committees at isang centralized national AV surveillance system para sa isang coordinated vaccine safety, surveillance, and response. Maglalatan po tayo ng oversight mechanism para siguraduhin sa ayon sa ating protocols ang buong end-to-end -end process ng vaccination deployment sa national, regional, and local levels sa tulong ng ating vaccination operating centers or DOC. Ang national deployment and vaccination plan ang siyang magiging end-to-end -end guide para po sa mga implementers tulad ng ating mga local government units. Dito po makikita ang mga chapters. No? We have eight or seven uh, chapters or stages in our national deployment and vaccination plan. Gaya po nang naipresenta ni Secretary Galvez, meron po tayong streamlined scientific evaluation and selection process kung saan ang ating health experts ay nagbibigay ng rigorous and biased assessments mga kandidatong makuna gamit ang WHO criteria for COVID-19 vaccine prioritization at ang atin WHO target product profiles for COVID-19 vaccines para maibigay ang best possible vaccine para sa sambayan ng Pilipino. Meron na tayong nalagdaan mga kasunduan upang masecure ang supply allocation ng vaccines para sa bansa. Kabilang po dito ang mga agreement sa pagkipagtulungan ng LGUs at pribadong sektor. Kamakailan lamang, nag-issue na rin po ng emergency use authorization ng ating FDA para sa Pfizer. Datagdag pa yan rito, tayo ay nasa advanced stage na rin po ng negosasyon kasama ang Novavax, Pfizer, and Johnson and Johnson at Gamaleya. Pinutupak po natin ang ating deployment based sa prioritization list at scoping ng vaccine manufacturers para mabuo ang ating vaccination roadmap. The vaccine deployment and vaccination, however, is largely dependent on the global supply of vaccines available for the Philippines, the country's ability to access them, and on the application of manufacturers for emergency use authorization. Noong kung Disyembre uh, nakaraan taon, Nakapag-site visit na po tayo sa tatlong third-party logistics providers para ma-assess ang kanilang cold storage at iba pang technical specification. Lalo na sa para sa mapakunan uh, na ang ilangan ng negative temperature cold storage, the COVID-19 vaccines will be distributed to the 17 DOH Centers for Health Development across the country. At mula nyo po, i-distribute po ang ating bakuna sa iba't ibang lo local government units, hospitals, at iba pang identified health facilities na na-assess para sa pag-implementa ng vaccination program. To cater to the three cold chain temperature requirements, namely, number one, yung po na ang ilangan ng positive 2 degrees centigrade up to 8 degrees centigrade. Pangalawa po, inaangailangan ng negative 20 degrees centigrade. At pangatlo po, ang pinakasalimuot, o ika nga pinakasophisticated o komplikado na cold temperature requirement ay yung negative 70 degrees centigrade. Ito po yung mga scenarios based uh, uh, planning uh, na dinevelop po ng inyong DOH. Sa kasalukuyan, meron na po tayong kapasidad na ika-accommodate ang 2 degrees centigrade to 8 degrees centigrade at ang negative 20 degrees centigrade gamit ang existing cold chain structures ng ating pong, uh, kasalukuyang National Immunization Program or NIP. Distribution shall follow the pathway for the routine vaccines from the national cold storage up to the service delivery points. Nanikipag-usap pa rin po tayo sa third party logistics providers para naman po sa mga vaccines na may negative 70 degrees storage requirement, lalo na po di hamak o mas komplikado ang kinakailangan distribution mechanism para dito. Makikita po, rin, makikita po natin ang kabuuan ng distribution and deployment process dito. Magkakaroon po tayo ng simulation activities 
lalo-lalo na sa mga lugar na may matataas na kaso ng COVID-19. Magpapilot po tayo ng ating mga proseso para sa pag-profile, screening, and registration gamit ang isang digital platform. Gagamitin po natin ang fixed post-vaccination strategy where we utilize our health facilities as vaccination sites gamit ang isang modelo na kawing sa ating mga COMELEC election poll sites. Critical din po ang tatlong M ng ating nationwide vaccination. Ito po ang master listing, a micro planning, and mapping of vaccination sites and teams. Kasama ng Department of uh, Information, Communications, uh, Technology, gagawa po tayo ng isang online platform para i-generate ang master list ng individual sa bawat LGU na kasama sa priority groups. Napaka-importante rin po ng micro-planning kasama ng ating mga LGUs para masigurado na hindi lamang tama ang ating pag i kung hindi ang kutbin po ito sa pangailangan ng ating mga kababayan sa iba't ibang lugar. We also have to finalize our mapping of vaccination sites and teams in order to ensure there are sufficient resources and to register the members of the vaccine teams. However, in order to properly scale up our human resources, we have to look into including other professionals in the vaccination workforce. Ang ating vaccination plan ay pangungunahan ng vaccination teams at AEFI or AESI, hindi po sabihin, adverse events of special interest and uh, adverse uh, events following immunization composite teams. Ang bawat vaccination team ay bukulihin ng mga sumusunod na staff. Dalawang either physician, nurse, midwife para sa screening and assessment, isang allied health professional or volunteer para sa health education, isa either a physician, nurse, midwife mula sa RHU para sa vaccination proper, and dalawa po either midwife, barangay health worker, health staff, volunteers from partner agencies para sa documentation, recording, and vital signs taking. Sa kapilang baku naman, ang bawat AEFI or AESI composite team ay bubuhin na isang paramedic or nurse or midwife para monitoring, <clears throat> isang surveillance officer or nurse or midwife or pharmacist para po sa surveillance. Sisikapin ng ating bawat vaccination team na, magpa, na makapagbakuna ng isang daang pasyente kada araw. Ang pagbabakuna ay gagalapit sa mga fixed vaccination posts tulad ng mga medical centers, hospitals, and infirmaries, rural health units, <coughs> health facilities of other NGAs, alimbawa ang AFP hospitals and facilities, ang BJFP or Bucor health facilities, ang deaf ed clinics, at private clinics, at sisimulan din po ang amin uh, pangitipag-ugnayan sa Department of Education kung pwede matagdagan ang ating pong mga fixed site vaccination posts sa mga uh, ilan o piling mga uh, public elementary schools. Ang ating pong pagbabakuna ay magkakaroon ng limang bahagi. Ito po, as a slide, una sa registration, iscan ang QR code na binigay ng pre-registration process at ipapasa ang mga documentary requirements health declaration forms, and informed consent forms. Napaka mahalaga ang ating pong informed consent form. Wala pong pinitan uh, sa pagbibigay bakuna. Sa pre-vaccination health education at final consent, sasailalim sa counseling ang mga mamakunahan at magkakaroon po sila ng pagkakataon ang tanong ukol sa bakuna at mga posibleng mga adverse effects nito. Dito rin ipapalabas ang isang video presentation ukol sa bakuna. Pagkatapos sa screening, kukunin ang medical history ng mga babakunahan at sasailalim sa physical examination. Pag-apat sa vaccination, sisiguraduhin na nakumpleto ng pasyente ang checklist para babakunahan. 
Pagkatapos, bibigyan sila ng immunization card kung saan po nakatala ang mga detalye ng kanilang pagbabakuna. Halimbawa, petsa ng pagbabakuna. Pag-ilang dose. Petsa ng pangalawang dose at iba pa. Sa post-vaccination monitoring, surveillance, and reporting or recording, o observahan ang mga napakunahan sa kung sakaling magkakaroon ng adverse reactions upang masuri at magamot sa lalong madaling panahon. Dito po sa slide na ito, atin pong ipinapakita ang magiging layout ng isang vaccination post. Sa lahat ng areas ng vaccination post, ipapatupad natin ang pagsunod sa minimum public health standards such as physical distancing and crowd control measures, hand hygiene, and wearing of the mask and face shield. Prior to the vaccination, the vaccine will be provided with a vaccination date and time schedule and a card with a QR code which he or she will bring to the vaccination post. Ito ay para masiguradong maayos ang pagsasagawa ng vaccination at maiwasan ang congestion sa ating vaccination posts. Magtatalaga ng waiting area kung saan ang mga vaccinees ay maagapan uh, para sa kanilang pagbabakuna or rather mag-aabang para sa kanilang pagbabakuna. Each vaccine will be assigned to a specific vaccination team. Each vaccination post may have at least three vaccination teams, depending, depending on the needs of the area. In a stepwise approach, the vaccine will proceed from the registration area, health education area, screening area, and lastly, to the vaccination area. Hindi mo na natin papawihin ang mga napakunahan dahil pabantayan muna sila para sa adverse reaction sa loob ng 30 minuto hanggang isang oras sa post-vaccination monitoring area. Kakalit din po ang ating vaccination site sa isang referral health facility upang mabilisan, mabigyan ng atensyon medical ang napakunahan kung sakaling magkaroon ng severe adverse effects. Once clear, bibigyan po sila ng instructions ungo sa susunod nilang bakuna at mga adverse reactions na kinakailangan bantayan. Doon po nila isasama doon po sa uh, form or sa card. Kahit na sa atin, uh, kahit na atin po uh, sisiguraduhin ang kaligtasan ng atin mga bakuna, we must be prepared to respond to adverse events. Kapag tayo po ay nakapuntala ng adverse events following immunization, o kaya naman yung adverse event of special interest. Agad po ito i-report at i-identify for seriousness at ita-transmit sa provincial, regional, at national level epidemiology and surveillance units. Kung ang naitalang AEFI ay considered to be a minor AEFI or not serious AEFI, detailed investigation and causality <coughs> assessment will not be required. Para naman po sa serious AEFI or adverse events, appropriate timely response including case management and a detailed investigation will be done to collect information necessary for causality assessment to confirm if the vaccine really caused the reaction or not within 24 hours. Sa tulong ng atin mga local government units, bubuhin po natin ang master list ng mga eligible population. Ang mga pasyente nito ay magkakaroon ng sariling QR code at unique identifier na ipapakita sa araw ng pagbabakit. <clears throat> sa pamamagitan po nito, atin mamomonitor ang mga pasyente na nabakunahan ng first and second dose, ang kabuuang bilang ng mga nabakunahan at ang mga bakunang kanilang natanggap. Mayroon din po tayong task group for demand generation jointly led by the Philippine Information Agency and DOH. Sa kasalukuyan po, mayroon tayong kampanya para palapasin ang demand generation sa pangumagitan ng communication and community engagement, social listening, at crisis communication. 
Aside from ensuring that we have the necessary supply of vaccines, kailangan din po natin ng critical mass of informed advocates to help us drive our immunization program to success and eventually reach herd immunity. Kasalo po yan po, nagpag-ugnayan ang ating kong view is sa mga major medical and paramedical associations katulad ng PMA, Philippine Nurses Association, ang PAMET or Philippine Association of Medical Technologies among others. Needless to say, everyone has a stake in this. From the healthcare workers to the private sector, to the many Filipinos staying at home today, binubuhos po namin ang aming mga sarili para maipatupad itong safe, equitable, at cost-effective the immunization program. Sa ngalan ng servisyo para sa sambayan ng Pilipino, buong loob at pagpuporsibihan kami magpapatuloy ng misyon ito. Na may pagkaunawa na hindi lamang kalusugan ng taong bayan na nakasalalay, kung hindi ang kabutihan din ng mga susunod na generasyon. Sa punto nito, ako po ay muli ipapasalamat sa ngalan ng Department of Health at sa ngalan po ng Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Disease. Magandang umaga po, muli maraming salamat. Thank you, Secretary Dilong. Magandang umaga po. Sec, uh, I've noticed you have a disclaimer in your presentation. Uh, and uh, we know naman that in the coming months, there will be uh, new developments and scientific evidence. So magbabago yung plans and um, details of the uh, vaccination program. Given this uh, disclaimer, can the committee request that uh, you'll have a regular updates on uh, the on the plan. Yes, ma'am. We will do that uh, according to uh, your uh, your request, uh, Madam uh, Chair. Thank you, Secretary Duque. Um, FDA DG Eric Domingo, do you have presentation? Ah, uh, wala wala naman po, ma'am. I'm just here to answer questions if there are any. Okay, thank you. Um, I'd like to call on our former Supreme Court Justice and Governor uh, Presbyterio Velasco, the president of LLP. I think um, he has a, a position on paper to uh, read. Governor thank Velasco. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, on, the, on behalf of... Uh, the League of Provinces of the Philippines, we would just like to manifest our uh, full support to the National uh, Vaccination Roadmap and Implementation Plan of the IATF and NTF. Uh, our only uh, concern is uh, uh, the uh, authority of the local governments from the national government uh, to procure uh, directly uh, vaccines from the suppliers. Of course, uh, it has to pass through the national government, but uh, uh, we want uh, a clear authority uh, to negotiate directly with the suppliers. Uh, I know for a fact, Madam Chair, that uh, there is a pending bill filed by uh, Congressman uh, Rufus Rodriguez uh, authorizing the LGUs to deal directly with the suppliers, no? That's one. And then uh, we want to be uh, clarified as to the application of the vaccines uh, to be procured by the LGUs because uh, Secretary Galvez uh, and the Secretary Duque committed that uh, there are vaccines already reserved for 70% of uh the population and translating that to the provincial level, that will be 70% of our constituents. And so we want to clear uh, to get a firm commitment that uh, the uh, vaccines to be procured by the LGUs uh, will be used for uh, our constituents uh, above or on top of the 70% of our constituents that uh, will be vaccinated uh, with the vaccines uh, procured by the national government. Yun lang po ang concern namin, Madam Chair, and uh, we expect uh, uh, 
uh, a clarification or uh, a declaration to that effect. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Governor Velasco. I'd like to call on Dr. Edsel Salvania for the presentation, together with uh, Dr. Nina Gloriani from Expert Panel. You have the floor, sir. Uh, good morning, Mr. Um, uh, Ms. Chair. Um, good morning uh, to everyone uh, on the panel. Um, I am just going to share my screen here. Sorry, go back. So uh, good morning uh, again uh, for, uh, thank you for the opportunity to present. I was actually asked uh, more to um, uh, clarify uh, the uh, vaccine efficacy measures, um, uh, both the for preventing clinical disease uh, as well as severe disease. So yung mga magandang epekto po ng bakuna, hindi lang yung clinical disease. So the most important uh, from a clinical standpoint sa aming mga doktor is to prevent severe disease. So imbis na malala yung sakit, nagiging mild. So um, you know, if we had COVID, um, magiging parang sipon na lang siya kung bigyan natin ng bakuna, that would be a useful vaccine. Then of course, yung prevent clinical disease, na imbes na magkakaroon ka ng sintomas, wala nang sintomas. So yun yung clinical efficacy. And then of course yung pinakamaganda talaga pero wala pang napapatunayan sa ngayon is yung prevent transmission. Hindi lang wala kang sintomas, wala kang severe disease pero hindi na nakakahawa yung sakit mo. And that's why sa ngayon doon sa mga nabakunahan natin, sinasabi natin follow minimum health standards pa rin kasi hindi pa po sigurado kung nakaka-prevent ito ng paghawa ng disease na asymptomatic. So, ano ba yung mild, moderate at severe na COVID? Yung mild, sipon, ubo, lagnat, halos walang mamamatay dyan. So, parang common cold lang. It's about 80% of our COVID patients. Yung moderate, which about 10 to 15%, meron pong pneumonia, pero hindi kakailanganin ng oxygen. Less than 1% po dito ang mamamatay. At yung severe naman, merong pneumonia, hirap huminga, kinakailangan ng oxygen, kailangan ni admit sa hospital at even with the best of care, 5 to 10% nitong may severe ay maaaring mamatay. So yung focus po muna natin yung prevent severe disease. Ang pinaka problema po talaga sa COVID ay yung severe disease. Kasi kung walang severe disease ang COVID, uh, parang ubot sipon lang yan, wala tayong pandemya. So ang severe disease ang nakakamamatay na sakit. At ang COVID ay nakamamatay sa 10% ng vulnerable population. So if you're 60 years old and above at nagkaroon ka ng COVID, 1 out of 10 dyan ay mamamatay. Uh, kung bigyan natin ang matanda ng isang bakuna that prevents severe disease, halos wala nang mamamatay sa kanila. Okay? Ganun rin po sa ating frontliners dahil exposed na exposed, mataas yung viral load na na-exposed tayo. Um, kung bigyan natin ng bakuna na nagpe-prevent ng severe disease, wala po sa frontliners natin ang mamamatay. Pwede sila magkasipon, pwede sila magkaubo, pero hindi na po sila uh, mapupunta sa ICU at malalagay sa ventilator dahil yung bakuna ay na-modify na niya yung masamang severe disease into mild disease. So, ano ba yung mga bakuna na nakaka-prevent ng severe disease? Marami po tayo dito. So, yung polio na inactivated, ito po, hindi po siya nakaka-prevent ng infection or symptoms, pero hindi ka na mapaparalyze. Yung sa trangkaso, even though 30 to 70 percent lang po yung kanyang clinical efficacy, 82 percent ng binakunahan mo na nagkaroon ng influenza ay maiiwas or mapeprevent mo ang 82 percent that will end up in the ICU. At ngayon, yung sa COVID, nakikita natin, again, yung datos po natin sa clinical trials pa lang, Astra, Sinovac, Moderna, prevent 100% of severe disease. At yung Pfizer, 89%, yung sa ibang vaccines po, hindi ko pa nakikita yung datos. But ito lang po yung sa pagkakaalam ko sa ngayon. So, ganito po yung illustration yan. Kung nagpe-prevent po tayo ng severe disease, ang isang mabagsik na leon ay ginagawa nating parang puting. Yung COVID na nakamamatay, gagawin po natin siyang parang sipon at ubo. Yun na lang po. So this is going to be a good vaccine if you have vaccines like Moderna, Sinovac, um, and uh, uh, Astra that can prevent 
severe disease 100% of the time, tatanggal lang po natin ng pangil ang COVID at magiging parang sipuna tubo na lang po siya. Yung clinical disease naman, hindi ka magkakaroon ng sintomas or if ever, kung severe, nagiging mild na lang. So maganda dito kasi ang taong uh, inuubo, merong sipo, nagahatching, ay one, uh, are 10 to 20 times more likely to be contagious. So bababa yung level of transmission. Uh, at yun nga, kung konti yung magpapacheck up, hindi po ma-overload yung ating healthcare system. So alam po natin ang vaccine efficacy para sa pag-prevent ng at least mild disease. Yung Pfizer po ay 95%, yung Moderna ay 94%, yung Astra range po niyan ay 62 to 90%, at yung Sinovac are 50 to 90, 91%. At meron pong differences to kasi iba-iba po yung population na kasama dito. Like for instance, yung sa Pfizer, alam po natin merong at risk population pero may general population rin. Yung Sinovac sa Brazil, puro healthcare workers po yung injection na nila, pero yung sa Turkey, 10% lang ang healthcare workers. So meron pong changes in terms of the efficacy depende sa target population. So ang, ang analogy po dito, gamitin po natin ulit yung Leon, kung gumagamit po tayo ng prevent clinical disease, um, uh, sorry, mali po yung Pfizer na yan, 95% po yan, um, yung vaccine, parang kinukulong nyo po yung Leon para hindi na siya nakaka, uh, nakakaperwisyo. Um, hindi na siya nagiging kuting kung hindi kinukulong po natin. So 95% po yan, hindi po 89%. Apologies po. Tapos yung prevent transmission naman, yung pinakahuli, ito po yung pinag-uusapan na herd immunity. So bukod sa severe at clinical disease, iwas din ito sa pagkahawa. At sa ngayon, napakahirap po kasi talagang gumawa ng clinical trial na makikita mo yung prevent disease kasi isaswab mo lahat ng tao every week para makita mo lang kung merong epektong ganon. Sinimula na po nila ito sa Moderna and about two-thirds uh, mukhang meron namang potential pero mga two-thirds lang po yung uh, nababawasan dun sa asymptomatic disease. Pero sa ngayon, hindi pa po natin alam kung nakaka-prevent talaga ng transmission ang lahat ng ating COVID vaccine. So mas mabusisi at matagal na pag-aaral ang kinakailangan. So wala pa po tayo dun sa herd immunity. Sa ngayon, clinical at severe disease lang ang meron po tayong datos. So ito yung maganda sa prevent clinical transmission. Hindi lang ginagawang kuting, hindi lang gina, uh, kinukulong yung leon, pinapatay po talaga para hindi na siya makahawa. So ano bang ba urgent natin na kailangan? Bakit po ba um, emergency use authorization ang ginagawa po natin dito? Dahil po mapanganib po para sa ating vulnerable population, mga elderly at ating mga frontliners na may 10% chance na mamatay kung magkaroon sila ng COVID. Kung bigyan po natin sila ng bakuna na makaka-decrease ng risk of severe disease down to 0% po, wala na pong mamamatay sa kanila. Pwede pa rin sila magkasipon, pwede magkaubo, pero hindi na po sila mamamatay. So pinaka-importante po talaga na ma-deploy natin yung mga vaccines that can prevent severe disease. At ang bakuna na nakaka-prevent ng severe disease ay makakapababa sa panganib ng pagkamatay sa ating vulnerable populations. And that is the rationale for rolling out all these vaccines as soon as possible, even though maikli pa lang yung oras na nagagawa sa pag-observe para sa long-term safety, dahil po sigurado po talaga tayo, at least in this population na vulnerable, na the benefit far exceeds any kind of risk at this time. So, isasummarize ko lang po yung epekto ng bakuna for severe vaccine, uh, for, for decreasing the risk of severe disease, ang Pfizer for 89%, Moderna, Astra, and Sinovac, according to the Brazil trial, 100% po sila effective sa pagtanggal ng severe disease. Ito naman po sa clinical disease, ang Pfizer ay 95%, Moderna ay 94%, yung Astra, halu-halu po na trial, 62%. At uh, 90%. Yung sa 90% po, kita natin, uh, half dose, full dose, 18 to 55 years old lang. Yung sa Sinovac naman, 50%, mild, 78% nakakabawas dun sa moderate na kinakailangan magpatingin po sa doktor. At nakikita nyo po, iba-iba po yung kanilang trial population. So, let's make a calculation po. Sa isang milyon na symptomatic infections, Sabihin natin, isang milyon na tao magkakaroon ng COVID. Kung wala pong bakuna, 1 million po doon may sintomas. At ang pupunta sa doktor, 200,000. At ang kakailanganin uh, na i-hospital, 
50,000 at ang namamatay ay 5,000. Pag gamitin po natin yung Pfizer, again, these are just clinical trial data, 50,000 lang yung magkakaroon ng sintomas sa isang million, 5,500 po yung magkakaroon ng severe at 550 po yung mamamatay. Yung sa Moderna, 60,000 magkakaroon ng sipon. Walang mamamatay. Sa Astra, 100,000 to 380,000 magkakaroon ng sipon. Walang mamamatay. At sa Sinovac, batay sa Brazil trial, kahit kalahati po sa kanila magkakaroon ng sipon, um, 44,000 ang kailangan magpakita po sa doktor. Wala pong mamamatay. Yan lang po yung ina-highlight ko. That is why any vaccine that has the propensity to prevent severe disease will decrease the number of people who will die. So in summary po, iba-iba po ang epekto ng mga bakuna sa COVID. Ang pinaka-importante sa ngayon ay ang pagprotekta sa ating vulnerable population, sa ating frontliners, ang ating elderly at ang ating essential workers. Nagmimistula na lang parang sipon. Ang COVID-19, kung gamitin po natin itong mga mabisang bakuna, nakakapag-prevent ng severe disease. Kailangan gamitin agad ang lahat ng available na bakuna na mabisa sa mas madaling panahon. Sa ngayon, sa pagkakaalam po natin, ang Pfizer, Moderna, Astra at Sinovac ay mabisa para sa pagpapababa ng peligro ng COVID-19 because they all prevent severe infection. Thank you very much po. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Edsel Salvania, for the information of everyone. Dr. Edsel is an infectious doctor and uh, from UPNIH. No? Uh, UPNIH is the research arm of uh, UPPGH. Tama, sir? Am uh, UP, I right? Yes, UP Manila. Pa. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Doc Edsel. Uh, I'm sure madami pong natutunan ang lahat ng ating viewers and listeners, even our members who are uh, joining with us uh, today. We'd like to call on Dr. Nina Gloriani. Uh, Dr. Nina is a representative from the expert panel created by the DOST. She's also an infectious doctor. Dr. Nina. Uh, magandang umaga po, Chairwoman of uh, the House of Representatives uh, Committee of Health at sa lahat po ng mga membro nito at sa lahat ng nakikinig. Isishare ko na po yung aking screen. So, ito po ay para i-explain lang namin ang proseso ng pag-evaluate pagpili at prioritize o pag-rank dito sa mga vaccines na available for us to use para po ma iwasan na itong ating uh, o malabanan na ang COVID na ito. So I'll start po dun sa vaccine expert panel mandate and composition. So ito po ay galing sa PCHRD special order number 20073 last 2020. So ano po ang aming tasks? The one is to identify and evaluate possible vaccine candidates from both local and international partners of the DOST. So tinitignan po namin lahat, hindi lang isang vaccine. Sa dami-dami na po nga namin pinag-aaralan. We also are tasked to identify local partners or institutions for the conduct of preclinical and clinical trials of the vaccine candidates in the country. We provide recommendations and action plans on the engagement of partners, preclinical and clinical trials requirements of the FDA Philippines, the, the Department of Health, and the World Health Organization. So we also evaluate project proposals on vaccine development, seeking financial assistance from PCHID or DOST. And later on, this mandate was expanded to evaluate applications for emergency use authorization submitted by vaccine companies which were initially reviewed by VEP. So kung hindi po dumaan sa amin sa VEP yung mga applications, diretso po yung sa FDA. Ito po yung composition ng vaccine expert panel. I chair the expert panel. And then meron po tayong walo pang miyembro, si Dr. Ronjin Solante, adult infectious disease specialist ng San Lazaro Hospital. Dr. Maria Lisa Antonet Gonzalez, she is actually here with us. She's an infectious, uh, pediatric infectious disease specialist from the UP Philippine General Hospital. We have Dr. Mario 
Antonio Gis, uh, who is the chair of Immunology Department, Research Institute for Tropical Medicine. We have Dr. Derek Earl Sumalapau, uh, professor of the uh, Department of Epidemiology and Biostatistics, College of Public Health, UP Manila. We have Isa Dr. Isagani Padolina, who is the director for R&D and Quality Assurance and Business Development from Pascual Pharma Corporation. We have Dr. Noel Macaladad, who is the chief of the Division of Biologicals Production of the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine. We also have Dr. Maria Wilda Silva, who is the National Immunization Program Manager of the Department of Health, and Dr. Jose Gerard Bellimac, who is the Program Manager in the Disease Prevention and Control Bureau of the Department of Health. So, nabanggit na rin po ni Secretary Duque kanina that we use this criteria and ano po yung scope ng aming evaluation. So we use the World Health Organization criteria for vaccines prioritization. Very well defined po ito no? for clinical phase 2B or 3 trials based on number one is safety, efficacy, stability ng no vaccine. Ito po yung sa storage conditions. And if they are easily implementable, kailangan po rin yon at yung vaccine availability or supply. We also use the WHO target product profiles and other international standards and we review a lot of scientific publications to back, up, to back us up with our evaluation and decisions. So we also um, base our evaluation on the vaccine technology platform kasi po may old or new platforms. Siyempre po yung mga older platforms ng bakuna ay marami ng years. They have many years of safety and efficacy data Yung sa mga newer platforms, such as the nucleic acid-based vaccines like messenger RNA and meron din pong DNA, who have been granted EUA in other countries. So sinusundan po nating mabuti kung anong nangyayari dito sa mga pagbabakuna, lalo na sa mga bagong platforms. So we, have a, we, we look at very comprehensive technical data on vaccines. So from preclinical, meaning results of the laboratory and animal studies, to the clinical trial results. So lahat po yan tinitignan namin, phase one, phase two data, and any ongoing or interim phase three clinical trial results or kung ano yung meron silang application na EUA from other countries. Now, hindi lang po yung vaccine ang tinitignan namin ng mabuti or masusi namin tinitignan. Ang mga adjuvants po ay medyo iba-iba rin sa, sa mga different platforms na ito ng vaccines. So they are also assessed carefully for safety signals and other components of the vaccine. Kasi sa ngayon mayroon po lumalabas na ganun mga information. So pagkatapos po namin ma-evaluate, ma-select, nagpa-prioritize din po kami. So yung, ito po yung aming matrix na ginagamit and this is actually uh, rolling. Medyo po iba-iba rin depende sa datos na nakukuha na, namin, hindi na updating. No? So number one, vaccines in advanced stages of development po ang aming tinitignan. Ito po yung mga kampanya na may application for clinical trials phase 3 in the Philippines. Companies from countries with bilateral agreements with the Philippines and vaccine companies from countries with initial discussions with the task group via diplomatic means, kagaya po na sinabi ni Secretary Galvez. Tinitignan po namin ang track record, track record nila sa vaccine development. How many vaccines have these companies developed and marketed over the last 20 years or more? So meron po kaming grading for that or scoring system. And then yung technology platform nga po, kung kung old technology or new technology at kung ano pong ginagamit nilang uh, cold chain, yung vaccine storage. Siyempre gusto po natin sana yung refrigerator lang para mas madaling uh, ipadalo, i-deploy natin. Pero pwede rin po yung minus 20 at nga sa ngayon, pinagahandaan din po natin yung minus 80. So, well, technically, ang talagang number one po sa tinitingnan natin lahat ay safety. No? Safety bago tayo mag even mag-isip ng efficacy and so on. So lahat po ng adverse events, especially reported sa human trials, phase 1 and 2. Then efficacy and immune correlates of protection, tinitignan po natin yung mga antibodies. Yung po yung magkocorrelate po sa efficacy na sinabi ni Dr. Salvanya kanina. So ang word natin dyan ay neutralizing. Ino-neutralize niya yung virus, no? uh, yung nung antibodies. Then, pero hindi lang po antibodies kasi ang importante. Titignan po din natin, tinatawag natin mga T-cells. At yung zero conversion, ilan ang nagkaroon ng magandang immune response. 
So tinitingnan din po yung meron meron ng mga datos na from emergency use authorization from other countries. Sama din po diyan yung stringent regulatory authorities. At tinitingnan po din natin yung dosing schedule. For two doses, interval between doses, 21, 28, or 56 days. Basi po yan doon sa mga nareceive lang namin. So makikita natin na ang pag um, tingin doon sa efficacy, minsan naka, al, nakasalalay doon sa ito ba ay binigay ng 14 days apart or one month apart kasi po medyo iba-iba yung datos kagaya ng sinabi ni Dr. Saldana, Salvanya. So, ito po yung summary slide ko. Uh, we just want to assure the public and everyone that the VEP technical assessment of COVID-19 vaccines is only the initial step in the evaluation. At meron pa po tayong single joint research ethics board at ang ating Philippine FDA. The stringent process of evaluation looks carefully at safety, efficacy, immunogenicity, and other data from various phases of vaccine development using WHO criteria and other international standards. Vaccines that meet the stringent criteria are selected, and these are used to guide the choices on which vaccines will be considered for negotiation, procurement, and rollout based on local needs and capacities. And lastly, all vaccines in the pipeline are continuously monitored and evaluation and prioritization updated as necessary. So maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat, Dr. Nina Gloriani. I uh, would like to call on um, FDA uh, Director General Dr. Eric Domingo. I ask him to present the at least the approval process and updates on application. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll just give you some updates. Let me just share the slide. So this is the, the vaccine approval process that we follow at FDA. As we all know, yun pong talagang development ng vaccine takes maybe seven years, no? three to seven years from discovery on the left to approval on the right. Pero that means complete na po yung, ano, no? yung phase three trials before we even register a product. However, during the emergency situation, this is where we are at the middle of phase three clinical trials, where we give emergency use authorizations for vaccines that may be useful no, in stopping the pandemic with, of course, enough data to show efficacy and safety. Yung pong dati natin na proseso ng usual ng registration po ng isang bakuna, ito pong nasa kaliwa no, with all of these steps and usually took more than six months. For the EUA, if we have a vaccine candidate that already has an EUA from a stringent regulatory authority like US FDA, UK, Canada, Singapore, Japan, or a WHO emergency use listing, we, ano, no, we try to do everything within 21 days from the filing of the application to the decision on whether or not the EUA is approved. So dati po kasi sa batas natin, wala talagang EUA. No? We can only use a product in the Philippines until, ano, until this late last year, if it was completely registered, meaning all of the trials have been completed. So once a trial phase trees are ano, completed, they can register the product. Other than that, walang pathway for use of emergency drugs. So in December 1, 2020, the president issued executive order number 121, which grants the FDA the authority to emergency use authorization but particularly for COVID-19 drugs and vaccines only. So para lamang po sa COVID-19 itong EO121. We issued the guidelines on December 14 uh, on how the, ano, the process is and what the requirements are for application. And we started accepting applications for EUA and entertaining questions no, from companies who wanted to, who were interested in uh, uh, registering, uh, getting an EUA here in the Philippines. So the EUA is valid only if all of the following circumstances are present. No, kailangan po three out of three. Number one, based on the evidence available at this time, it is reasonable to believe that the vaccine may be effective to prevent COVID-19. Second, the known and potential benefits must outweigh the known and potential risks of the vaccine. So talaga pong meron tayong known adverse events pero talagang may potential adverse events na hindi pa natin nalalaman. And third, there must be no adequate, approved, or available alternative vaccine. 
So once po na magkaroon ng alternative vaccine, wala na rin pong ano no, wala na rin pong EUA. Matatanggal na rin isa isa yung mga EUA kasi meron ng fully registered product. Now the applications for EUA may be submitted by the pharmaceutical company, meaning the manufacturer or their local uh, counterpart here or kung wala pong local dito na company yung fact manufacturer mismo, maaari yung kanila pong distributor, exclusive distributor or importer in the Philippines. The Department of Health as the program health implementer may also apply for an EUA from the FDA. But kahit po underdevelopment pa naman yung product, they have to strictly no, comply with good manufacturing practices. And there must be an undertaking no, by the uh, by the company to complete the development of the drug or vaccine. So requirement po yun that they will continue with the clinical trial phase three until they register the vaccine. Hindi po pwede bibili tayo tapos yun, tas titigil sila in the middle and they will not continue no, the development of the vaccine and the research that goes on with that. In the evaluating the applications, the FDA is empowered to use reliance and recognition processes. Meaning, reliance yun pong mga evaluation ng mga stringent regulatory authorities. We can review this no, and ano, uh, rely upon them. We can also recognize decisions by the WHO, such as the emergency use listing that they have. And we need we convene an expert panel no, to check on the safety and efficacy data. Ito po yung what is currently available. So part of that, we actually review two things. Number one, the regulatory side, yung mga regulatory officers sa FDA natin, make sure that this is the same product that has been approved the UA in another country, that the factories follow GMP, that yung risk management plan nila is in place, yung cold chain plan nila is in place. So it's really the quality, making sure that that product, when it gets here, it's the same product and it's a stable and uh, no, no, a product of good quality. On the other side, we also have our experts. Our experts the one look at the safety and efficacy study to see no, if the risks, benefits outweigh the risk. The panels then submit the reports to, to, my, to my office with the recommendations. And then we make that decision whether to grant the EUA or not. So the validity of the EUA is only during the declared public health emergency during the COVID-19. So pag nagkaroon na po na wala ng COVID-19 pandemic, wala ng EUA. Pag nagkaroon na rin ng registered product, wala na rin pong EUA. No? And we go on to review. The good thing about it is as we require all EUA applicants who have been approved continuously no, to update us with their pharmacovigilance activities, not only in the country, but internationally so that we can continue to update the product information and of course updating also contraindications and indications and anything that we have to watch out for. So after that, the, of course, talaga po ang kaakibat ng ano, dahil this is a product under emergency use, is that we have to have very, very close monitoring. So we're now setting up a system with the DOH using the VigiFlow system of the WHO to make sure that pharmacovigilance and the you know, monitoring and surveillance happens very closely. Of course, yung pong company, the provider, will also have to work with us with the pharmacovigilance. And we also work with WHO to make sure that we get all of the information locally. And if we find anything, that we compare it also with information uh, all over the world. No? Or if they find something there, we, that it is also uh, communicated with us here in the Philippines. So yun pong nag-apply na sa atin ng, ano, ng uh, EUAs would be Pfizer BioNTech, which applied before Christmas. Ito po yung na-approve na natin no, a few days ago. Meron na po silang EUA. We also have AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca has an EUA with one ano, stringent regulatory authority, which is United Kingdom. Yung Pfizer po, several stringent regulatory authorities and WHO this thing. No? AstraZeneca has in the UK, and then uh, also EUAs in non-stringent regulatory authorities like Argentina and India. So ito po, uh, na under evaluation now, and our experts are asking for some clarification on their clinical trial results. Kung nakita po niyo, pinakita kanina ni uh, Edsel, no, Salvania, medyo iba-iba kasing dosage schedule nila, no, and there were some things that we just want clarified. Gamalea, or the Sputnik vaccine, also has ano, as, uh, submitted their uh, paper, uh, their uh, application. It's now being reviewed 
also no pending some question and answers and some more documentary requirements. The last do ano to submit was Sinovac. Sinovac uh, uh, submitted their application last week. However, yung clinical trial data nila phase one and phase two palang yun ang sinabmit nila. And of course, our decision largely is really based on phase three interim trial results. So we're asking them for that. They replied that they will comply with the requirements. So after the check up, we will evaluate. Talaga, no? Other companies have signified their intention to uh, submit, and we've given them the requirements. That includes Moderna, sa India po dalawa, no? the Serum Institute of India, and Bharat uh, Technologies has also asked us about the requirements for an EUA. So, siguro po ito mga to susunod baga at mag-apply na rin dito sa atin pending completion of their requirements. So after care careful consideration, uh, yung pong sa Pfizer, uh, we decided that based on the totality of evidence uh, that the vaccine may be effective to prevent COVID-19 and that the potential benefits outweigh the potential risk. And of course, knowing that there's no currently available vaccine, the Pfizer EUA was granted. And just to give you one example, these are the conditions that are included in that EUA, you know, some of the salient conditions. Number one, the UA is not a marketing authorization. Therefore, it cannot be used to market ano, no, the vaccine commercially. Kaya naman po talaga, sa Department of Health lamang sila maaring mag-supply. However, the Department of Health can designate no, uh, partners, vaccination providers, such as the LGUs, to help them in delivering the, ano, the national vaccination program. Uh, so, pwede pong sa LGUs, health facilities, for example, of other government agencies uh, like hospital po ng military or ng police, pwede rin po yan. And members of the private sector, for example, that the DOH wants to partner with kasi baka kailangan din po lang magpatulong no, para mag-connection sa mga private hospitals and private clinic. The Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine shall only be administered to individuals 16 years and older. Uh, talaga pong hindi pa siya pwede sa mga bata dahil they have no data showing that it can be used in people younger than 16. And then the older one naman, we already asked them about the findings in Norway, no? where in some very elderly individuals apparently no, died after vaccination. Yung sa Norway daw po kasi, talagang nag they were like dying 400 a day. So they decided to inject all the people in the nursing homes, even those beyond 85 and 90 years old. And some of them were very frail. So awaiting the final report of the Norwegian uh, uh, National Agency on this, and of course Pfizer, the good thing about the EUA is we can continue uh, no, no, changing our indications and contraindications even before we start vaccination here. Kamukhaan po ng allergies dati wala yun sa original ano, na scope ng Pfizer vaccine. But now we know that severe allergies, patient with severe allergies is a con contraindication. And that all vaccinations must now be done in a place where we are able to respond no, to possible anaphylaxis. The cold chain management is very important. It's going to be a, a responsibility of the company, Pfizer, and of course the, ano, no, the contracting party such as the Department of Health and the MPF. So depende po kung nung usapan nila kung saan natin. Basta masigurado na dapat hanggang sa area ng inoculation, the cold chain is maintained. And of course, it has to be monitored. They should have this ano, no monitoring system. So may mga indicators po yun per batch ng gamot na darating para to make sure na hindi siya nabuksan, hindi siya na, na exposed sa maring temperature, and that the vaccines are good quality when they get here and when we inspect them when they get to the country. The pharmacovigilance is of course going to be done hand in hand by the company and FDA and the Department of Health. Kasama po natin ang epidemiology bureau dyan, and the local government units. And all of the partners that the Department of Health is going to designate should follow the letters of the EUA and the, farm and the national vaccination program. So pag ang LGU po sasama, susunod din po siya dapat sa lahat ng kailangan gawin no, kasama sa vaccination program hanggang doon sa monitoring and surveillance. Of course, the vaccination provider should follow strict ano, no, the, the program. They have to provide fact sheets to the recipients and care caregivers. So this is now electronically available. If you check for the ano, no, informa product information, Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. So there's that official regularly updated uh, information package there. 
And number, kung yung number three po, we have to, every vaccinator must obtain written informed consent from the recipient prior to vaccinations. Since this is an emergency use authorization, this is a product still under development with known and unknown risks. Kailangan po makommunicate yung lahat sa babakunahan and that person must give their free consent, free and informed consent before any vaccination is done. And then, of course, the vaccinators will have to report any adverse events following immunization. And the validity, as we said, is until there is the public health emergency and upon issuance of a CPR to any product. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, uh, DG Eric Domingo from FDI. FDA. Last uh, presenter is from the Health Technology Assessment Council, Dr. Marita Reyes. Dr. Reyes. Do we have representative from HTAP? Yes. Hi. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, wal wala kaming presentation. I think that we were invited as resource persons to answer certain questions. Okay. But, okay. Uh, for a yes, can you just explain the role of uh, HTAC or okay. functions and responsibilities? Yes, maybe what, what is important is to differentiate the role of FDA and HTAC. Okay. Kung wala pong pandemic, under ordinary circumstances, ang FDA is a regulatory agency whereas ang HTAC is an independent recommending agency to the OH. So, ang FDA po, ang main responsibility niya is to ensure quality, safety, and efficacy of drugs, vaccines, devices that will come into the Philippines for use, for general use, for both public and private use. In other words, a marketing uh, authorization. So under normal circumstances din po, ang HTAC naman is supposed to generate evidence that will support a positive recommendation to the Department of Health for use in its health programs and to fill health for inclusion it's in health or inclusion in its health benefit package. So that's a major differentiation between FDA and HDAC. Ang FDA for general use, ang HDAC for use in government programs and therefore for procurement of government for its health programs and for field health for inclusion in its benefit packages. Ngayon po, now that we are in a pandemic, Medyo nagkaroon ng konting, konting uh, uh, pagkakaiba sa dating, sa dating uh, mandate ng FDA. Nagkaroon siya ngayon ng emergency use authorization na ang kailangan ay directo na to the government. Dati meron siya for both public and private. Pero ngayon, yung EUA as explained by uh, Director General Eric, is specific for government. O paano na ngayon nagkakaiba ang HSTAC at FDA because of this emergency use authorization? All right. Ang HSTAC po, aside from kahit na sa effectivity and efficacy issue, medyo, medyo may pagkakaiba po ang pagtingin because ang FDA will look at it from a general population point of view, whereas ang HSTAC will look at it from a programmatic, programmatic point of view. For example, aside from a general information on safety and efficacy, tinitingnan din po ng HSTAC kung dun ba sa datos ng clinical trial ay meron kaming makikita ng efficacy para sa mga older persons para sa mga buntis, para sa mga lactating mothers, and para sa children. So medyo po specific yung tinitingnan namin. Kaya, uh, yung, for example, yung sinabi ni Dr. Eric Domingo, 
na pwede siya from 16 and above. No? So parang hanggang-hanggang kung saan. Kami naman po sa age stock, titingnan namin, teka, 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 pwede ba yan? Sa 60 and above, sa 70 and above, meron bang datos that will support safety and efficacy for very specific groups? Yun, yung isa consideration po. Uh, isa pang consideration po ng age stock is yung responsiveness to equity. Napaka-importante po sa age stock yung, uh, yung bang paggamit itong vaccine na ito ay magpapalala ng inequities, existing inequities already in our health system or sa mga inequities na, na, na nadagdag pa because of COVID. For example, we consider inequity ng mahirap Mayayaman, yung mga nasa very crowded areas at hindi, yung sa mga gida, gida areas natin. In other words, uh, tinitingnan ng eight stock kung magiging patas ba, magiging mas maganda ba ang, ang equity in accessibility and ano, sa paggamit itong vaccine na ito. And already we can see na yung, yung, yung Pfizer because of its requirement for very low or spatial or spatial low, medyo meron tayong problema as far as sino ang pwedeng gumamit ng Pfizer. Yung po ay tinitingnan ng eight stock at yun ang kasama sa mga recommendations na ibibigay ng eight stock to the Department of Health. Thank you so much, Dr. Reyes. Maraming salamat po for uh, sharing that information to the body. Maraming salamat po. Um, before we call on the first interpolator, I just want to uh, recognize the presence of the following members. We have Representative Sandra Irigel, our Vice Chair, Representative Shirley Banyas Nograles, Representative John Ray Chanco, Representative uh, Jose Antonio C. Alvarado, Representative Rodolfo Ordanes, our member, Representative Alan Ecleo, also a member, Representative Alexi, Alexi Tutor, our vice chair. We also have our deputy speaker, Divine uh, Yu, our vice chair, uh, Representative Jerry Boy Espina, our Deputy Majority Leader, XJ Romualdo, uh, Representative Lollipop Juana Dizon, also a member, Representative Cyril Albueg Saldivar, a member, Representative Crystal Bagat Singh, our Deputy Majority Leader, Representative Ria Pariñas, and Representative Marvi Marino. Okay, uh, just to give you an update, uh, we have a, on our list, 22 interpolators, as I mentioned earlier, we'll start with um, minority and then five majority, then minority again. So uh, before I call on uh, Representative Kim, I have a few questions. Um, on issue of safety and efficacy, I think the presentation of Dr. Salvania um, mostly answered my uh, queries on uh, that issue. But I uh, just want to ask Dr. Salbanya, what are the pros and cons of a vaccine that is under emergency use authority? I'm sorry, po. I was removing my uh, my mask. <laughs> I could not hear. Po. Um, what are the pros and cons of, ano, po? of a vaccine under EUA? Ah, okay. So um, actually, BG Domingo can answer that as well. But uh, my understanding is po, kasi when we have an EUA, um, usually kasi ang safety data for vaccines for approval is about one to two years. But now that uh, it's an EUA po talaga, uh, we, ang minimum na sinet uh, ng, uh, in the U.S. is uh, two months actually. Um, and so uh, yun lang, hindi complete yung safety data. But again, considering that it's an emergency, the risk of not waiting for that data is far outweighed by the current risk of not using the vaccine in the at-risk populations. Okay, thank you, Dr. Salvania. DG Eric? 
Yes, Kong Helen, no, it means kasi when we give the EUA right now, it means half of the patients who are enrolled in the clinical trial have been followed up for at least two months. Ibig po sabihin, ang nalalaman natin na adverse events dito are those that happened within na, no, no, yung temporally uh, very close to the actual vaccination, so 60 days. And then they continue monitoring them. So the longest trial participants are about maybe uh, six to seven months now. So this is what we know. Yung adverse events that might happen longer, usually po kasi talagang binabantayan hanggang two years, no? That will probably have uh, all be known by the time that they, go, they are going to apply for a product registration on, on clearly. Ang advantage lang po siguro natin sa Pilipinas is that we're using the EUA, but they're using it much later than other countries. So Pfizer, for example, right now, they declare that they have about 7 million people already vaccinated. So yung po mga advisories nila, nagagawa na natin before we even start. Masusunod na natin yung mga bagong nilang mga advisories. And then as we continue on, we will just have to watch out and really uh, just uh, continuously update as we get any more information. Thank you, uh, DG Eric. I have a question to uh, DOH or uh, Secretary Galvez. Been, uh, I've been uh, watching intently the Senate hearing of the Committee of the Whole. And um, I have concern on issue of equitable access and prioritization. So I've heard the statement in from the Senate hearing that you will allow private companies also included in your presentation earlier, uh, as long as 50% will be donated to the national government and 50% will be given in full to the private company or LGU. Does this mean that 50% has to disregard the priorities set by the DOH? And uh, what are the controlling factor in, in supply distribution? Will it be based on who has procured or will it still be based on the national vaccine program prioritization of the DOH? Will all of this boil down to who has the capacity to pay for vaccines? Secretary Duque or Secretary Galvez? Uh, uh, thank you. I'd like to uh, just very quickly uh, say that uh, the policy of uh, national uh, prioritization of uh, who will uh, be the vaccine recipients so, has to be followed uh, by everyone. So that even if the private sector has entered into a tripartite MOA with the DOH or with the national government rather and the uh, vaccine manufacturing company, they are, uh, they are uh, bound by uh, the policy of prioritizing the uh, sectors that have been identified. For example, the healthcare uh, workers or drivers, the uh, indigent, uh, the senior citizens, uh, the adults with comorbidities, the uh, other uh, uh, other uh, sectors, no? the uh, uniform uh, personnel and of the police and uh, the AFP. No? So uh, we have to clear this for uh, uh, privilege access. We have to avoid privilege access uh, uh, you know, as a matter of policy. Thank you. Um, can I add? Yes, Secretary Galvez. Uh, uh... The, you know, the company that provided uh, the, you know, the uh, access for private and land and use is AstraZeneca and Oxford. And the principle of Oxford is uh, no profit, no loss, equitable access, and no privileged access. So the agreement is that uh, the private sector will follow that, you know, that principle also, that uh, it will be given to their lowly income earners and also frontliners of the, uh, of the, you know, the company. The main intention that we allow this is to really to, to revive the economy and uh, also protect our our frontliners, our business frontliners, and essential workers. So that's the primary purpose. That's why we you know, we we you know, provided access to the business sector so that we can expand our you know, our our target for essential workers in the business. Secretary Galvez, if you can clarify, lang po. So you mentioned the fifty percent will uh, go to uh, government as a donation and 50% will go to, let's say, LGU or private companies. 
But uh, as mentioned by Secretary Duque, we'll follow the national pri prioritization program on vaccination. So you presented earlier the Group A and Group B. No? So anong assurance of a certain private company or LGU that the allocated vaccines that they paid for will be given to them. So I think ang expectation nila is that kung may allocation ako na uh, isang million at yung corresponding na number of uh, vaccines out of one million, ang thought nila, babalik sa kanila kung may dumating na whatever vaccine is available o kung AstraZeneca yung kanilang pinirmahan, dumating. So ang fear natin is that yung uh, expectations of the people. So we have, I think, to manage yung expectations. So paki-clarify po yun, uh, Secretary Galvez. Yung ano po, yung uh, sabi ng nating hatian na 50-50, yung 50 po, mapupunta po yun sa tinatawag nating mga essential workers ng, ano, ng business. That's, that's their share. And the 50% is the the, uh, it will be given to the government uh, for the you know, prioritization of uh, sector pr priority ng, ng government. And to ensure that, you know, that uh, there will be equitable access, it is the DOH that will still administer in coordination with the LGU and also with the business sector. Okay, so yun po yung... <laughs> so at this time, yun po yung uh, sagot ninyo about that. Ha? So kay Secretary Duque, I have a question on doon sa vaccination program natin, voluntary. So we cannot compel anyone to be inoculated. So ako po sa pag-ikot ko sa ground, nagtatanong po ako sa mga ilang health workers natin, frontliners. Uh, nagsusurvey din po ako kung uh, may dumating na bakuna, uh, sila ba ay magpapabakuna. Uh, so ang um, iba, yes, but most of them ayaw. No? Mga health workers po ito. So... Papaano po natin ito gagawin? Kasi nasa group A list po sila. Magkakaroon ba ng waiver of uh, priorities? Isabihin mawawala yung opportunity niya na makuha that uh, vaccine? Uh, Madam Chair, yung una-una, I would like to state, hindi po ito mandatory. Uh, bawat babakunahan magkakaroon po ng pasya uh, by way of a uh, consent form. Uh, pangalawa po, kung uh, hindi po sila magpapabakuna dahil meron sila uh, na, uh, na, na gugustuhan na uh, ibang bakuna na hindi naman dumating kaagad, eh mahuhuli sila uh, doon sa listahan. At ako po ay nakikiusap na sana kung ano po yung mga bakuna ang gumaan na sa ating proseso at na itatag na natin ang kanilang kalintasan at kanilang pagiging kalidad, de kalidad, eh, uh, ito naman po ha, ha, has been passed upon by our uh, very competent men and women of unassailable integrity. Uh, those who constitute the vaccine expert panel, uh, our... Uh, our uh, members of the Single Joint Ethics Review Board, and of course, our own uh, FDA, and also the HTA, para kasi puro po kayo na ang mga bakuna ang dumaan sa kanila at nabigyan ng basbas at nabigyan ng EUA, ay uh, huwag na po sana tayo magbibiga. Ganun ka ba, tutuguran po natin itong mga alilangan o agam-agam sa pamamagitan ng ating pong task group on uh, demand generation and risk communication para ho maunlad pa natin lalo ang, uh, ang pagtanggap ng ating pong kababayan sa mga uh, iba't ibang klase ng uh, mga pakuna na sisiguraduhin natin talaga pong ligtas. Higit sa lahat, it is the safety of the vaccines that is given the utmost consideration. So meron po tayong uh, uh, task group at may mga uh, gagawin po tayo katulad ng assessment ng multiple drivers to inform uh, planning, yung uh, tutugunan natin bakit yung mga mamamayag, ito po yung kanilang kasalukuyang iniisip o naramdaman tungkol sa uh, bakuna. So, tignan natin yung confidence we will assess. So, confidence in vaccine benefits, confidence in vaccine safety, perceived risk, uh, self, no? perceived risk, uh, uh, so far as the patients are concerned, seeing negative information. At the end of it all, Napakamahalo ka po ito yung transparency eh, ng proseso na sasabihin natin paulit-ulit na ito po yung dumaan. 
uh, sa uh, matindi ang uh, proseso para siguraduhin ang uh, kalutasan. At uh, syempre, marami po tayong strategiya dyan, katulad na naman ng naman ng Kalina, we will uh, solicit uh, the support of major uh, healthcare uh, organizations no? like PMA, PAMED, uh, PNA no? uh, as our uh, advocates na para mas uh, madali pong uh, paniwaraan ng ating pong mga kababayan ang patungkol sa kalintasan at pagiging epektibo ng mga uh, bakunang ibibigay po ng gobyerno. Thank you, Secretary Duque. Uh, I'd like to call on Representative uh, Stella Kimbo from the minority, our first interpellator. Kong Kimbo. Yes, uh, thank you, okay. Madam Chair. Or actually po, Madam Chair, pareho tayong ginagawa. Lagi po ako nagsasurvey sa aming distrito as to the willingness uh, doon po sa mga tao kung willing silang magpabakuna. And uh, increasing, increasingly po sa amin po, kumukonti yung willing na magpabakuna dahil sa mga naririnig-rinig uh, sa balita, lalong-lalo na po doon po sa e efficacy ng vaccines. And this is very worrisome considering that the only way for our economy to reopen or to recover is if we have a cost-effective um, vaccine program. Kaya nagpapasalamat ako kay Dr. Edsel Salvania sa kanyang uh, presentation. Ito po ay isang eye-opener. So ang ibig sabihin, di ba, marami palang bakuna, uh, including Sinovac, um, that protects us 100% from severe COVID. In other words, it completely prevents uh, hospitalization due to COVID and perhaps even deaths due to COVID. So I'd like to ask uh, our birthday boy, si Dr. Domingo. Dr. Domingo, do you agree with the presentation of Dr. Salvania? Uh, well, I, I agree with the data that I have already seen, no? which is the one by Pfizer and by AstraZeneca. Yung report ng, ano, ng uh, ano nga, si Sinovac, like I said, has not been submitted to us. So these are things that we see in press releases. Kasi, no? So until I see the actual scientific paper and the uh, consolidation of their trial phase, then I would like to reserve my opinion on that but yes, yes. the ones that we have sub, uh, the one that we have proved so far for example Pfizer does have a 95 percent efficacy rate but more or less tama naman yung analysis ni Doc Edsel oo talagang marami namang uh, endpoints tayo na kailangan tingnan no uh, uh, preventing disease including preventing severe disease so there was one um column kasi na kulang yata dun sa presentation ni Dr. Edsel which is ano ba ibig sabihin nung nakikita natin na 51% efficacy ng Sinovac um, pinaliwanag niya kasi yung efficacy against severe cases pero yung laging nire-report na efficacy rate na 51% for Sinovac ano bang ibig sabihin nun? Can you explain to us in layman's terms pag sinabing 51% ang efficacy ng Sinovac, ano ibig sabihin nun? Sa yeah. kada 100 na ini-inoculate, anong expectation dun sa 51 na tao at dun sa 49 na tao? So hindi siya dun sa kada 100 na inoculate. No? For example, nagkaroon tayo ng clinical trial. 100 na tao ay binigyan ng bakuna, tapos yung 100 na tao binigyan ng placebo. Tapos ngayon, hinintay nila kung sino magkaka-COVID sa mga iyon. Nakita nila na nagka-COVID halimbawa dun sa mga binigyan ng placebo, dalawang po. No? Pero doon sa mga nabigyan ng bakuna, meron din sampung nagka-COVID. 50% of those who were not given, who were not given the vaccine, who got COVID. So they, they compare it. No? They compare the placebo with the non-placebo group. Meaning, kung nabigyan ka ng bakuna, nababawasan, nakakate yung chance mo na magkaroon ng COVID. So it doesn't mean na yung 49 na katao ay magkakaroon ng COVID? It doesn't mean na that. Karamihan, hindi nagka-COVID. No? Mas parami, hindi naman doon sa 150, 100 nagka-COVID, 50 hindi. It means that a proportion got COVID, but only half of that proportion in the people who got vaccinated got COVID. So it's actually a lot less than 100. Can you tell us for sure what that number is doon sa sinasabing 51%? I haven't seen the ano nga, the report. They haven't given ah, okay. us the, ano, the paper. Right. So once we have that, then we'll be able to share it with us. Okay, the, uh, so all we know is it's a smaller number. Yes. So my question is, what's the minimum standard 
for efficacy rates. Kasi nung nag-research po ako, yung flu vaccine na binibili ng DOH, which I believe is Vaxigrip Tetra, only has a 50.98% efficacy. Pagdating naman sa pneumonia, yung Pneumovax 23, ang efficacy rate is 57%. So parang hindi naman siya kataasan din. So can you tell us ano ba yung minimum standards? Well, the WHO really initially set the minimum standards at 50%, uh, saying that at a, a vaccine that has a 50% efficacy rate may be considered as useful in combating the pandemic or the emergency that we are in now. Okay, so in other words, pag nasa 50s yung efficacy rate, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be alienated as a choice. Yes, no. I, I, you know, kung mabot naman siya, for the, for example, sa FDA, we consider we have minimum standards. Kung pumasa kado naman the minimum standards, then we can give it an authorization, and then para mas marami tayong pagpipili. Ano? No? It doesn't mean it's the one we're going to use, but there are minimum standards that are applicable. And Dr. Domingo, um, lagi na babanggit no na we will do safety first before efficacy. Diba? So, ano ba ibig sabihin nun? Um, kapag hindi siya deemed safe, we will not even uh, evaluate for efficacy. Ganun ba ibig sabihin nun? Well, uh, sabay naman natin sila titignan. Pero yung safety kasi if there are any serious or very specific safety concerns. Kasi vaccines, we give them to healthy people. No? So, the first thing that we want to prevent is causing injury or illness because of something that we give healthy people. So, kung may serious talaga and for example uh, talagang related death related to vaccinations so ito usually po hindi na pumapasa yan phase 1 phase 2 pa lang hindi na umaabot so, ng phase 3 trials yung phase 3 actually we're just expanding on the safety and the efficacy yung phase 1 phase 2 usually na we weed out na diyan yung meron talagang very serious safety concerns and since nabigyan na po ng uh, EUA ang Pfizer uh, ibig sabihin noon pasado siya sa safety di ba and uh, tinitignan ko eh, yung listahan ng, uh, ng side effects ng Pfizer, napansin ko mahaba. Babasahin ko po ha, injection site pain, tiredness, headache, muscle pain, chills, joint, joint pain, fever, injection site swelling, uh, redness, nausea, feeling unwell, swollen uh, lymph nodes, may severe allergic reactions, difficulty in breathing, swelling of face, fast heartbeat, bad rashes, dizziness, and weakness. So considering na mahaba, ang uh, listahan ng uh, side effects ng uh, Pfizer. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Um, anything that is uh, milder than this, eh, pasado sa safety. Well, yeah, these are common ano, no, adverse events of all vaccines. Mm. So wala namang anything unusual about it. Uh, so pag meron talagang mas unusual pa or mas grabe than that we usually see with other vaccines, then that considers closer, ano, no, closer look. But these are regular vaccine reactions. And the vast majority of them are really mild to moderate. No? Meaning the next day, maybe you take a paracetamol and then the next day you get back to normal and you go back to work. So we're only really, you know, what we really look out for are the uh, moderate to severe ones that will, re that will have to put you in the hospital, for example, or, you know, cause death. Uh, yun talaga yun po yung mga importante. Pero kung mild naman siya, tas madaling mamanage, then the, that, is, ano, that is a safety issue that we can, ano, that we can accept. All right, so as long as hindi life threatening, parang yes. ganon. All right, so kasi tinanong ko lang yon, kasi sa batas kasi nakasulat don any harm. So parang ang taas taas naman ng standard na any harm. At least uh, maliwanag na yung matindi lang na effects, uh, especially those na life threatening and requiring hospitalization. Um, yeah. Ang next ko po na tanong is, um, uh, paano po pina factor in ang availability? Kasi doon po sa number two ninyo na requirement for EUA, um, you're supposed to weigh costs against benefits. Um, ang cost-benefit kasi includes economic benefits, di ba? And one of the economic benefits is yung opening up na of the economy. And clearly, kapag dinedelay natin, um, syempre, kumukonti yung economic benefits, di ba? Ibig sabihin nun, we, we will be perennially uh, on semi-lockdown. So ang tanong ko is, how do we factor in availability doon po sa decision making considering na dun po sa matrix ni Dr. Gloriani um maganda po yung matrix niya no very uh, detailed pero parang wala po ako nakitang availability so paano natin siya uh, pina factor in doon sa decision making uh, 
So sa FDA po, I, I think si Dr. Marita Reyes of HDA kanina uh, gave some description on the difference. Sa FDA, when we say cost and ano, uh, benefit and risk, it's really just health concerns. No? I mean, the benefit of getting vaccinated and getting protected versus the possibility of risk of minor and ano, no, severe side effects. Pagdating po sa pagkumasa na po yan sa FDA, then the HTAC will do the cost-benefit analysis. So they do, ano, like if you're vaccinated, the availability also, like if you vaccinate 20% already, only or 30% or 70% of the population. So sila po yung nag-aaral ano, nag, uh, nag, uh, nung pong, ano, cost-benefit analysis and then of course the efficiency of the measure as a public health program. With the FDA, we really limit ourselves to safety and efficacy. Kong Stella, last question please. Um, and we wind up. Siguro po, um, pwede pong dalawang tanong, but I'll give it in one go na lang po. Um, for Secretary Duque, ano po yung ano, cost sharing po ng national government, pati ng LGUs? Kasi um, Congress authorized a total of 82.5 billion pesos, uh, pero at the same time, ang LGUs po ay nagpleplege din. No? So ano po yung magiging cost sharing po niyan? Ang mangyayari po ba nun is the national government will reimburse the LGUs for what they, they've spent for, or what they will spend for the vaccines? Or is it a kind of a matching grant for every one peso na isispend ng LGU, um, imamatch din ng, uh, ng DOH? Ano po ba yung financing doon? And siguro po for my last question, um, siguro I wanted to ask sana any infectious disease um, specialist, pero wag na lang po siguro si Dr. Edsel, if um, just in case po available ngayon ang halimbawa Sinovac, kasi yan po ang medyo controversial ngayon dahil mababa nga ang efficacy rate, kung available po ang Sinovac today, um, are you willing po na magpabakuna sa Sinovac? So siguro um, looking at the list po, baka si Dr. Gloriani na lang po because she's also an infectious disease specialist. So thank you po. Secretary Duque, can you answer first the cost sharing that uh, Kong Stella has been asking? Yeah, broadly lang. But I would like to defer na lang for uh, better time management to uh, Secretary Galvez in rates in the negotiations uh, in, in uh, the area of tripartite agreements. Thank you. Secretary yeah. Galvez. Yes, uh, actually, yung, ano, yung uh, tripartite agreement come in when uh, they, you know, the LGU said that, sir, we have access uh, funds that can help the national government. So ang arrangement po is uh, just in case uh, they you know they opted to buy yung ano yung uh, vaccines. Kami po ang bahala po sa lahat ng mga tinatawag na supplies at saka yung tinatawag natin na yung how to who it will administer this. Ang ano natin is hindi ang ano, wala wala tayong tinatawag na cost sharing but uh in augment namin yung for example they buy you know they buy uh, 20% from their you know, from their uh populace and we we, you know, we uh, intended to, to inoculate 70%. So, i-include yun, magiging 90% yun sa kanya. So, meaning, ang uh, ano natin is, uh, uh, kasi ang gusto po ng uh, LGU is to have an immediate, ano, immediate uh, intervention, uh, considering that they want also to revive the, their economy. Kaya yung mga HUCs, yung mga highly urbanized cities, nag-volotin po silang kumuha ng vaccine so that they, they will have that, that, that uh, they call it access, immediate access, so that they can revive the economy. So ano po yun, ganun po ang gagawin po natin, na parang integrated sharing, uh, hindi naman yung sharing, sharing in terms of yung, yung vaccine sa LGU, pero yung lahat ng gagasusin po sa supplies, uh, gagasusin po ng, uh, ng, ano, ng uh, government, and dadagdaga pa po ng, ano, ng government yung allocated na talaga para sa kanila. Sana po ma-reward yung mas magaling na LGU. Yes, actually, ano, uh, the president really, ano, really admired uh, the those LGUs that uh, really, ano, really uh, volunteered their their, no, their resources. Ang maganda don, ma'am, is uh, uh, the, ano, the constituents will really feel that uh, their LGU is proactive. So yun po maganda. At least maganda rin po yun, ma'am, kasi ibig sabihin, binyar, for example, the government can only uh, procure seventy uh, percent, meaning nag-expand yung yan, nagiging kunyari, boom, nagbayad siya ng twenty percent, na expand ang scope ng immunization, meaning. Uh, mas, mas lumalawak ang volume. Lumalaki ang volume. Sec Galvez, follow-up question ko lang po dyan. So, kung i-augment nyo yung sa LGU, those who are able to shell out fund, hindi naman makompromise ang access of those who cannot? No, no, no ma'am. Kasi ma'am, kasi mayroon silang uh, allocated ma'am. Eh. For example, equitable sharing na lahat ng LGU may 70%. Okay. Uh, ang mangyayari lang po is, uunahin lang na po natin yung mga 
areas na talagang kailangan unahin dahil kasi sila po ang tinamaan ng COVID. Para at least makarecover po tayo kagad ng ano. Ang, 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 po namin, ang target po namin, yung lahat H, ng HUCs, yung pong unahin natin so that we can recover economy 80% or 90% para at least uh, makarecover po tayo kagad. So equitable po yan. Yung mga, ano po, yung mga wala pong pambili, kaya nga sinasabi ko po sa ating mga League of Governors at saka po no, League of Cities, na hayaan lang na po natin yung, ano, yung, yung talagang may, may excess. But those, ano, those who are class 4, class 3, class 2 municipalities, uh, ang government na lang po ang bahala po dyan. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Gloriani? Uh, yes po, Representative Kim. <laughs> Hindi po ako infectious disease specialist. Hindi po ako clinician. Pero ako po ay nasa laboratory. Kaya nga po yung mga datos na ito, mga efficacy, immunogenicity, ay alam na alam po namin. Sa tanong po ninyo, yes po, magpapabakuna po ako. Kasi nakita ko ang datos niya. So meron pa kaming safety parameters na sinusunod sa kayong efficacy. Ito pong efficacy ng Sinovac na parati na lang pong tinatanong sa mga interviews. Meron pong bagong uh, press release po ito. Pero sabi nga ni BG Eric Domingo, kailangan po namin makita yung actual na data. And dadating na po yun, I believe, uh, within this, this week hopefully. No? So doon po sa press release, yung sinasabing 100% efficacy ay against severe disease. So nasabi po ni Dr. Edsel na ini, isa isa pong tinitignan yan. So meron tayong statistical analysis based on ilan ba ang nabakunahan na ganitong age group, anong severity ng disease, mild, moderate, severe. So 100% po ang kanilang efficacy sa severe disease. Sa mild disease ay 78%. Mataas po. At yung 50 sinasabi na percent ay overall po yun. So parang do sa lahat. Meron po, hindi po ako din statistician, pero yung pong overall efficacy, meron pong basehan din po bakit nilang sinabi overall yan, considering siguro lahat ng mild, moderate, and severe. So pero titignan po natin yung datos at ma, pag meron na pong malinaw, ipapa, alam po namin sa lahat. Maraming pong salamat. Thank you so much, Dr. Gloriani. Next is uh, Kongging Swansing. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. And I would like to express my appreciation to you uh, for arranging this meeting uh, because this is very important. Pagpunta natin sa barangay, uh, tayo yung tinatanungan. Ano? At uh, I would like to also express my uh, my appreciation to Secretary Duque and to our MUSTA, uh, Secretary General Galvez, uh, for uh, the very good presentation. Um, Madam Chair, I am also monitoring the hearing in the Senate, and I will not ask the same questions anymore. Um, and um, I would like to ask uh, questions um, to Secretary Duque and Secretary Galvez. So, kay Secretary Duque muna. Uh, Secretary Duque, thank you very much and um, congratulations for the very good presentation. No? Um, it is very detailed and in fact, uh, yung graphics ninyo is, um, um, I was able to understand. No? Pero um, my question now is on the, this is a very good plan, vaccination plan, but the challenge here is the implementation. So ang tanong ko po is number one, uh, because you said that you are ready to implement this February, my first question is, what is this vaccine? My second question is, where are we now in your plans? Because ang alam ko po, um, meron itong uh, storage. So um, are we ready with the storage in the provinces, in the municipalities? And um, also, um, uh, Secretary Duque, I, I believe you have to prepare the master list kung sino ang uunahin. So um, my question is, ano itong vaccine na ito? Um, at uh, how are we prepared? Ano po, yung pong panunin niyo anong bakuna? Tinitignan po natin uh, sa pamunuan po ni uh, Secretary Galvez, yung uh, sa COVAX facility, baka mauna po yung Pfizer. But again, as to the details or the negotiations, I uh, defer to uh, Secretary Galvez. But insofar as the uh, rollout uh, plan is concerned, 
uh, marami na po tayong mga nagawa at patuloy na ginagawa pagdating po sa atin pagpuno ng uh, mga uh, kinakailangan for a successful uh, immunization uh, or rollout uh, plan. So dun sa storage po natin ay uh, nakikipag-usap po ang UH para po sa mga third-party logistics provider na sila po ang uh, mga mahala dun po mula sa brokerage, sa uh, storage, sa warehousing, uh, sa hauling, and sa distribution. So ang uh, layunin po ito yung end-to-end uh, supply chain uh, system readiness at uh, gumagawa po tayo ng mga assessment ito. Halimbawa, ano po? Alam po natin na bawat maguta, bawat maguna ay may kinakailangan uh, temperature range requirement. Hindi ba po kailangan uh, positive 2, positive 8 degrees centigrade, hindi ba naman po negative 20 degrees centigrade, yung po sa Pfizer ay negative 70 to negative 80 degrees centigrade. Ano po ang estado sa ngayon? Uh, for the COVID-19 vaccines, sa nangangailangan na positive 2 to 8 degrees storage temperature, ito po yung uh, RITM natin, handa po yan, yung regional hubs natin, they can store the vaccines from February to July of this year, 2021. Ngunit starting August 2021 to December 2021, kinakailangan na po natin ng karagdagan storage capacity. Dito po papasok ang ating third-party logistics provider uh, para mapuno po yung puwang. Para naman doon sa mga pakuna na nangangailangan ng negative uh, 16 to uh, negative 20 degrees, meron din po tayong sapat na kapasidad uh, para po sa mga bakuna. Pero ito po uh, hanggang July lang din po. Wala August hanggang December 2021, muli kukuha na naman po tayo ng mga third-party logistics provider para po uh, ma-accommodate uh, yung ating po mga bakuna. So, kahit hindi na po tayo mag-aantay ng uh, August, ngayon pa lang po ay uh, ginagawa na po natin uh, being uh, uh, proactive and uh, several steps ahead for uh, ensuring an effective, uh, if not a successful, rollout plan. Yung sa negative 70 to negative 80 degrees, Meron na po tayong limang units of ultra-low freezer available sa RITF. Ang kapasidad po ng bawat isa ay 1,156,000 doses. Ay pa lang lima na. Ito pa lang uh, total uh, five uh, ultra-low freezers. So meron din tayong mga lima pa na uh, ultra-low freezers. Pinag-aaralan po kung paano i-repurpose. We might have to repurpose. Uh, existing ultra-low freezers. No? So, ito po ang uh, mga halimbawa at uh, yung master listing, tama po kayo. Meron tayong uh, master listing na uh, mga uh, mapakunahan, yung ating po micro-planning, kasama po dyan ng LGUs. In fact, ang uh, listahan magagaling din po sa LGUs na sila po ang uh, may dulong patungkol po kung uh, uh, ang kanila pong uh, constituents no? at yung ating pong mapping ng tinatawag natin mga vaccination sites at ang uh, listing ng mga vaccination teams kasama po ang uh, composite teams who will be responsible for the address adverse events following immunization monitoring pagkatapos po silang nakakulahan. So uh, yan po ang uh, inihanda natin na kita naman po din yung doon yung proseso natin, yung vaccine uh, administration policy ay nakapalipot po doon sa limang na uh, anin na bagay at napakamahalaga. Number one, yung po registration. Number two, yung po atin na uh, counseling, education, and uh, the final consent form. Pangatlo po yung screening. Kailangan kaya lang po yan. May magbabantay po tayo dyan. No? At pang-apat po yung atin na uh, uh, actual uh, vaccination uh, administration at ang panglima po naman, yung pinatawag natin uh, AEFI, uh, Management, Post uh, Immunization, Surveillance, uh, Monitoring, and uh, Reporting, or Reporting. So, lahat po ito. Uh, Kanda po natin, uh, 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 Your Honors, no? na 
Hindi po ito parang nagbabakuna lamang tayo ng oral polio vaccine o ng measles. Kasi dito po, sa konteksto ng pandemya, kinakailangan dito yung uh, tinatawag natin infection prevention control measures. Kailangan po ito yung may sanitation area, may sapat na disinfectants, may face mask, may face shield, may physical distancing. So this is really quite a challenge. Ano po. Pero pinagandaan na po ng buong Department of Health. Ito po ang uh, plano natin so that, uh, of course, the proof of the pudding, as they say, is in the eating. So you can have uh, all the best plans in the world, but execution uh, will be the best proof of, uh, of any good or excellent plan. Salamat po. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Ma'am, Ma can, Ma can I add? Uh, Pertaining uh, yes. sa kung anong yung mauna, uh, poro na poro, clarity po. Uh, meron po tayong clinical trial sa, ano, sa, sa February, first week of February. Most likely ito po yung tiyatawag na WHO trial. 15,000 doses po ito. Most likely po Johnson & Johnson po yun. And then later on po, kung uh, ma-approban yung ating appeal for uh, COVAX, uh, mauna po yung Pfizer. So this will be on February, all February. And then susunod po ay Sinovac uh, 50,000. It will be delivered uh, most likely uh, 20, uh, February 20 and onwards. And then uh, we have, you know, we have also some, you know, some, some reports that uh, some countries will also, you know, will also uh, donate uh, AstraZeneca and Novavax. Most likely, mga March, April po ito. And then also Moderna will come in May. And then uh, yung ano rin po, yung AstraZeneca, yung, yung uh, um, order ng 2.6 billion ng, ng mga business sector, it might come, come on May. But majority of our, you know, our, our portfolio, yung itong portfolio, will come uh, during the third quarter, early uh, June, uh, July, and, uh, July and August. Yun po ang magiging parang ano po, uh, synchronization po ng mga uh, vaccine na darating po sa atin. Nasaan na po tayo? Nasaan na po tayo? Nasa preparation phase po tayo. We have one, one month to prepare at uh, ang implementation phase po natin ay nasa February 20. Okay. Um, uh, thank you, thank you, Secretary Galvez. Thank you, uh, Secretary Duque. Secretary Duque, um, so nabanggit na po uh, ninyo um, na uh, Pfizer ang mauna. So very temperature sensitive po yung Pfizer. So paano po kaya? Kasi ang, 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 ang sagot yung po kanina is on the freezers na dito siguro yun sa, dito sa Manila. But how about in the provinces? How are this uh, stored uh, for distribution in the municipalities? Uh, are there storages um, available na merong temperature sensitive? Yes, maraming salamat po, uh, Your Honor. Uh, yung, uh, Pfizer. yung Pfizer po, malabang ang susundin natin modelo ay yung sa Malaysia na ibibigay po ito sa malalapit na lugar dito sa kalunsuran, NCR, para yung uh, sophisticated cold chain na uh, requirement ay maiwasan uh, dahil nga ang, uh, ang uh, mas malalapit na lugar, mas mabilis po na ma-distribute ito po ng uh, bakuna ng Pfizer. Pero para naman po sa mga malalayong lugar, Iba naman pong bakuna na may less uh, sophisticated, less complicated uh, storage temperature requirement. Ano po, kagaya ng AstraZeneca or kaya yung Sinovac. Malamang po, ay, uh, ito ang gagawin natin uh, sa mga malalayong mga lugar at yun po yung inyong mga nabagge. Now, yung pong ating policy dito is uh, tinatawag po natin uh, like a portfolio of uh, vaccines. Ano po? So, yung iba-ibang bakuna, iba-ibang katangi ang pagdating po sa storage uh, or temperature requirement. At uh, i-gagawin po natin akma doon po sa kakayahan o sa availability ng mga uh, storage uh, capacities sa mga iba-ibang pamahalaan na uh, lokal. O provincia, ay yung mga cities, o uh, independent component cities. So, yung mga municipalities. So, sa kasalukuyan po, minamahap na natin itong ating mga capacities. At kung kinakailangan, hindi eh, dadali natin ang uh, magbukuha tayo ng additional ultra low freezers. Ano po? Pero sa kasalukuyan, pinatapos pag-ugantin yung ating assessment. Salamat po.
Okay. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Secretary Duque. Uh, you know, on the implementation, just to address uh, the stigma on the vaksha, because 47 percent yung yung ayaw magpabakuna, and then 27 percent yan po yung statistics ngayon na 27 percent are unsure. Um, meron lang po ako suggestion. Do you consider dun sa implementation on uh, uh, house to house instead of yung uh, target population yung pupunta dun sa sa sites sa uh, vaccination sites? Tama po kayo, yung house to house, posible pong uh, uh, gagawin natin uh, kasama na po sa pagpaplano, lalo na po yung sa mga very, very vulnerable and at uh, high risk uh, senior citizens. No? Uh, pero hindi, mas, this is more uh, exception rather than the rule. Kasi po, kinakailangan din natin talaga na uh, bantayan yung yes. post immunization uh, surveillance uh, monitoring and uh, recording uh, of adverse events following immunization. So, uh, yan po. Titignan po natin on a more focused uh, basis yung uh, sector na uh, baka uh, mahirapan kung pagpuputayin sila sa mga vaccination sites. We will bring the vaccines to them. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, last question. Um, uh, kay Secretary Galvez, um, nakita ko po yung sa prioritization ninyo. Um, nakalagay po doon 22.8% and then 10.15%. Um, Na-mention po kasi kanina, this is a three-year um, um, vaccination program. So um, ang alam ko po, hindi natin kayang um, bakunahan lahat ng targeted population this year. So sana po um, ma makita ng, ng ating mga kababayan kung ilan po ba ang target ng 2021, 2022, and 2023. Para po uh, just to give them an assurance na uh, may pag-asa na, na lahat ay, ay na, na targeted population ay mabakunahan. And then secondly po, dito sa presentation ninyo, nalulungkot lang po ako na sa kulihan po yung essential workers so uh, how can we how can the economy bounce back kung um um nasa nasa red po ang essential workers na mabakunahan so um hindi ko po maintindihan yung yung slide na to kasi uh, 24 point uh, 24 million 668 um, nandun sa first priority, second priority, and fifth priority. Tapos um, uh, on the same slide po, uh, naka-red yung teachers, yung other government workers, other essential workers. So um, um, ang alam ko po is 140 million doses ang, uh, ang um, target ninyo for this year. So hindi po mag magtugma itong slide na to dun sa sinasabi ninyo may 140 million doses kayo for this year. So sana po um magkaroon tayo ng ng a uh, program uh, ilan po ba yung 2021, 2022 and 2023. So and then ang um, request ko po sana ay mabigyan ng priority yung uh, essential workers para po maka-bounce back yung economy natin. Um, so, um, Madam Chair, uh, I know um, limited lang yung time ko. Uh, allow me to express this message to Secretary Duque and Secretary uh, Gal uh, Galvez. Um, we do not want a repeat of the Deng Baksha where there are a lot of issues such as safety, efficacy, and political interference. I have full trust and confidence in both of you because of your credibility, most especially to our Mr. Uh, Secretary General Galvez. I will pray for your success in handling this vaccination program to save the lives of the Filipino people. Uh, maraming salamat, Secretary Galvez, Secretary Duque, and Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Secretary I... Galvez, yes po. Yeah. Um, Imam yung, ano, yung prioritization, uh, kasi alam po natin na yung, ato, yung ating pong ba, mga vaccine ay dadating po na in tranches. Ang shipment po kasi per shipment is uh, 500 to 1 million per shipment. So ibig sabihin, pagka gusto namin, pagka once na ship ka agad yan, daling ka agad yan sa, no, sa vaccination center. 
Uh, ibig sabihin, uh, ang prioritization po na yan is by tranches. But uh, sa year po na yun, 70% po sa 2021, ang ano po natin is 50 to 70 million ang ating target. Uh, ginawa natin ang prioritization kasi in tranches po ang dating ng ano ng uh, tawag nating vaccine. Uh, inuuna po natin, bakit inuuna po natin yun, no, yung prioritization tayo para at least one, to preserve yung institution, to preserve po yung health worker, tsaka yung mag- uh, magano mag institution na mag uh, implement ng vaccination. So yun po ang pinaka-importante. Second uh, prioritization is how to prevent yung death at saka comorbidities. Yun po yun. Pero actually, yung lahat po na yan, mababakunahan po yan. Inaano lang natin, prioritize lang natin because of the limited uh, uh, global supply. But definitely, ang ating target for this year, 2021, is 70 million. Then later on sa 2022, another no, another 70 million. Kasi ang mangyayari po ma'am, yung binakanuhan po natin ngayong year, hindi po natin alam kung yung efficacy baka maglalaps na rin po sa 2020 and no, 2022. So kaya po tatlong cycle po yan para at least uh, pagka once nagkaroon na ng herd immunity at saka na-contain na po natin yun, no, yung ating uh, uh, virus, mas ma, ano po, na talagang long term yung ano po natin. Kasi hindi po natin lang kung kailan po natin contain. So to to cut to ano, to make it ano na uh, 70% ngayon po and then we will target another 30 to 40% para ma-ano natin 100% and then titingnan po natin 2023 kung just in case na talagang makuha natin herd immunity yun po ang gagawin po natin so that that three year plan so ilang po ang ano po ang uh, masasabi ko po ngayon salamat secretary galvez in relation to the question of uh konging uh on the essential workers uh, I don't know if you are aware of what Indonesia did. They're doing the opposite, no? So, ang binibigyan po nila are the young ones or the working adult. So, gusto ko lang tanungin kay Secretary Duque or kay Sec Galvez, do you see any merit of including a plan like this in our country? No? Can I answer first? Uh, Ma'am, pwede po kasi flexible naman po tayo. Nakita po natin sa different countries na naging flexible po tayo. Yung ating ano, yung ating ano, yung ating uh, prioritization is only a guide. Ang pinaka-importante lang po dito, masunod po natin yun because it is being prescribed by WHO which is the preservation of our health care workers at the institution and also uh, to limit uh, death and uh, save more lives. Okay, thank you. Uh, ano po, uh, 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 hindi ko lang po uh, susugat yung sinabi ni uh, Secretary Gardens na tayo po uh, meron pong malinaw na dahilan kung bakit tayo gumawa ng prioritization formula. Yung pong uh, healthcare workers, alam po naman natin sila ang pinaka high risk and uh, most vulnerable at sila po ang uh, mga human resource for the entire health sector. At kailangan po natin siguro doon na ang uh, sektor ng kalusugan ay uh, matutustusan po natin na sila po ang nangangalaga ng mga pasyente na mga may COVID. Pangalawa naman po ay ang ating mga senior citizens dahil alam na po na po natin, tumaan ng uh, alos isang taon, uh, sila po ang talagang uh, uh, may katumbas ng pinakamalaking case fatality rate, almost 7%. Ano po? Yung uh, age 50 to 85 and above, uh, ang dapos po namin nagpapakita na halos uh, 7% ang uh, namamatay uh, doon sa age group na yun na nagkaroon ng COVID-19 infection. Samantalang yung ages uh, from less than 1 year of age to about 49 years of age, less than 5.5% po ang uh, case fatality rate. So ito malinaw. We have to save lives. Who will, whose lives will we want to save? E di yung po mga talagang uh, vulnerable and those uh, at least ang uh, uunahin po natin. At syempre, ang isahan po naman natin, all inclusive. Kasama na po yung mga essential workers na nabanggit. Salamat. Thank you, uh, Secretary Duque. Next to interpolate is uh, Kong Joet Garcia. Kong Joet. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good noon to everyone, especially to our colleagues and resource persons. Uh, Madam Chair, I wanted to uh, get some clarification regarding the supply chain uh, management plan of uh, the DOH, most specifically yung, uh, cold storage requirement, which was uh, kanina, no, um, also asked by uh, Kong Ging. So, um, Secretary Duque, may we better understand 
uh, you mentioned earlier you're talking to third party logistics uh, providers uh, but uh, what is the role of each level of our government so you also mentioned na yung national uh, you'll be using the existing cold storage of the our national immunization uh, program and then uh, from there uh, syempre the delivery yan dun sa ating mga implementation points or service delivery points which will be the LGUs, health facilities, maybe DOH uh, hospitals in the area. Can we understand uh, better, uh, Secretary, ano yung role at ano yung extent ng facility na kinakailangan ma-provide uh, from the third-party provider to um, the national government and then all the way down to the implementation sites, uh, meaning the LGUs? Well, uh, meron po kasi tayo na mga gap analysis. Napaka-mahalaga po nito. Uh, binibilang po natin ano ba yung mga kapasidad from the national level down to the regional uh, level to the uh, provinces, uh, cities, municipalities, uh, up to the RHUs and implementing units. Katulad po na tama po kayo, private uh, public hospitals, uh, LGU hospitals, ang uh, ating po mga uh, private clinics, ang ating po mga uh, facilities ng uh, AFP, TNP, ang Bucor, BJMP, at uh, mga uh, lahat po hanggat sa mabuo natin and uh, uh, map of the uh, vaccination sites no? uh, kung saan uh, magpapakuna. Uh, so, at each level of the delivery chain or even the storage capacity chain, logistics chain, ay meron po tayo mga identified na mga katulangan. Halimbawa, nabanggit ko po kanina, uh, pinipigibak po natin uh, itong national immunization program po natin na kasalukuyang ginagamit natin for measles and uh, polio. At nakatalaga na po yung atin na uh, atin po na uh, supply chain uh, readiness or supply chain capacity at saka yung cold chain uh, capacity. At nabanggit ko po kanina na hanggang July kakayarin po natin. Tandaan po natin, hindi naman lahat ng 148 million doses ay darating at one, uh, one big, uh, big time at uh, isang uh, magsakan. Uh, ito po ay stoppered. No? Kaya, uh, ang ginagawa po natin, yung schedule din natin, yung mga capacities natin, uh, dahil ayaw din naman natin na masyadong malaki yung gagastusin natin, tapos eh, hindi naman na uh, sapat, eh, hindi naman darating uh, uh, ang uh, mga uh, bakunang inaasahan. Pero ganun pa man, our planning is on the assumption na darating lahat ng mga bakuna na 150 million, 148 uh, million uh, at uh, na amin na pong natukoy. Halimbawa, na by uh, August, uh, for, negative, for uh, 2 to 8 degrees centigrade uh, uh, cold storage requirement, ay eh, uh, makalangan din po natin ng third-party logistics beginning, yes, August up to December. And for the negative 20 degrees centigrade, makalangan na din na po natin dahil uh, hindi, na po sa, mag, hindi na po sapat yung ating po kasalukuyang uh, capacity. So, uh, makikipag-ugnayan po kami sa inyo, uh, Congressman at uh, sa mga LGUs, kung uh, may, uh, nakikita pa kayong mga karagdagan na puwang or uh, gaps ano po, sa inyo pong uh, distrito sa inyo pong probinsya na kinakailangan po puno, punuhin ng uh, department na lang. Just to understand uh, better, uh, Madam Chair, so Secretary Duque, from the time that uh, the manufacturer delivers uh, the vaccine here in our country, uh, sila babahala dun sa storage and then from uh, their storage, it is delivered by ito dun nga sa uh, different uh, DOH uh, national immunization program uh, points. And then from that point, dun naman bababa sa iba't ibang mga LGUs. I wanted to find out lang so that uh, we know exactly uh, where uh, gaps might be. 
Tama po ba yung pagkakaintindi ko, Secretary? Tama po pa yun. Una-una, ulitin po lang po, iba yung papasin pa po na, iba yung bang kanila mga requirement. So, dapat sensitive tayo doon sa mga uh, katamihan ng mga uh, pakuna at uh, ang plano natin will depend uh, on these particular features of each of the vaccines. So, vaccines are, uh, are uh, created uh, uh, the same. No? So, meron po uh, na alam ko sa negotiations sa limbawa ni Secretary Mabuti pa kaya kay Secretary Gaudes ko na hindi pa kasi siya po yung nakikiusap pagdating po sa mga ibang uh, vaccine manufacturing companies na sila na rin po ang magsusupply end to end yeah. ah, mula sa pagdating uh, ng uh, bakuna uh, all the way to the uh, inoculation sites ay meron na po silang sistema na kapalaga. So Secretary, uh, Secretary uh, Gaudes. Your Honor, uh, may I uh, make uh, some uh, statement on, on the supply chain? Sir, uh, what we are doing right now is uh, we are we are now preparing the supply agreement with the manufacturer. In the in the, you know, in the course of ano, course of uh, yun pung ano yung uh, uh, Pfizer end to end po yan, meaning kasi because of the sensitivity of the the vaccine, ang gagawin po nila tawag nain po throughput, meaning uh, you identify the vaccine centers and uh, Pfizer and us uh, with us uh, will deliver it uh, to the vaccination centers. Kaya po ngayon na nakipag-usap ko ngayon sa mga mayors, uh, nakita niyo po, very excited po yung mga ibang mayor di Senator Manila. Kanya-kanya po, kumuha na po sila ng mga cold storage. Uh, they already, uh, they, they already you know, coordinated with different uh, cold storage uh, association. And now we, we are inspecting it this, uh, this coming, ano, this coming uh, week. Uh, meron din po mga RGO, for example, doon po sa, ano, sa Iloilo. Talagang nagpagawa po si Mayor Trenas ng, ano, ng talagang cold chain for Pfizer. Uh, kasi po yung dalawang, yung dalawa po niyan, ang kailangan sensitive po ay yung Pfizer and Moderna. Moderna is negative 20. So ano po natin, ang arrangement po natin is throughput. Meaning, tinatawag natin sa major hub, uh, meron po tayong uh, talagang uh, cold chain na uh, facility dito po sa Metro Manila and also dito sa sa area ng Santa Rosa and also with, uh, with ano, in Cebu. They can accommodate more than 500,000 and also in, in Dabao. And then titingnan po natin from that, uh, from, from that, from that end, uh, tatanungin natin ang Pfizer that it, 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 they can also supply other cities through hub and spokes ang tawag namin hub and spokes so major hubs and then your spokes so with that, uh, ganun po ang gagawin natin sana naman po, yung sa Sinovac, end to end din kasi pati sila, ano, meron silang uh, IP Biotech is their local manufacturing here even yung, ano, yung, yung technology on monitoring of adverse event meron po silang apps so yun po ang uh, ginagawa po namin na parang yung supply agreement po with the vaccine manufacturer, it will be a long-term uh, uh, partnership with them. So they can partner with a uh, private and a private uh, supplier or the DOH will provide from the private supplier. So ganun po. Pero minan, minan po, in, 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 in po namin sila, uh, sinasabihan po namin sila na dapat mag-credit po sila ng, ano, ng kanilang mga tawag natin cold chain uh, provider. Secretary, Hindi, hindi po ba possible na manufacturer na rin ang mag-handle ng cold chain management, yung storage? Yes, but uh, it will be... Part of negotiation nyo po. Yes, but uh, it is different, ano po, uh, different po na, ano yan, na financial requirement. Kasi yung vaccine lang ang ano, natin na binabayaran. But uh, they, they said that uh, it can range to 1.2-2.5 dollars ang uh, cold chain uh, requirement depending on the, ano, the requirement of the vaccine. Okay. Ganun po gagawin po namin para at least end-to-end end end na po. At saka ano po, ano po namin, katulad po ng Sinovac, saka nasa ka na rin po ang syringe. So ibig sabihin na doon na end-to-end na parang yung sunshine na natin na kumbaga sa ano yung lahat ng pangangailangan natin, syringe and other peripherals kasama na po doon sa vaccine. Okay. Please proceed, uh, Kong Joet. Yeah. Madam Chair, so that uh, we just have a clearer picture, maybe we can ask um, DOH uh, or uh, Sec Secretary Duque or Secretary Galvez, siguro to submit to this committee uh, when they're ready with the list of uh, inventory and location ng uh, mga cold storage uh, facilities. And if ever, baka pati nga yung refrigerated uh, uh, van na available na, uh, right now with our uh, national and even local government and some private partners so that we know exactly where we need to build more capacity 
uh, especially in strategic uh, locations. And then I wanted to ask also, Madam Chair, ito bang uh, initiative ng mga LGUs to set up their cold storage, meron bang requirements to? Is this, um, uh, meron bang binigay ang DOH, ang IATF, on how to uh, build uh, these uh, storage, uh, cold storage uh, facilities? Ina-accredit pa ba to ng, uh, ng IATF or ng DOH? Yeah. We will submit uh, our uh, data uh, doon po uh, tinatanong uh, patungkol po sa kahandaan uh, yung inventaryo ng uh, ating po end-to-end uh, -end, uh, supply chain uh, capacities, yung mga warehouse, warehousing, yung po ating uh, honing, yung ating po uh, mga uh, iba, pati healthcare uh, waste management, ano, reverse logistics, ay uh, kasama na po ito sa uh, preliminary data na amin na po mga kala at pinigyan po namin ang uh, committee uh, at ang uh, pangalawa na inyo po uh, tanong ay kung ang IETF pa meron uh, resolution na nagsasabi na maganda ang uh, mga LGUs uh, to complement the national government capacities. Uh, but uh, we will uh, bring it back to, uh, we will take it up to IATF if we see some really uh, very serious uh, gaps no? uh, after uh, we shall have uh, done the complete full inventory of the required capacities. So uh, right now we are uh, teaching our regional uh, offices to compute uh, storage capacities for LGUs. So, importante po ito, yung mga regional directors po natin, uh, yung mga technical na mga uh, ating po mga uh, uh, DOH, uh, sila po ngayon ay uh, magtuturo kung paano yung formula to compute storage capacities for LGUs. So, so sila alam nyo. Yeah, final questions lang, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, sec Duque, yung, uh, kasi sabi nyo kanina, no, gagamitin natin yung cold storage ng existing, uh, existing cold storage ng DOH na part of the National Immunization Program. But wala naman titigil dun sa mga current immunization programs natin. No? So kaya niya naman even if dumating itong mga uh, COVID-19 uh, vaccines. Sabi ko, uh, Madam Chair, uh, sa ngayon, kakayanin natin ang July. Uh, dahil uh, meron tayong assumptions if X percent of the total uh, doses will arrive, we have this particular capacity and making sure that our existing national immunization program does not get compromised. So, tutuloy pa rin po natin. In fact, this week, magbabakuna uh, for uh, OPV. So, hindi po natin na uh, isasabra rin. Ito po ang napaka- uh, mahalaga na uh, national immunization program at uh, ito po ang uh, mangyayari bandang August uh, kapag ka nakalap namin ang datos mula po sa mga uh, centers for health development at nakuha nila yung mga uh, LGU capacities ay uh, matutugunan po natin ito kasi ayaw din po natin yung overlapping wastage of uh, resources uh, mamaya hindi yung pumagamit uh, may kawa rin po tayong dapat uh, uh, iisipin so we assure the uh, committee uh, that uh, we will be uh, prudent in uh, the use of our uh, resources uh, with the help of course uh, of the LGUs Last question uh, Madam Chair, with regards to monitoring uh, yung, yung, yung submission of uh, reports uh, from, I, I suppose, the MHO, CHO, all the way up. Will this be different from the, how we submit uh, reports uh, with our current immunization uh, program? Will this be already in real time? Will you be providing a new system? Kasi nga medyo mas uh, sensitive at saka medyo mas uh, kailangan natin um, uh, precise, no? mas, mas precise tayo dito sa implementation ng COVID-19. Are we going to utilize the same submission of reports from 
MHOCHO all the way up to the national government or meron tayong sistema, an online system that will be put in place. And then uh, finally, do you suggest also, Secretary Duque, na uh, LGUs who has, have the capacity to build yung uh, mass vaccination centers instead of putting it down to each and every uh, health facility, mas magiging efficient ba and better monitored, better handling if we do it on a centralized level, at least on a per province uh, secretary. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, doon po sa unang uh, uh, katanungan ninyo, uh, uh, we hope to be taking the opportunity to digitalize our uh, systems. Uh, from uh, beginning from master listing, to uh, the, uh, okay. uh, the reporting of uh, adverse uh, events, following the immunization, uh, etc. Uh, so, you gusto po namin, we, we are uh, working with uh, the ICT. It begins with the QR code, so pre registration, we enroll on the Bawat vaccine, we have a unique uh, QR code. Para mas madali pong uh, i-transmit uh, ang uh, datos uh, from the uh, local epidemiology surveillance units to the region, to the national uh, FD and surveillance uh, offices. So, we're working. You know, alam niyo po, uh, Your Honor, Mr. Madam uh, Chair, may mga kakulangan pa rin tayo sa internet connectivity. No? So, we cannot really aspire for a full uh, digitalized uh, uh, system uh, uh, of our database management uh, kasi may mga lugar na talagang wala. Ano? So, hindi po maiwasan ang manual uh, uh, procedure or manual uh, way of uh, uh, doing things. No? But uh, like I said, we are trying our level best no? na, na, na digitalized at uh, uh, para ma, ma report ang atin uh, coverage as much as possible real time ng atin mga pagbabakuna uh, from local to uh, regional to the national. So kailangan po talaga ito yung tracking, no? Kasi ilan na ba na bakunahan? Ilan na ba ang natitirang bakuna? For example, so yung tracking ng uh, real time ng mga ilan na bakunahan, ilan pa ang natirang uh, uh, bakuna, ilan pa ang capacity na natitira sa mga cold storage. Ano po? So, uh, kinakailangan talaga uh, natin ng end-to-end uh, digitalized uh, supply chain registration uh, AEFI uh, surveillance monitoring system. Okay. Uh, I have additional question. That's your last question. Your time is up. Okay. Sec Duque, additional uh, question lang in relation doon sa storage kanina na tinatanong ni Kong Joet. Kasi you mentioned on the reliability of the internet in the registration. I think as a whole, we need to consider yung uh, electrical supply, the quality of supply in each of the provinces or localities when certain LGU propose for uh, storage facility. So siguro po, um, kailangan tingnan natin that the quality of the vaccine will be maintained up to the end user. So, I think this is something new, although in the national immunization program, kasi we only require yung uh, regular uh, refrigeration, no? yung uh, cooling storage natin, pwede yung ordinary refrigerator ata. So, uh, baka we need to consider the readiness talaga, hindi dahil nag-propose ang isang LGU, you will allow them. So, masusing assessment, I think, ang kailangan ng ating uh, mga partners uh, when they propose uh, for the storage facility. And then, yung sa registration lang, uh, SEC, maitanong ko lang po, kasi ang hiningi ng DOH is a uh, projected number of the uh, health workers 
and uh, I think based on your groupings, no? Meron na po bang nagsimula na registration online of those interested, no? Within this uh, group, ang DOH po ba nagsimula na may online registration tayo for vaccination? Or manual po tayo, papel pa rin po tayo na magsasubmit ang uh, MHO or certain facilities? Check Duque. Kung uh, meron po tayo online at saka offline, uh, for those without internet connectivity, uh, which can be sent to uh, a particular number, which we will provide uh, after this. No? So meron po tayo na inuumpisahan uh, sistema uh, para po uh, tubunan yung inyo po concern. No? At ganun din po, uh, we will ensure that the, there is uh, stable uh, electricity uh, in uh, power plant areas where it can uh, possibly spoil our uh, vaccines if uh, the uh, electrical supply is inadequate or magkakaroon ng mga brownouts, sisiguraduhin po natin na meron tayong mga generators no? uh, para pupuno sa uh, katulangan sa kuryente. Uh, so, yun, yun lang po. Ang, uh, all your suggestions, uh, Madam Chair, are well taken. Thank you. Thank you, Sec. Next to ask question is uh, Representative Mike Defensor. Kong Mike. Kong Mike Defensor, our Vice Chair. Okay. Uh, we'll call him again. Would like to call on Representative Hector Sanchez. Kong uh, good, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, a good afternoon to everyone. Uh, first, I would like to thanks and commend all the resource uh, person uh, for their uh, very good, uh, um, complete and uh, concise uh, report of our agenda today. Now, my my first question is. It was mentioned a while ago that 80% of the available uh, vaccines uh, were already bought by rich uh, uh, countries, which uh, we have only 18% uh, available. Baka tayo maubusan, uh, Madam Chair. At uh, uh, based on the source of funds, which is... Uh, uh, the available uh, funds that we have right now is 82.5 uh, billion pesos, but uh, we are uh, requiring 148 million uh, uh, vaccines uh, for the Filipino. Now, if we consider one of the uh, vaccine, which is uh, the Pfizer, um, will be needing another 60 billion pesos. So with this, uh, may I ask uh, maybe, uh, to Secretary Galvez uh, uh, where we can uh, find the balance uh, of this uh, uh, for the COVID uh, vaccine, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, sir, uh, your honors. Uh, meron po tayong ano, portfolio na pitong vaccine. At uh, yun po, uh, ngayon po ongoing negotiation. Pero natatlo na po in close natin sa term sheet, uh, 30 po sa Novavax, 17 sa AstraZeneca, uh, 25 po yung sa Sinovac, or all in all for 72. Uh, ongoing din po ang uh, ating negotiations sa, ano, sa Pfizer, malaki-laki po ang volumes nito. And then also yung Moderna, sinasabi ni Ambassador, no, Ambassador uh, Babes Romualdez, I can already announce, na 20 million ang uh, makukuha natin with uh, 10 million for the private sector and 10 million for the government. And then, uh, meron pa po tayong uh, ongoing negotiation sa Johnson & Johnson. Malapit na rin po natin mapirmahan. All in all po, masasecure natin yung 137 million. Wala pa po doon yung COVAX facility na equivalent to uh, more than 40 million doses. So, wala po tayong problema sa ano, supply. Ang ano lang natin, problema lang natin supply is that yung first quarter and second quarter, dahil po talagang nakuha po ng rich country, yun ang talagang pinupunan po natin yung first quarter and second quarter. Sa so, third part, quarter and fourth quarter, wala po tayong problema. 
Madam Chair. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, my, my, my second question is, uh, uh, right now we have the new variant of this uh, coronavirus, which is uh, uh, the status of the clinical uh, trials. We are just in uh, phase three. So um, we, we have not yet done with uh, uh, phase four. That's why uh, we, the, there is a, a news uh, from uh, Norway that there the are 23 uh, who died on uh, a certain uh, uh, vaccine, which is, I think my suggestion is uh, to, to the implementer or to the DOH, maybe um, we can uh, avoid this by way of, uh, you know, uh, yung mga elderly or uh, senior citizen, uh, maiwasan muna na I think uh, less priority uh, para to avoid this uh, uh, things happen. Ano po yung, uh, anyway, you know, uh, Ang ating ano naman is uh, to avoid yung complication and other uh, ano na wag mapahama. So uh, that that is my one of the manifestation. And another thing, um, I, I would like to ask this uh, uh, question to the good secretary Doki. Um, herd immunity. Uh, to attain this, uh, at least 95% of the population uh, is uh, already vaccinated. Now, uh, my question is, um, what is your plans uh, to, to target this uh, 95%, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Ma Madam Chairman and Secretary Doki? Una pong uh, punto na uh, binanggit ninyo, yung UK variant, wala pong uh, ebidensya na napapakita na maapektuhan po yung efficacy ng uh, pakuna. So, uh, lumalabas po na so far, given the available uh, data, <coughs> what ay uh, effective po yung uh, mga pakuna. Uh, to uh, the different uh, variants of the COVID-19 virus. Pag yung sa senior citizens naman po, ay uh, pinitignan po natin ito uh, dahil bawat bakuna meron po mga indications. No? Uh, anong edad pwede ibigay, it will be uh, 16 to uh, 85, mga iba 18 to 69. So iba-iba po ito. At ang ating vaccine expert panel, ang ating pong uh, mga uh, uh, iba pang mga uh, expert. expert in national immunization uh, practical advisory group or NITAG ay uh, sila po ang magbibigay ng uh, advice sa DOH in terms of uh, adjustments in the implementation. Uh, of the uh, immunization program. So, uh, upo kayo mag-aalala at uh, we will uh, not only come out with uh, general guidelines but also specific guidelines uh, or uh, special groups uh, or uh, the more at least more vulnerable uh, sub-sectors uh, uh, and therefore uh, will make the necessary adjustments uh, in the implementation phase. Salamat po. Thank you. Uh, that's all, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you that's so all. much. I'd like to call on again uh, Kong Mike Defensor. Do we have Kong Mike Defensor? Madam Chair. Uh, please proceed, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Madam Chair, uh, first of all, congratulations for calling for this uh, uh, hearing, Madam Chair. And uh, if I may, Madam Chair, sa ilang katanungan lang po sa FDA, uh, if possible, uh, Madam Chair, I, I heard the Director Domingo 
uh, speaking earlier. Go ahead, sir. Yes. Uh, una, Madam Chair, alam niyo talaga may kaguluhan yung aking pananaw tungkol dito sa vaccines. Kasi on one hand, uh, sinabi na nga po ng IATF na DOH na talaga pong 80% ay nakuha na ng uh, iba't ibang mga bansa. 80% ng vaccines. And uh, in fact, marami ho ang nag-pre-order. Marami ang uh, talagang minamadali. At dito po sa atin, uh, marami na rin po ang mga mga nakapending. No? In fact, Pfizer-BioNTech na approved na po. Tama po ba, uh, FDA? Ah, yes, Mr. Congressman, Madam Chair. Yung pong Pfizer, ang pending po na applications ngayon sa amin ay yung sa AstraZeneca, yung pong sa Gamalea, yung pong uh, Sputnik. And then the last one na nag-submit po pero kulang pa po yung submission nila is yung Sinovac. Opo. Madam Chair, ang kasi po ang, ang kaguluhan sa aking isip, sa isang banda nga ako, sa pananaw ko baka nakakatakot, mabilis, pero sa isang banda naman, uh, katulad po ng bansa Singapore, hindi ko na po ilalabas sa UK, sa Estados Unidos, sa iba pa bansa. Kunyari ho, dito sa Asia, yung Nepal, at maging ang, uh, well at least in the Asia Pacific, ang Pakistan, India, nagkaroon na ng mga approval. Sa atin po, parang nandito pa lang tayo sa proses ng pagpapa-approve uh, pag, pag, ng mga vaccines. Pero dito sa Singapore, talaga hong nagawa na nila, uh, si Prime Minister, yung kanila po Prime Minister, nakapagpa-inexion first week of January, Uh, ang isa pong worry ko, bakit po ba na kung meron na pong approval, for example, ng FDA, and you mentioned earlier, Director Domingo, yung may mga stringent rules on the FDA, bakit ba po parang napakahirap ng proseso dito sa atin? Uh, well, hindi naman po mahirap. No? Actually, nilimit na nga po natin to 21 days. Kaya at yung sabi po, nagre-rely naman tayo at may recognition tayo ng stringent regulatory authority pero meron din po kasi tayong kailangan tingnan na local requirements. Yun pong stability of the product when it gets here. The quality, make sure it's the same product from the same uh, factory yung nakakarating sa atin at they follow good manufacturing practice. Pagkatapos po doon sa clinical side naman, pinasesegregate lang po natin yung data no, ng Asian population doon sa kanilang study so that our expert can take a look and see na wala naman pong pagkakaiba din no, yung kanyang safety and efficacy. And that is limited po to, ano, to 14 days plus 7 days for the administrative work. Thank you uh, for that, Director Domingo. Uh, ito pong Singapore, do you consider themselves na maganda ho ang kanilang polisiya sa pag-approve yes. ng mga vaccines? Opo. Singapore is uh, considered a stringent regulatory authority. Thank you for that. Kasi po nakalagay dito sa inyong requirements, uh, and I'm holding on the, I'm reading the requirements circular of FDA 2020-036. Tama po ba? Opo. Opo. Ang requirements niyo po, number one, cover letter requesting to issue an EUA. Number two, valid license to operate as drug importer. Bakit po drug importer? Or, Actually, uh, opo. Ang nag apply po sa amin siya po yung mag import ng gamot dito. So kapag binigay po sa kanya yung EUA, yun po yung hihingin ng customs. Yun na, nga po, papel, ano eh, Director Domingo eh, kasi dyan po nagkakaroon ng problema sa pagbili, pagka meron na po kayong mga drug importer, eh ang ginagawa naman po ng ating gobyerno sa ngayon, direct purchase na from the manufacturers. Sinovac, Sinopharm, uh, Pfizer, Moderna. Dapat po tanggalin nyo itong mga drug importer. Dapat direct to the manufacturers lahat ng negotiations, even by third party, uh, Director Domingo. Pero hindi po siya makakapasok sa customs kung wala pong license to operate as a drug importer din po. Uh, Unang-una, kailangan alam po natin na meron siyang opisina dito, na meron siya rito cold storage, na meron po siya rito... Director makita. Domingo, si Pfizer po ba? Di ba dapat Pfizer na mismo ang inapurba natin? Hindi naman yung important ng Pfizer? Yung pong Pfizer Philippines po ang ating inapurba. So yun po, may license to operate po ang Pfizer Philippines as an importer. Opo. O for example, si Sinovac. So kung kailangan po, meron po siyang importer dito or meron siyang opisina dito. Yung, yung nga po, po si Sinovac, pwede po siyang magtayo dito ng opisina. Hindi, yun po binabanggit ko, Director Domingo, Madam Chairman. Dapat wala na pong ganyan na drug importer. Pagka inaprobahan na natin yung mother company, let's say Pfizer, Moderna, Sinovac, Sinopharm, uh, yung sa Russia po, uh, AstraZeneca, 
dapat wala na pong dinadaan na drug being ported, dahil yan po tayo magkakaproblema. Ang sinasabi natin, graphene corruption, dahil po tayo magkakaroon ng silipan. Dapat direct from the manufacturers. Anyway naman po, ang negotiations ni Director Galvez, direct from the manufacturers. Tama po ba? Well, ang requirement po kasi natin may traceability po dapat dito at accountability. Kung wala pong opisina dito na merong license, kapag po nagka-problema po yung produkto, hindi naman po natin siya makakabol yung opisina sa ibang bansa. Madam so, Chair, Madam Chair, we're talking to about multinational companies. Why are we saying that we're chasing the local importer? We're negotiating directly with the multinational companies. Lahat po to, Sinopharm, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, directly negotiating. Uh, is Director Galvez here? I, 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 yeah, he's here. Director Galvez, tama po ba? Uh, sir, uh, uh, sir uh, tama po si, 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 po si DG Domingo. Dahil kasi po, uh, may mga companies na direct, direct po ang ano namin, uh, in coordination with, uh, with the uh, ambassador of different companies. Uh, talagang kailangan po na mayroon ditong local. Ang medyo problema po natin, meron pong manufacturer na wala pong local na nag-handle dito kasi dapat po talaga may accountability. Kasi po kung gagawin po natin from manufacturer, dadalhin po sa sport, wala pong magmamanage dito. Sino po magiging accountable na yung kanilang nilala na, na vaccine is talagang vaccine na na pinamanufacture po natin. Ang ginagawa po ng mga, no, ng mga manufacturer, they, you know, they license na ito yung talagang uh, ano po, uh, direct na kanilang liaison dito sa sa ano po. Uh, I can assure you po na wala pong ano yan. Uh, si uh, Sir Mike, ang ano po natin, uh, ang gagawin po natin kasi may supply agreement po tayo na gagawin, gagawin with, you know, with the manufacturer. Yung supply agreement po niya, kung sino po yung local na mag, ano, mag, uh, mag-supply po dito na sa ano, isla po ang mag-handle, handling with us, with the DOH, at saka accredited uh, service provider. Ganun po. Katulog po ng Moderna. Ang Moderna po, wala pong opisina po dito. So they will accredit either Swilly or or ano or Unilab na sila po ang mag-handle ng kanilang mga supplies. Uh, Unang-una Director Galvez, ako po ay naniniwala naman na talaga napakaganda ng inyong trabaho at kami po ay sumusuporta sa inyo. Pero ang sinasabi ko lang po, assume na lang din walang corruption. Can you imagine uh, kung una pong gagawin ng isang uh, producer, kukuha siya ng letter para sa gagawa siya ng letter susulat sa atin. Pangalawa, kailangan yung kanyang importer ay may license to operate. So kung meron na talagang license dito, madali. Pero kung wala, gagawin na naman pa niya yun. Ibig sabihin, mag-apply siya. So another process. Pangatlo, um, Madam Chairman, kailangan niya ng good manufacturing practice certificate uh, or for drugs and vaccines coming from uh, non-WHO pre-qualified. So pangatlo, requirement po to. Okay po sa akin yan. I have no question with that. Okay po ako sa FDA. Ang apat po, uh, meron siyang uh, list kung saan in-approve ng EUA. Wala akong problema. Ito um, na ho. Kindly yeah. wind up. Okay, Madam Chair, ito lang po ang point ko. Mabilis na mabilis na punto lang po. Kung ang Singapore inaprubahan na ang Moderna, Pfizer, at saka po yung Sinovac, tatlo na po inaprubahan ng Singapore, bakit pa po natin patatagalin? Bakit po dadaan sa isang rigid process sa atin kung nire-respeto natin ang proseso ng Singapore at alam natin Asian equivalent naman natin sila? Yun lang po ang aking punto para madali at makamura. And all these requirements of FDA, nandito po sa akin ng circular, grabe ho to. Baka mamaya hindi pa umabot ng February ang pag-ating import, Madam Chair. Yun lang po ang gusto kong ipunto. But I will still support the uh, push of IATF. Ang aking lang ho, bilisan natin. Naubos na ang draw ng uh, vaccine sa buong mundo, 80%. Lahat to, Nakabili na, although may COVAX tayo, pero siyempre dapat to mas mabilis at mas efficient yung pagkuha natin ng mga vaccines. Thank you, Madam Chair, and congratulations po. Thank you, Kong Mike. One last comment, DG uh, Eric. Gusto naman po namin assure, no, ating mga congressman, na talagang minimum na po yun, yung requirements po natin doon na less than 15, dati 60 po yan. Kailangan lang naman makita po natin ang report. Halimbawa, galing Singapore, kung ano yung question and answer doon para rin po makita rin natin. And we assure you that it will not take more time than necessary. At kung pong galing sa stringent regulatory authority, less than three weeks po ang ating, ano dyan, ang ating pong processing and evaluation. So, DG, i-add ko lang, ang liability for the vaccination program will be on the national government. Yes, ma'am. In fact, a lot of these uh, products, kahil nga po, these are emergency use authorization, no? Yung mga 
kumpanya po mismo, hindi pa naman willing, hindi pa naman sila ready ilabas ito for marketing authorization. So pag pinagamit po nila ito sa ating pamahalaan, they ask the government, the national government to take responsibility for the use of the vaccine. Okay, thank you, uh, DG Eri. Would like to call on Representative Hill Acosta. Kong Hill. Is he Kong Hill? Do we still have Kong Hill Acosta? If not, we can call on next minority, Kong Janet Garian. You have the floor, Kong Janet. Thank you, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat po sa ating mga butihing resource person, especially to the hard work of DOH, the DOH family, all our medical um, professionals and specialists, and of course, the IATF. Uh, tumbukin ko lang po, of course, with due courtesy to General Galvez. Ang, uh, sa pananaw ko po kasi, nagkakaroon po ng malaking kalituhan. People are being confused because apparently what's coming out in the media mauubusan tayo, kailangan na tayong gumalaw, takot na takot ang lahat. Kaya unahin po natin tanongin, how much is the global vaccine production all over the world on an annual basis? And if, if you can help me, ano po ba ang total population ng buong mundo? Ang ano po natin, ma'am, uh, I'll, I'll, Yung ano po natin, yung population po natin sa buong mundo is uh, more or less uh, nasa 11, uh, 11 billion. Ang nakikita po natin na yung shortage ng supply is 2 billion. And then uh, considering that yung 80% uh, nakuha na po ng ano, uh, in-estimate po natin na uh, ang uh, mawawalan po ng ano talaga is to 2 billion na people. So ang ano po natin ngayon, ang ginawa natin, nag-multi-prompt tayo na approach, uh, diplomatic, multilateral, uh, tripartite, para makuha na po Para makuha sorry, po natin. sorry. Yeah, I, I was asking for the total global vaccine production. Lahat ng mga kumpanya na tapos na or in the middle of phase 3A at meron na mga EUA, ilan po ba ang kanilang total vaccine production capacity in one year's time? Because I would like to look at the basis of the statements na kinukulang na ng bakuna ang buong mundo. Ay, yung production po na ano natin sa sa ano sa tinatawag natin by ano by vaccine. Ang AstraZeneca, meron po silang ano for this uh, for this year. Ang production line po nila is 2.9 billion. Ang Novavax is 1.2 uh, billion. Gamaleya is 697. Ang Pfizer is 570. Ang uh, Sanofi is 732. And then also yung Sinovac is 166. A total na ano po na talagang uh, makakaproduce po sila within ano within the this ano this year more or less 4 to 6 billion. So yun po ang ano kaya may nakita po natin na magkakaroon po ng shortfall nakita natin sa Europe and even US nagkaroon ng shortfall ang ibang mga vaccine makers. So ito po yung tinitingnan po natin kaya that's why we are communicating with the with you know the different vaccine makers especially yung ano yung yung Serum Institute of India dahil ang Serum Institute of India they will ano, they will produce yung Novavax 1.2 billion at saka yung AstraZeneca 2.9 billion so with our diplomatic relations with you know, with uh, India and also with UK and also with China at least medyo uh, may ibsan po yung ano natin that's why uh, we are looking at the possibility na yung supposed to be yung productions ng ano yung first quarter sa second quarter talaga pong honestly uh, may shortfall po tayo diyan uh, all countries, including you know, yung yung medium medium ano, medium uh, earning countries, talagang meron pong scarcity ng ano ng, uh, ng supply long supply chain. That's why ang ginawa po natin, sinikured po natin yung 148 million na volumes, which is good for second quarter and third quarter. But now ang ginawa natin because of our good negotiation with ano, with uh, with uh, India and also China. Nag front load ang ano nag front load yung yung uh, yung China ng more or less 5 million sa first quarter and another uh, 5 million sa sa another, another 5 to 8 million sa second quarter so hindi po tayo masisiro sa second quarter and we are looking forward na when we ano when we uh, negotiate with India makakaroon po ng additional more, more or less 
uh, 600 to 1 million this first quarter. Yun po ang ano po natin. And then uh, we are also talking with other manufacturer na kung pwedeng mag front load during the, second, the first quarter and second quarter. But they can promise only second quarter. The reason, General, why I asked that question, kasi parang apparently in the computation that we are hearing, you are looking at the whole Philippine population and the whole global population. Sa pagkakaintindi ko po, apag po ang pinag-uusapan eh, EUA or Emergency Use Authorization, it is just for the use of a certain risk, a certain high-risk population where the benefits has been proven to outweigh the risks. Kasi ang, ang pananaw ko po, sa ganun po kasing usapan, mawawala po yung mga taktakot, kaba ng lahat na tayo ay nauubusan na ng bakuna and we can all unite, uh, move forward with vaccine literacy so as to reduce to a the huge extent vaccine hesitancy. Sa pananaw niyo po ba yung EU ba or maybe we can uh, request Secretary Duque or um, uh, Dr. Eric Domingo to answer this for us. When we say emergency use authorization, does it mean that it is for the use of the general public or is it limited to a certain high risk population? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, yeah, ma Congresswoman. So yung emergency use authorization po means that uh, no, no, uh, the product with the data available will show a uh, uh, profile that means that the benefit is greater than risk. But of course, it's up to the ministry, you know, the Department of Health to decide on how to use it. And in some countries, po, for example, nga sa Indonesia, they decide sila sa younger people nila gagamitin. Or in the United Kingdom, they decide na one dose muna lahat before they do the second dose. So the, the actual utilization is ano, uh, decided upon after a thorough evaluation of the local situation. Yeah. Um, Follow-up question ko lang kay Eric, kay Madam Chair. Tama po yung sinabi nyo, but it, is it not because Indonesia is part of a clinical trial that they are now assessing the impact of the vaccine on a generally healthy population? Kasi na-establish na, na talagang kailangan ng mga health workers at ng ating mga senior citizens with comorbidities because the benefits outweigh the risks. However, for the younger population, because of lack of time, we need to establish that the benefits outweigh the risks. So it is a continuum of the ongoing phase 3A studies. Eh, am I correct in saying that? Kaya hindi po po pwede na ikumpara natin ang Pilipinas sa nanangyayari sa Indonesia, which I believe is one of the clinical trial um, areas of Sinovac and in UK, which is part of the trial of their own vaccine being manufactured. So can I ask Secretary Duque, Secretary Pinkoy, sa pananaw niyo po ba pag sinabi natin EUA, it means we can use that to vaccinate the whole population of our country? Well, uh, salamat mo, uh, Madam Chair. Yung uh, EUA, syempre ang goal natin is to provide protection to as uh, much uh, of our population as can be, which is also the directive of uh, President Duterte. Uh, but that is why we came up with a prioritization formula. And I think that is, uh, you are very much familiar with our prioritization uh, formula. So in that context, uh, the EUA will uh, allow the DOH to uh, uh, administer or to uh, use uh, vaccines that have been given the EUA uh, approval. But uh, there are uh, indications, uh, limitations for uh, each of the vaccines that uh, we have uh, begun negotiations with. No? I understand that a certain vaccine will not allow uh, immunization of uh, those below 16 years of age and uh, beyond uh, 69 years of age. There are other ones, 18 years of age, uh, up to 85 years of age. So we are referring to our vaccine uh, expert panel to give us the guidance that is supported uh, by science and uh, uh, a set of uh, credible, unassailable uh, data. But that also is dependent on the submissions of the uh, vaccine manufacturing uh, companies. That is why it is uh, uh, demanded of these uh, uh, vaccine uh, manufacturing companies 
uh, through the non-disclosure agreement, uh, provision of all these important technical uh, data so as to guide the national government as to uh, what will be the uh, framework or the parameters uh, for uh, the administration of our uh, immunization uh, uh, program. Thank you. Thank you for that, Secretary. But um, I also think it's really proper na unahin na ngayon na maexplika at malaman ng taong bayan what's the difference between an emergency use authorization and a marketing authorization or yung CPR. Kasi nagiging kawawa po yung ating mga eksperto na nasisisi sila at nasasabihan ang tagal-tagal at hindi na agad-agad maibigay sa lahat-lahat. Bottom line, what we are seeing is that people really do not understand that an EUA is still part of phase 3A, while a CPR or a marketing authorization gives the go signal for general population use. Um, if you can attest to that, my next question is, sa buong mundo, may bakuna na po bang naisyuhan ng CPR in relation to COVID vaccine? Uh, and can you further explain what's the difference between CPR and EUA? Yes, ma'am. So, wala pa po, ano, there's no product that has been approved for uh, marketing authorization in the whole world. Lahat po ng ginagamit I, na bakuna are being given EUA. Yeah, DJ Eric, it already came out in the news that end of last year, Sinopharm, which is an inactivated uh, uh, virus, um, has been given a, a marketing authorization, a CPR for the China FDA. Uh, yeah, Can you attest? Uh, Madam Congressman, if it, it's not a no, it's not a full CPR. It's what they call a conditional approval. So it's more similar to an EUA than a marketing authorization. No, iba lang po yung tawag. Some countries call it a conditional. Okay approval or conditional uh, authorization, but it's not a full CPR. Uh, so wala pa pong merong full Madam Chair, I think DJ Eric is frozen. Hi ma'am, I'm back. Can you repeat? Yeah, yeah. medyo nawala ka, naghang. Opo, yun pong nabalita sa China na Sinopharm, it's a conditional uh, conditional approval. No? Sa ibang bansa po kasi hindi naman EUA lahat ang tawag. Meron din tawag na conditional approval, accelerated approval, but it's more akin to an EUA than a full marketing authorization. So as far as we know, there are not yet any full marketing authorization or CPRs available. DJ Eric, can, can you please verify because based on the communication that I am having with some of the vaccinologists there, the oh, EUA was... Kong Janet, kindly uh, wind up. Yeah. Madam is... Chair, um, I have a pending question with Secretary Duque okay. to explain the difference between the EUA and the CPR. Okay. Just a follow-up question with G. Eric Domingo because this is very important. Um, para mawala po ang kaba ng iba dun sa bakuna, based on my understanding from the information given by other vaccinologists who are based in China, the EUA for Sinopharm was issued sometime in the late part of July implemented in August, and they gathered the information that they have after vaccinating millions of their residents. So they were able to generate um, initial results sometime in October and November. And after analyzing end of December last year, they issued a CPR or a marketing authorization for their country. Um, nyo kami to verify that. Moving forward, um, Secretary Duque, para pumawala ang Ang agaw-agaw, kasi nag-aagawan na ang nalalagay kasi sa isip ng tao na uubusan tayo ng bakuna, we are now forgetting that we need to focus on a clearer issue. And that is first to address vaccine hesitancy and to ensure our people na inuuna natin yung nakitaan na magbe-benepisyo because we have to wait for further information for the generally young and healthy population. Can you expound further on that, Honorable Secretary? Okay, that will be the last question, uh, Kong Janet. Secretary yeah, Duque. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, your, uh, Madam Chair, uh, uh, Kong uh, Janet. Gaya lang yung sinabi ko po kanina, ang uh, gusto ni Pangulo, hanggang sa maaari, lahat talaga ay uh, mapakulahan. Uh, pero 
Tama po kayo yung vaccine hesitancy. Kinakailangan tubunan po natin yan. Ginagawa po natin yan via our task group, demand generation, and risk communication. So, ang uh, mga specifics ng uh, activities na gagawin po ng DOH kasama ang Philippine uh, International uh, Philippine, uh, Information. Information Agency or uh, PIA ay uh, magsasagawa po ng uh, regular na uh, communication and community engagement. Uh, kasama po dito yung mga televised uh, weekly briefings every Wednesday updating at saka ang uh, scale up of our uh, Vida Solution sa COVID-19 thematic campaign uh, kasama yung uh, kinakailangan na pag-observa ng uh, minimum public health standards at ang uh, paggamit ng mga dedicated uh, web pages. So, gagamitin tayo ng mga town na uh, fall meetings and trainings both online and face-to-face. -face. Uh, this shall be conducted to uh, multiply precisely champions or advocates of vaccination and uh, also capacitate our healthcare workers to respond to questions from the community where the vaccine uh, hesitancy seems to be emanating from. So ito po ang uh, kanina, nabanggit ko din, yung uh, mga uh, major healthcare uh, associations or organizations katulad ng PMA, Philippine Nurses Association, yung FAMET, yung mga alliance of uh, health administrators of the Philippines. Lahat po ito ay uh, ating pong kakausapit at nakumpisa na po ang ipag-umlayan sa kanila upang nang sa ganun masagot nila ang uh, anumang agam-agam o mga alilangan uh, mula po sa ating mga kababayan. So we will, uh, we have started to roll this out. We just need to scale up. So, Thank you, Madam Secretary Chair. Duque. Madam Chair, very quick uh, one-liner question, please. Uh, with a uh, single answer from Secretary Duque. If I Go, may ahead. Go ahead. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Secretary Duque, as an immunologist, to your knowledge, has there been ever a vaccine in the history of the world? that has been issued a marketing authorization or a CPR that has caused deaths? It can oh, be answered. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, because the cause of death, we really have to look into the causality assessment, uh, a system uh, within the adverse events following immunization framework or uh, adverse events following of uh, special uh, concern or interest. So I am not in the position to uh, tell you what vaccines that have been given a DUA or CTR that have caused deaths. I'm sure there uh, siguro, but I do not know the specifics of uh, what uh, actually caused the death. Because we know that there is an anaphylactic shock. So there uh, are uh, adverse events that uh, presumably must have caused uh, death uh, in a uh, very small uh, number of uh, people or uh, uh, percentage of the total uh, vaccines. Thank you, Secretary uh, Duque. Thank you, Kong Janet. We'd like to call on Kong Jun Gato. Kong Jun. Kong Jun Gato. Yes. Uh, okay, please thank proceed, you. sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I fully support the uh, COVID-19 vaccination program. Naririnig ba ako? Am I? Go ahead, go ahead. I fully support the uh, COVID-19 vaccination program of the government. And uh, we all know that the uh, success of the vaccination program is largely dependent on the confidence of the population. In the, uh, in the uh, presentation of Dr. Salvania, um, it says there the vaccine efficacy of uh, the four companies, meron doon ng Pfizer and Pfizer has 95%, Moderna has 94%. Uh, Astra has 62 to 90 and Sinovac 50 to 91. May I know kung bakit um, yung Pfizer and Moderna ay uh, 
the vaccine efficacy is presented as an absolute number at uh, yung Astra and Sinovac I-50 uh, in range. Because uh, to a layman, pag sinabi mong 95% ang isang kumpanya, uh, mafo-focus nila yung uh, attention nila dun sa 50%. So, mawawala o uh, mababawasan ang kumpiyansa ng population. Dr. Edsel? Yes, Madam Chair. Thank you po. Um, uh, thank you po, uh, Congressman. Um, the reason why uh, may range po yan is because yung Astra and the Sinovac trials were uh, separate trials na pinagsama-sama po nila. And iba-iba po yung population. So yung sa Sinovac po, yung sa Brazil na nakita natin 50% po, mm -hmm. yun po ay healthcare workers lahat. Very high risk. And uh, yun nga, nakita nila aside from 50% na mild disease, 78% prevented disease na that was uh, severe enough to be seen by a doctor and it prevented 100% of hospitalizations po. Yung 91% naman ng Sinovac is yung sa Turkey na 10% lang po yung healthcare workers. The rest of them were actually um, general population. Now yung sa Astra, um, yun medyo mas strange po yung nangyari doon. Kasi yung one is to one na dosing, full dose then full dose, ang efficacy po nun is 62%. And then may isang trial po na merong subjects sila na ano lang po, one half dose followed by one dose. Pero yung population po nila doon was only 15 years old to 59 years old. Pero yung dun sa 62%, up to 130 years old. Wala naman siguro 130, pero wala po silang upper limit dun sa age. So kaya po ganun ng range kasi iba-ibang trials po yun. Whereas yung sa Pfizer at yung sa um, Moderna, isang trial lang po. Different sites pero isang protocol lang po. So kaya ganun po yung pagkalagay. Pero sa, uh, yung in-underline ko rin po dun sa presentation, yung effect on severe disease is the one that will save lives. And for that, Astra, Moderna, and Sinovac all have 100% efficacy for preventing severe disease that will cause death. And for Pfizer po, it's 89% po. So pare-pareho ang methodology, uh, Dr. Salvania? Ah, hindi po. Iba-iba po ang populations. Um, Doon po sa table ko nakalagay po yung populations. Um, and, uh, but for Pfizer and Moderna, so, so Pfizer, um, even though they had several sites, it's the same methodology. For Moderna, even though they had several sites, it's the same methodology. Yung sa Astra tsaka yung sa Brazil po, iba-iba po yung methodologies na pinagsama po nila. So hindi natin masasabi na yung Pfizer ay mas, mas mataas ang vaccine efficacy niya versus Sinovac? Um, based on the populations po, medyo apples to oranges po siya. Kasi yung sa Pfizer, general population uh, plus a uh, certain percentage of healthcare workers, Yung sa Brazil naman po na Sinovac, 100% healthcare workers po yun. May, ching, may small differences po. Actually, hindi lang small. Medyo ma, may mga major differences po talaga. And also, the other thing is yung timing nung pag-vaccinate. Like for Pfizer and for Moderna, their doses are either 3 weeks or 4 weeks apart. Yung sa Sinovac, 2 weeks apart lang po. And yung when they inadvertently gave some people a shot after 3 weeks, 20% higher po, 70% po yung efficacy. That's why we have to continue studying this po kasi kailangan rin natin yung optimize yung efficacy. Okay, because that is I think the problem with the late, with the general population. The impression is that Sinovac is 50% lang na effective versus Pfizer na 90 plus percent effective. And it affects the uh, confidence of the population to the uh, vaccination program, uh, the COVID-19 vaccination program, not to mention the uh, Dengvaxia um, episode. Yes, po, sir. that's why I, I underlined po yung efficacy against severe disease because that is the efficacy that will save lives. Po. Thank you, uh, Dr. Salvania. My last question is uh, um, I understand that the COVID-19 vaccination is uh, on optional basis. 
uh, you cannot force anyone to uh, to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. Now, if we are requiring or if we are requiring um, mask and face shield as mandatory, uh, is there a possibility or is, is it under consideration that uh, COVID-19 vaccination must be made also mandatory, especially to healthcare workers and frontliners, uh, maybe from the department, uh, maybe from Secretary uh, Duque or the IATF or Secretary Galvez? Sec Duque. Uh, well, the overriding uh, policy is still uh, that this is not uh, mandatory. Uh, but uh, I don't know if there is uh, a possible legislative space to uh, consider making it uh, mandatory. That that will be subject to a lot of uh, consultative uh, meetings with uh, the stakeholders. So that's, uh, that might be uh, uh, a sound uh, recommendation to begin with, but it has uh, to go through the uh, process so that there will be an acceptance uh, even when such a policy becomes a uh, next statement. Kong Jun? Ah, maganda kayo na, no? Pagkain na, no? Kong Jun Gato, do you still have question? Or uh, what would be the last question? Uh, the, okay. the consideration of whether it should be made mandatory for uh, healthcare workers and frontliners, considering that uh, the use of mask and face shield is made mandatory. So why don't we uh, make uh, the COVID the vaccination mandatory also, also for the protection of everyone? Okay. Mr. Ma Madam Chair. Thank you. Three, um, mandatory. Meron tayo mandatory for children. Uh, walang penal provision doon kung dun gato. So still, yung kahit na mandatory, merong mga families that don't believe on uh, the benefit ng vaccine or vaccination program, still hindi pa rin sila uh, nagpapavaccinate. No? So... Thank you for bringing that up. Next to interpolate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam yeah. Chair. Congresswoman, the very beautiful <laughs> <laughs> Dalia Loyola. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, distinguished colleagues and the source persons. Actually, I would like to commend Madam Chair for calling this very important meeting. I have been monitoring the uh, events regarding uh, information about this national vaccination program for the past weeks, even uh, listening to the Senate hearing. So, okay, natutuwa. Lahat ng queries ko ay halos nasagot na ngayong umagang ito. And I would like to commend you dahil yung presentation ngayon ay mas malinaw kaysa ng mga nakaraang linggo. So, I'd just like to raise one question dahil ako'y galing sa local. Secretary Carlito Galvez, a while ago, emphasized the crucial role of local government in the tripartite agreement and deployment, distribution, and admit or not, the success of this will depend on the grassroots level when we come to it. Even a while, a few weeks ago, Undersecretary Malaya ensured that the deployment of this will be given training to our barangay level. Now, I believe that in order for this current COVID-19 vaccination to be effective, we must check our current rhetoric regarding our subject matter. Public opinion about vaccine is crucial. So if we want our, our uh, people to be vaccinated, kaya gusto kong uh, i-comment si Dr. Edsel Salbana na sana yung kanyang presentation, tayo nga bilang mga doctor chair, ay tayong uh, tinututukan na tinatanong ng ating mga tao kung ano talaga ang magiging epekto ng vaccine nito. So natuwa ako doon sa presentation ni Dr. Edsel sa Albana na talagang napaka-clear yung kanyang presentation. So kung sana ito ay may ibababa natin sa grassroots level, ay mawawala yung agam-agam ng ating pong mga kababayan. Now, if the LGU are seen as crucial in the implementation of the National Vaccine Roadmap, may I ask Secretary Galvez or Secretary Duque kung gano'ng kabilis ba nila may ibababa ito at kung meron silang coordination with the, uh, the DILG dahil at the end of the day, kailangan talagang hindi lamang ang mabigyan ng uh, seminar dito ay ang ating mga rural health uh, 
practitioners or workers, kundi ang ating mga local chief executive. Siguro it's about time na bilisan natin ang pag-roll out ng hindi yung kung kailan dumating yung vaccine na napakarami na na kailangan na mabakunahan ng ating mga mamamayan tapos ay eh, marami pang magre-reject nito pero yung counseling kung maagang manapapaliwanag natin sa ating taong bayan, hindi tayo mahihirapan. Second, dapat ma-involve din ng LGU na at this early makatulong sa ating RHU or ating sa city health officer sa profiling at paggagawa ng master list ng hindi tayo nahihirapan, katulad nung binulaga tayo sa mga recipient ng ating PINSAP beneficiaries. Yung lang po, Madam Chair, ang gusto kong itanong. Yung gaano kadali ang uh, ma-roll out yung information dissemination sa ating mga local government units. Secretary okay. Duque. Oh, Secretary Galvez, go ahead, sir. Can I answer? Mama, since last uh, year, uh, kinakausap na natin yung mga mayors at yung League of uh, Uh, provinces of the Philippines at saka yung si, si, sila Governor Dax uh, at saka yung ating uh, uh, NCR mayors. Ang ano po namin, ang ginawa po namin sa kanila, sabi namin na importante yung early preparation. Nakita natin yung lessons learned natin sa Israel. Na early preparation at saka strong leadership on the local government is very important. During our meeting with, you know, with the President, i- i- sinasabi lagi ni President Ian at uh, the LGU, is really the prime mover of this uh, vaccination program. Actually, ang national government lang ang ng strategic focus and direction and prioritization, but definitely it will be implemented by the LGUs. Ma'am, sa NCR, ma'am, uh, halos prepared na po lahat yung mga NCR players natin. Actually, uh, very excited sila. Uh, we will start our visitation this week. In fact, uh, yung Quezon City at saka po yung, ano, yung Tangig, uh, nagpe-prepare na po sila. At, uh, they are even preparing uh, yung cold chain ng uh, Pfizer. Uh, yung lahat po ng League of uh, Provinces, uh, nakausap po na rin po. Yun po ang talaga inano po namin. Unang-una, magproduce sila ng master list, tatlong master list. Yung master list ng uh, tinatawag natin ng mga priority for vaccination, master list ng vaccination area administration, at saka master list ng mga requirements. So ang ano po namin, kailangan dapat yung preparations natin matapos na uh, this coming, ano, this coming uh, uh, January. Kasi ang ano po natin, ang rollout po natin, simula po tayo at the middle or or uh, end of February. Uh, magkakaroon din po tayo ng tinatawag na time emotion. Yung time emotion, uh, from airport, uh, titingnan po natin kung ilang oras o, o, o araw natin gagawin. Yung pag uh, punta po sa warehouse and then pag-deploy po doon sa mga tinatawag natin central hubs. So we will make that simulation. At the same time, magkakaroon po din tayo ng mga tabletop exercises. And at the same time, mayroon tayo sa simulation. Meron tayong mga models katulad ng Pasig at saka yung Manila and also Quezon City and Tagui at even Makati. Uh, gumagawa po tayo ng modeling and then later on pupunta po tayo sa mga different regions. So ang ano po namin, assumption po namin, uh, Madam Chair and also uh, um, Your Honors, uh, we'll be finishing our preparations by, you know, by uh, one month from now. So yung po preparation po namin, or we are on the tick of the preparation. Ang ano po namin dapat uh, by, you know, by By end of January, uh, pwede tayo mag-rehearsal. And also by the mid of February, we can already uh, go, the roll, go, go with the rollout. So ibig sabihin yung preparation po natin, February 15, kailangan prepare na po tayo sa rollout. So, dagdagan, uh, patuloy po ang aming pakikipagpunayan sa mga pamahalaan ng local, uh, the local chief executives. Bukas, may meeting na naman po kami para pag-usapan po yung uh, deployment uh, plan. Uh, at uh, matapos naman noon, may we have a series of uh, meetings again to discuss uh, the particular or uh, specific uh, aspects of the uh, immunization uh, rollout uh, plan And uh, we will uh, stress the uh, very important components no, of uh, the vaccine uh, delivery uh, strategy, which consists of two parts, the pre-implementation activities, and the implementation proper. So pre-implementation uh, uh, immunization activities Andiyan po yung uh, atin uh, uh, mga identification of uh, the most appropriate uh, set of vaccines, the eligible population, yung pong uh, 
identification of the simulation uh, areas, you know, profiling, uh, registration, uh, and uh, uh, surveillance uh, or screening, profiling, screening, and uh, and uh, registration. Uh, kasama po dyan yung uh, actual vaccination uh, allocation and distribution plan. At doon naman po sa implementation activities uh, proper, doon po yung uh, atin actual vaccination administration and also the post-vaccination uh, monitoring, uh, surveillance, and reporting. Salamat po. Madam Chair? Yes, Kong Madam Chair, thank you very much, Secretary Galvez and Secretary Duque. Sana man lang sana, ang request lang sana namin ay makitay up sa DILG para mamandato ang lahat ng local chief executive na sa pagpapatawag ng meeting, walang representative na aaten at mismo ang local government uh, chief executive bang umaten para makasink in sila sa programa ito. Al alam nyo, through the years, uh, through the weeks, eh, marami ako nakakausap ng mga mayors, hindi talaga maunawaan pa ito na labis na kami natutuwa ngayon na 70% nga lamang, laging lang sinasabi, even the first class municipalities, eh, kaya din naman mag-roll out ng konting funds. Eh. So hindi nila naunawa ng akala nila, eh, talagang purely ang national government ang sasagot. Hindi nila alam na 70% lang pala at yung uh, kaya naman palang magbigay, eh, pwedeng mag-augment. So mas magaling sana kung mamaman na mapopwersa na talagang mag-participate ng mga local government unit. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Kong Dalia. Uh, in relation doon sa kanyang uh, query kanina about the uh, communication plan ng DOH po when it comes doon sa information dissemination natin, no? especially yung presentation ni Dr. Edsel Salvania earlier, very informative siya na naiintindihan ng uh, mga ordinaryong mamamayan. So papaano po natin ito gagamitin Uh, sa papunta sa ground no doon sa grassroots level natin para maipahayag yung ganitong impormasyon secretary duke uh, ano ang uh, klase ng information dissemination yung ginagawa aside from doon sa mga posting ninyo in your page uh, do we have like pool of speakers kasi ako naniniwala sec duke and secretary galvez Depende sa nagsasalita sa unahan at nagpapaliwanag sa mga tao. Napaka-importante po yung trust and confidence ng tao doon sa mga nagpapaliwanag. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, bali ba po doon sa mga ginagawa na po at patuloy na ginagawa ng DOH and the Philippine Information Agency at yung mga nabanggit ko po kanina na mga activities patungkol po doon sa uh, paglikha at uh, paglilinya ng mga mensahe, uh, yung mga different platforms across the public and private sector, uh, halimbawa yung televised weekly briefing ng mga uh, eksperto po natin para mas madali po na uh, mabalik ang tiwala at paniwala ng taong bayan sa pagiging ligtas at epektibo ng ating po aangkatin ng mga bakuna. Uh, nobody can explain it uh, like uh, our uh, vaccine experts as we all heard them kanina. Napakagaling po ng kanilang uh, mga paliwanag at uh, nagkaroon po ng pagkataon ng marami na uh, 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 maintindihan ano po ang uh, mga epekto dito mga bakuna na kapag ka napaintindi sa ating po mga kababayan ay talagang uh, mababawasan Uh, kundi yes. mawawala sana ng tuluyan yung kanilang mga agam-agam. So, maraming po tayo uh, mga uh, gagawin pa rito on top of our uh, uh, collaboration with the PIA. Mahanap, kukuha din po tayo ng mga ad agencies to help us enhance our uh, communications uh, to the public uh, to increase Uh, buy in and uh, strengthen their uh, trust and confidence in the uh, vaccines that the government will uh, use. So, yung sa mga healthcare workers naman, uh, we would like to multiply the cadre of uh, mga champions and influencers 
of course, doctors and nurses and uh, med techs and uh, look, mga healthcare workers, and mga local chief executives and mga NGO responders, mga media practitioners, kasama din po natin dito, ang mga non-health responders and community organizers, uh, pati mga faith-based, multi-faith-based organizations and the academy will also be brought to the fold. No? At uh, yung underground activities, magsasagawa po tayo ng town hall meetings and uh, consultations and uh, assemblies uh, as frequently as uh, possible. Salamat po. Thank you, Secretary Duque. May I call on Congresswoman Micaela Villago? Congresswoman Villago? Okay. I uh, would like to call on Representative uh, Marilu Arroyo, our Vice Chair. Congresswoman Arroyo? Said, so Go ahead, Ms. Tita. Yes, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, and to all our resource speakers. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm grateful, very grateful that you prepared this for us and it's so well prepared. I understand it more now. Uh, I just have four questions, very simple. Some yes or no only. Firstly, I want to know, Madam Chair, since we have agencies here, did we ask any member of the, or uh, did we, since we have agencies that have evaluated um, and technical groups, these vaccines of ours, did we include the intellectual property office because they are experts in patent, trademark and copyright experts. Also, I believe it is imperative that the supplier is recognized for compliance with international IPR agreements, integrity and credibility as far as public health protection is concerned. May I know if we included them, Madam Chair or Secretary, Secretary Galvez, please? Secretary Galvez. Um, I, I believe that we you know, we we uh, included the you know, the the intellectual uh, property rights. Uh, may, maybe we can you know, we can ask uh, DG you know, DG. I mean uh, no, because it's not it's not on my purview on the you know, the the I, the uh, intellectual property rights. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. you know, you know, DG DG you know, DG Domingo. Madam Chair. Uh, 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 during the last hearing, uh, IPOFIL was there and they said that no, none of the companies have yet filed ano, uh, patents over the vaccines. And I think yun pong uh, sin sinabi po rin sa amin nila Secretary Galvez na most of these companies now are doing this in a non-profit ano, no, basis and they are not yet filing patents for them so that they can be used uh, openly no, by, the, by the countries at this time. So wala pa naman po tayong ano, infringement sa mga intellectual property rights for these vaccines. The companies are really developing them for use of ano, all countries. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Um, my next question is this. Once taken out from cold storage, because we hear that Pfizer and Moderna, you have to have, I don't know how many degrees below zero, right? Uh, the temperature their temperature requirements for each vaccine. Once taken out from cold storage, how long before the vaccine degrades? May I ask anybody to answer this, please? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and Kong uh, 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 uh You storage of the uh, Pfizer vaccine, uh, as an example, this uh, requires an ultra low freezer that can extend the shelf life uh, of the vaccine for up to six months. That means at uh, negative 70 to negative 80 degrees centigrade. Now, the temporary storage units by uh, uh, use, by using dry ice every five days, the vaccines can actually last for up to 30 days uh, of storage. While the vaccine uh, can also be stored for just 
around five days or thereabouts mm -hmm. at the refrigerated uh, temperature of uh, plus two to plus eight degrees Saturday. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Secretary Duque. I, uh, I, can I have two more questions, Madam Chair? Please proceed, uh, Kong Marilu. Thank you. Uh, may I ask why you, I keep on hearing senior citizens, why were the PWDs not included? May I ask you, Madam Chair, how, how come PWDs are not included in the priority groups to be vaccinated? Secretary Duque. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. The uh, fact of the matter is uh, they are included in persons with uh, disabilities, in fact, also persons deprived of liberty, the indigenous uh, peoples, Filipinos living in high density areas. Uh, this fall uh, well within the uh, social demographic groups at significant higher risk other than senior citizens and indigent populations. So there you are, kasama po sila. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary Duque. My last question. Since it's no longer mandatory, what if a person wants to be vaccinated but prefers another vaccine? Will we be allowed to purchase this or can our doctors purchase this for us? Because as you grow older, we have more comorbidities, comorbidities and therefore it becomes harder for older people. That's the reason why I ask this. Will we be allowed to purchase since it's no longer mandatory? The uh, approval for our uh, vaccination or immunization program is only limited to uh, the emergency use authorization. Uh, for now, sir. For now, the vaccines have not entered into the uh, clinical trial phase four uh, and uh, uh, not uh, have not completed their uh, development warranting the issuance by FDA of the certificate of product registration, which will allow you know market authorization and uh, can already be commercially uh, made available. But so now, wala pa tayo doon. So naka EUA pa lang po tayo. And uh, of course, the senior citizens uh, fall well within the uh, uh, group A of the prioritized uh, sectors. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. My questions have been answered. Thank you very much, Secretary Duque, Secretary Galvez, and DG Domingo. I am very grateful that you have said nobody has FDA approval yet. Thank, Thank you very you much. much uh, to our Vice Chair, Kong Marilu Arroyo. Next to interpolate is Representative Beng Abweg uh, Saldivar. Kong Beng. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good afternoon. Please proceed. Uh, can you hear me, Madam Chair? Thank you. Good afternoon to our colleagues as well as all the resource persons. Um, I'd like to um, jump off from um, a recurring theme in our discussion today. Um, it has been um, mentioned several times that, of course, um, there is vaccine, vaccine um, hesitancy. Some people are uh, have um, some people do not want to uh, be vaccinated for one reason or another. And um, in fact, Kong Dalia already mentioned this um, and asked the DOH what their communication plan is um, to further promote the use of vaccines and um, make it more acceptable to our um, general populace. Um, I was wondering, because it seems that it's just the DOH uh, that will be undertaking information um, dissemination, uh, an inform information dissemination campaign. Um, has the DOH already um, considered um, partnering with uh, non-government um, entities or even, um, even the manufacturers themselves in disseminating information about vaccines and making these more acceptable to our people? 
Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Your Honor. Yes, uh, that is uh, something that uh, we have been uh, working on to work with uh, the non-governmental uh, organizations, multi-faith-based uh, uh, organizations, the academy, uh, media practitioners, uh, all the groups that uh, can uh, substantially help us uh, enhance our communications with the uh, objective of uh, increasing uh, lasting confidence. So an example would be yung uh, kasama natin yung ingat angat uh, uh, private group. Ito yung ingat uh, buhay para sa anak buhay, mga advertising agencies, uh, influencers such as social uh, media, uh, bloggers, the celebrities, uh, training of our uh, health education and uh, promotion officers at the local level and uh, other uh, uh, information officers uh, within and from uh, without the DOH. Thank you, uh, Thank you, Secretary. What about man of the manufacturers themselves? I understand that, of course, the uh, it has been clarified earlier that the vaccines are uh, under EUA. Uh, exact, um, emergency use authorization. So they're not for commercial use. But we also know that, you know, advertisements by the manufacturers themselves and uh, uh, making this more palatable, uh, so to speak, to, uh, to the general public may be able to help in increasing um, its access, uh, their access, uh, acceptability. Would you consider this um, later on, uh, Mr. Secretary, Madam Chair? Uh, there, there is a uh, cogent reason for uh, us uh, not to allow, uh, other than the fact that the manufacturing companies themselves don't want to uh, advertise uh, their vaccines because they're not uh, supposed to be made commercially available yet. And also we don't want uh, a scenario where uh, there will be a perception that the manufacturing companies are competing with each other. And yet the strategy of the government is really just, you know, uh, anti-COVID vaccines uh, as a whole, uh, with, with, of course, the policy for a uh, uh, diverse uh, portfolio of vaccinations that, have, uh, that has uh, undergone uh, vetting and approval by our vaccines uh, expert panel and uh, our regulatory uh, agencies. So, you love that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Um, um, I have another question. Um, of course, uh, we've all heard about the new strain of the COVID-19 virus. Um, has the DOH or the IATF taken this into consideration in its um, COVID vaccination program? Yes, it is not just about one uh, variant that uh, has been taken into consideration, but all uh, variants are uh, being monitored uh, via our uh, uh, biosurveillance uh, and uh, in particular, the use of uh, whole uh, genome uh, sequencing by uh, the uh, Philippine Genome Center, the UP uh, NIH, and also the RITM. And so far, the available evidence uh, shows no uh, uh, effect on uh, the vaccine's uh, uh, declared efficacy and uh, safety. Uh, so, I think uh, so far, as of uh, today, uh, all those vaccines are uh, supposed to be uh, effective against the uh, COVID-19 uh, virus and uh, it's uh, evolving uh, uh, and it's uh, identified variants. Um, that is very good to hear, uh, Mr. Secretary. I hope that uh that continues that um, all these new strains that are coming in uh, would uh, prove to be uh, uh, 
uh, but the, the vaccines would prove to be effective even as against the new strains that are coming in. Um, I have a um, last question, uh, Madam Chair. Um, you know, you, I come from Palawan and before we are able to enter, we have to undergo quarantine. Uh, before we are able to go around, we have to undergo a 14 day quarantine period. And um, my question is, and I'm sure, you know, in other um, localities as well, they have their own sets of uh, protocols uh, for incoming uh, individuals. Uh, my question is, will uh, vaccinated individuals later on be exempted from uh, these travel protocols or restrictions? Uh, I think this question is addressed to the IATF um, primarily. Uh, as of uh, now, the uh, policy is perhaps down the road when we get to uh, get more data as the uh, vaccines are uh, rolled out or uh, administered to a uh, growing uh, uh, number of individuals, you know, both locally and internationally. But right now, the policy uh, of the IEPF, IEPF based on the recommendation of our experts, no? uh, is that uh, uh, they, they will continue uh, to uh, follow all these uh, existing uh, protocols. They will not be exempt just because they have been vaccinated because uh, as, as earlier pointed out, it is not yet clear, nor is there a sufficient uh, body of evidence or data to show that the vaccines can actually uh, prevent transmission. So it may prevent uh, uh, clinical uh, uh, symptoms of uh, mild uh, disease uh, and also more importantly in severe uh, clinical uh, manifestations. But uh, the first one, the transmission, the uh, evidence is not uh, sufficient. Thank you. Uh just one last follow up, uh, Madam Chair. Um, Question, Kong Saudi. One last, one last. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, Mr. Secretary, if if it is later on, um, uh, if I can later on see that um, these vaccines are in fact effective, um, what percentage of the population do you see as a threshold level before uh, we can lift the travel restrictions on uh, vaccinated individuals? Well, ideally, it is uh, once, uh, well, that's a very difficult question. I'd like to defer to our uh, experts, perhaps uh, Dr. Uh, Salvania and uh, the epidemiologist's uh, expert. They want to uh, give their rejoinder to your uh, question. Uh, Madam Chair, may I reply? Yes, Dr. Salvania. Uh, yes, but if we actually have a vaccine that is proven to be 100% transmission blocking, then anybody who is vaccinated with it should be able to travel freely. You don't need to wait for everybody kasi hindi ka na nakakahawa. Pero yun talaga yung problem eh. Kasi even like for Moderna right now, what evidence we have, uh, limited evidence, is maybe it prevents two-thirds of asymptomatic uh asymptomatic infection. May one-third pa rin yun. So, hindi pa rin tayo makakasigurado. Remember, it only takes one transmission to, um, you know, start another cluster and a super spreader event. So, it's not necessarily um, getting everybody vaccinated. It's more important that we have a transmission blocking vaccine, which for now, um, we don't have that data yet. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, uh, Kong Beng. We'll now proceed to Kong Franz Castro. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat, sa ating mga kasama sa Kongreso at sa ating po mga resource person. I go directly to FDA DG uh, Domingo, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, earlier, sabi niya, uh, wala pa pong nare-register, nare na-aprubahan na vaccine. But among doon sa mga nakita natin ng na mga vaccine na presented ng ating mga resource person, yung sa, bala ko narinig doon sa Sinopharm. 
at naging balita rin naman at, no at hindi rin naman maipagkakaila na may mga nagagan- naganap na mga VIP vaccination. So uh, sa mga PSG at sa ilang mga cabinet members. So ito ay inamin na mismo ni Secretary Anyo at sinabi rin naman ni Secretary Lorenzana at hindi naman pinagkakaila din ng ating speak uh, ng ating spokesperson ng presidente at mismo si presidente Duterte. Sa so, tanong lang Ms. Madam Chair sa FDA kung um, may result po ba may result na po ba yung ano yung investigation about dito sa VIP vaccination dahil uh, alam ko po napakalaking anum- uh, anomalya ito or or paglabag doon sa RA 9711. Uh, doon sa anti-graft corruption practices at syempre doon sa Customs Modernization and Tariffs Act as regard to doon sa ano no pag pagtransport noong mga hindi pa registered na vaccine. So, uh, any update uh, Madam Chair from our FDA tungkol po dito sa VIP vaccination. Uh, Madam Chair, Madam Congressman, hanggang ngayon po nag-investigate po tayo ngayon kasama po ng team ng FDA tapos po yung Bureau of Customs at saka po yung NBI. Nagawa na po kami ng composite team. Pero uh, wala pa po silang initial report but they're following all leads. At nagsulat na rin po kami sa several po ng mga possible na importers. At chinecheck na po yung mga warehouses po ng mga nag-i-import ng gamot in the last few months. Pero wala pa po kaming maibibigay na lead na ano. Na, ibig sabihin ng any uh, substantial data as of now, inihintay ko pa po yung report nila which they promised to give me po within 21 days nung start po nung kanilang uh, investigation. Pero tuloy-tuloy po yan kasama po namin ngayon customs and NBI. Yes. Uh, I'm glad to hear that ano, na may tuloy-tuloy na investigation kaugnay dito sa tinatawag namin na, va- na VIP vaccination dahil alam naman po natin di ba yung risk. Uh, hindi lang doon sa binaccinate. So syempre, so risk din doon sa nagbabaccinate at syempre doon sa mga paglabag doon sa ating mga batas. So Madam Chair, can we be assured by our Director General Domingo of the uh, reports as soon as natapos na po yung mga investigations to be submitted to the committee? Yes ma'am, we will, ano po, we will furnish the committee on health basta pag meron na pong report sa amin yung investigating team. Okay, so um, nas natanong ko lang po yun Madam Chair dahil uh, nakita naman natin ano meron talagang programa ang ating gobyerno doon sa vaccination uh, in terms of yung syempre yung uh, accessibility, equity, etc. So ma-assure ba tayo Madam Chair ng DOH Secretary na wala nang magaganap na ano no wala nang nagaganap na VIP vaccination as of now. Uh, yes, uh, your uh, Madam Chairman, Your Honor, we will uh, do our level best to ensure that the prioritization formula is uh, followed to the hill. Sundan po natin yung uh, prioritization uh, program. Yeah. Um, Madam Chair, as regard to the prioritization, ano, I know that the Department of Health is following the WHO recommendations on the prioritization. At ito, dahil sa ang akin pong sektor ay sa education, meron pong, um, wala po bang babaguhin as of now ang Department of Education as to, uh, uh, Department of Health doon sa prioritization kasi meron pong recommendation, Madam Chair, na yung UNICEF, nag-recommend siya na sana mauna. So, mamalagay sa prioritization, hindi lang sa pang-anim, pang-pito, ang mga teachers dahil alam naman natin ngayon na uh, disrupted talaga ang klase or kung meron mang ano tuloy-tuloy man so marami tayong naririnig na hindi nagiging ano no mag nagiging effective yung blended learning at iba pang mode of learning uh, unlike sa face to face so based po do sa recommendation ng UNICEF wala po bang ano babaguhin ng Department of Health doon sa prioritization para po ano no manormalize magtuloy-tuloy at mag- magkaroon ng confidence ang ating mga mga guro uh, ang ating ang ating kababayan doon sa pagtuloy-tuloy po na edukasyon. Yes ma'am, that's a point well taken. As soon as uh, maging sapat ang bakuna uh, darating, ay susugod din po natin na makasama na sila uh, na mas maaga doon po sa mga 
Secretary Duque, doon po sa sinabi ninyo, I hope maka-receive po kami. Ano? Uh, yes, 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 sir. Can we wind up? Sana po. Yes. Po. Yeah. Time is up. Last na po. Uh, sana uh, sana maka-receive tayo, Madam Chair, noong, ano, no, noong repra, uh, yung pagbabago ng prioritization. Ma-include talaga yung mga uh, yung ating mga guro para po makapag ano no ma magkaroon na tayo ng tuloy-tuloy na pag-aaral, lalong-lalo na po yung face-to-face Uh, last question, Madam Chair. Napabalita kasi nakasama ang teachers sa uh, teams doon sa vaccination uh, program. Uh, ma pwede bang malaman kay DOE Secretary, Madam Chair, yung magiging role? Kasi alam naman natin yung kakayahan ng mga teachers at syempre uh, gusto din natin malinawan yung mga ilang mga napabalita. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes ma'am, uh, gagamitin po natin ang uh, kapag-usapan po natin ng mga guro na maging uh, uh, bahagi po sila ng ating uh, vaccination uh, teams uh, as uh, health uh, educators at uh, in-orient po namin sila para maging malinaw ang kanilang papel na kampanan sa uh, uh, nationwide immunization program po namin. Salamat po. Okay, uh, Madam Chair, last comment na lang po. Salamat po doon sa paglilinaw ano, kasi na, nagtataka, nagulat ako doon sa uh, iti-train uh, sa mga vaccinator. So, so, so yun lang po. Uh. Ay, kailangan, Madam Chair, ano, yung tiwala talaga ng ating mga mamamayan, lalong-lalo na po sa mga nagsasalita para sa vaccination at kailangan talaga ng education sa ating mga mamamayan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Kong Franz. Uh, next to interpolate is Kong P.D. Barzaga, our Vice Chair. Kong P.D. Uh, next to ask question, Kong Rida Robes. Kong Rida. Yes, good afternoon, Madam Chair. Good yes. Uh, first, I'd like to thank each and everyone for taking this time para mabuksan natin ang vaccination na ito. Um, and I'd like to commend, of course, all the leaders who's been uh, tackling all of this kind of uh, process. First, I'd like to ask about the vac vaccine distribution. Uh, like, for example, in the city of San Isidro del Monte, we have a level one hospital. And we are talking about the COVAX facility. First, we have the vaccine supplier. Then we go to the centralized vaccine. Then we go to the regional warehouse. Then we pass it on to the RHU or to the hospital. And to the recipient. Ang tanong ko lang po, uh, Mr. Secretary, if uh, meron ba tayong kailangan na uh, storage area pagdating sa ating mga level 1 or RHU, hospital, RHU units? R RH units po. Pwede lang negative. Pwede lang negative. Yes, uh, man, tatama po kayo. Kinakailangan din pa rin ng uh, ating po uh, storage capacity at the proper temperature sa plus 2 to plus 8 degrees centigrade para sa refrigeration temperature. Para on the day na yung test. As a, the day of the immunization activities itself. Okay, uh, okay, uh, okay, Secretary. Thank you so much for that answer. Kasi very important po yun eh. Kasi hindi natin alam, mamaya maarawan lang siya. Kasi usually po, di ba, when we do vaccines, like the poly vaccines, uh, Kaya pa vaccine, silalagay natin siya sa styro. Tapos we have these mga yellow talaga, niyayalohan. And if you do grassroots vaccination, dahil gusto talaga natin mabigyan lahat dito sa ating lungsod, syempre dapat ma maalagaan natin mabuti ang lahat ng vaccine na ito. 
So I really believe it's really an answer to my query. And uh, second, ito po'y pinapatanong po ni Congresswoman Ria Vergara uh, for FDA, okay? Is the FDA looking at the possible effect of the vaccine on individuals who have already gotten corona and were hospitalized? In short, they were the ones who got the really strong strain. Should they still be vaccinated? Second, um, kung long hauler po sila ng, ng corona and meron sila existing symptoms like body pains, mental fat, low-grade fever, are they... Are they um, acceptable na magkaroon ng vaccine or dapat mawala muna yung corona na ito. Yun po ang pinapatunong ni Congresswoman Ria Vergara from Cabinet 2 and 4. Opo. Um, Madam Chair, Madam Congresswoman, so sa ngayon po, talagang pag merong active illness, hindi pa po binabakunahan. No? That's one of the things that we check pagdating po sa clinic, sa vaccination. Pag may lagnat at meron po talagang symptoms, hindi po natin muna binabakunahan yan. But worldwide, yun pong ano ngayon, the protocol now is even if you had COVID before, you're still given the vaccine. It will also boost, booster your, ano, immune, your immune system and ano, decrease the chance of a reinfection in the future. So sa ngayon po, kahit nagkaroon na ng COVID dati, binabakunahan pa. But of course, binabantayan po natin ngayon and as we get more information and as we get more knowledge, pwede pong magbago talaga in time yung ating ano no? yung atin pong mga guidelines, uh, yun po talaga dahil nga under emergency use pa tayo. Pero at this time po, kahit nagkaroon na dati, binapakunahan po. Okay, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much. Madam Chair, um, I really believe that um, the vaccine deployment immunization plan is to save lives, no? And to mitigate COVID-19 pandemic, no? This is actually the plan of DOH. Natutuwa po ako doon dahil since we had a meeting with the People's Participation Committee, ay talagang naibigay na po na nila sa atin, sa ating komite, lahat ng kanilang mga plano. This might take a while, but I really believe that, number one, first, we have to trust the government. Second, we have to do the information dissemination ground the level. Third, it is actually all collaboration from all the people of all folks of life. Kasi minsan, laging may katanungan, tapos maraming kumukontra. Sana po sa pagkakataon ito, Madam Chair, let's just all work hand in hand as you were doing and leading us. Maraming salamat po, Secretary and Secretary, Secretary Duque and Secretary Galvez and to the FDA family and the OST na kasama po namin sa pag-aaral na ito kahit po kami ay nasa, hindi po nasa health sector ng komite. Muli po sa ating pong lahat, to our President Rodrigo Ro Roa Duterte, maraming salamat po for leading the, the family of the Filipino people. God bless us all po. Thank you, Kong uh, Rida. I just have some uh, phone-in question. Kailangan ko lang basahin to, ah. So, uh, the private groups po are asking for clarification kasi during the Senate hearing, Secretary Concepcion said yung 50-50 agreement from the private sector. So, nagkaroon tayo ng tripartite agreement uh, with private yung sa AstraZeneca kasi ang sabi at cost yung yung price no uh, ang question po is yung uh, agreement ba na ito ay para lang sa AstraZeneca or po pwede rin siya open din siya with other uh, brands ng vaccine secretary Galvez um ma'am uh, initially yung po ang ano natin kinausap po natin yung 7 ano 7 uh, vaccine makers if they are no they are amenable for a tripartite and only three uh three or no, three vaccine makers have uh given the intention that they can explore and they uh, are these are AstraZeneca, uh novavax and moderna okay po so astrazeneca uh novavax and moderna moderna no Okay. Ipak, ipak po ngayon, ma'am, uh, tomorrow we will have a negotiation with Ambassador and also with uh, uh, Sir Enrique Razon kasi nag-uusap po kami na half, half yung 10, 10, ano, 10 million will be given to the government and 10 million will be given to the private sector. Okay. In relation to that, sir, yung vaccines purchased by the private se sector be given to them directly by the national government or will they be cursed through the LGU? 
Ma'am, ma'am, uh, both ways po ma'am. Actually, ako yung ano po namin, uh, inakosa po namin yung LGU na during uh, the vaccination, uh, implementation ng uh, uh, tinatawag natin sa implementation, they should include on the implementation of those uh, 50% that had been uh, allocated uh, to the private sector. Kaya nga ang ginagawa nila ngayon, uh, lalo na yung kinasok kahapon ng Region 6, kakausapin nila yung private sector para buo na yung kanilang ano, parang uh, tripartite with the LGU and with us. So that integrated, kasi yung mangyayari po ma'am, yung, yung 50% na bibigay rin po doon sa private sector, it is the LGU and the national government that uh, ad will administer yung pong, uh, inoculation. So even if merong capacity ang um, isang private sector, let's say merong partner uh, health facilities sila for administering um, and monitoring, hindi hindi pa din po ninyo i-allow na from national direct to certain private sector. Nakita po natin mayro tayo naging problema diyan nung uh, testing na yung minsan yung uh, private sector nagte-test ng uh, sarili nila. So pagka nagkaroon ng pang, uh, mga pangyayari, uh, hindi alam ng LGU. So ayaw, ayaw po natin iwasan po yun. Kailangan po integrated po yan. Kasi ito po ay eh, EUA pa lang at mayroon tayong tatawag na adverse effect. Ang mga response team po natin nasa, um, po, nasa, nasa local government unit po yan. Sa mga local health uh, unit po natin yan. At maganda po na ma-integrate po natin yung private at saka uh, public uh, assets. Okay, so malinaw po ang sagot ni Secretary Galvez. Dadaan sa local government unit as the implementer of the national uh, vaccination program for COVID-19. Next to interpolate, um, Representative Congresswoman Cheryl Deloso Montalia. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, magandang hapon po sa kay Madam Chair, ang ating napagandang uh, chairperson. Uh, ganun din po kay Secretary Duque. Uh, Secretary Galvez at uh, iba pang mga bisita natin ngayon at ang ating mga kasamahan ng mga kongresista. Uh, I join our colleagues in uh, commending uh, Madam Chair, uh, Congresswoman Helen Tan for starting the year 2021 with the discussion on the most uh, important concern this year, which is the National Vaccination Program. Uh, bago po ako magtanong, nais ko rin pong uh, magpasalamat kay Secretary Duque kay uh, Secretary Galvez sa IATF uh, sa inyo pong walang sawang uh, pagserbisyo para sa bayan. Nais ko rin pong pasalamatan ng ating mga frontliners, mga doctors, nurses, mga empleyado ng hospital, ang ating mga kapulisan, uh, kasundaluhan sa inyong sakripisyo para sa ating bayan. Uh, meron lang po akong dalawang katanungan na Madam Chair. Uh, follow through po dun sa katatanong lang ninyo na phone in question. Uh, Alam ko po ang target natin, uh, basing from the discussion earlier, that uh, we intend to immunize about 70% of our population and we will be involving uh, the LGUs and the private sector. Ang uh, tanong ko po dito, uh, kung nakapag-issue na po ba tayo ng emer emergency use authorization sa about four or five na manufacturers, meron po bang choice ang ating uh, private sector at LGU na mamili kung saan po doon sa lima ang uh, kukunin nila at gagamitin? Sec Duque or Secretary Galvez? Ma'am, can, can you, uh, nag, 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 nag lang ma'am yung, yung internet ko. Can, can you repeat uh, yun, the question? Kasi nag, 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 uh, we will be involving the LGUs and the private sector dito po sa ating national immunization program. And uh, dito po sa ating uh, programa, uh, meron tayong bubuin na uh, they will enter into tripartite agreement. Meron po ba silang choice doon sa ma-approve natin na magkaroon ng emergency use authorization ng manufacturers na kukunin nila at gagamitin? Or IATF po ang magde-design? Ma'am, yung uh, ibig sabihin po yung sa portfolio ng vaccine na, na ma-approve ng uh, FDA. Opo. Uh, sa, ngayon, sa ngayon po, we only have Pfizer, di po ba? Opo, ma'am. 
And uh, we have pending application by other manufacturers. Tama po ba? Yes, ma'am. Actually, ma'am, uh, sinabihan ko po sila na these are the options. Ito yung, yung uh, portfolio po natin. And then also, I, uh, I presented to them yung indicative, ano, indicative uh, dates of uh, delivery. So from there, ang ano nila is uh, if they are willing to, ano, to, to wait for those uh, their prepared vaccine, uh, ito po ang... Uh, magiging uh, consequence po niyan. Uh, secondly, pagka ginawa niyo naman po, uh, itong uh, indicative date na meron po sa first quarter ang uh, mauna. So we have, ano, we have also given them that, uh, that, ano, that decision po. Uh, so uh, by choice po sila uh, as long as it uh, passes through the approval also of the, I of, the tripart of, of the IITF with the tripartite agreement. Ang ano po namin sana po, ang aming recommendation, we are encouraging them na kung ano po yung mauna, considering that it passed already the stringent uh, regulatory requirement of the FDA, yun po ang dapat nilang uh, punin na po. Kasi any delay, uh, can, any delay on the, you know, the administration of the immunization program can also delay the recovery of their economy and also bringing the community to normalcy. So binigyan natin ng option yan, pero ang ano po namin, we encourage them as soon as possible that the, the vaccine is coming in. Kaya po ang, ang, ang strategy po namin, ang messaging po namin is uh, we never, ano, we never consider the brand. Ang ano po namin is COVID-19 vaccines. Yun lang po ang ano po namin. Okay po. Salamat po, uh, Secretary. Salamat po, Madam Chair. Uh, kaya ko lang po natanong yan kasi may mga LGUs nga po and other private sectors preferring certain brands of vaccine. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. And uh, if they're willing to wait, okay lang po yun. Pero sabi po sila, this is, this is the consequences. Okay, yeah. Salamat po. Madam Chair, last question na po. <laughs> At alam kong uh, malapit na po ang ating session. Uh, uh, moving uh, fast forward po. Uh, dito po sa Pilipinas, uh, Pfizer pa lamang ang nabigyan ng, ng ating FDA ng emergency use authorization. So balit, kung sakaling magkaroon po ng vaccination injury, kasunod ng pagbakuna laban sa covid Meron na po bang uh, napag-usapan na posibleng protection na maibibigay ang ating pamahalaan doon sa mga taong nagkaroon ng injury just in case? Gayun din po sa ating mga doctors and nurses na magbibigay ng bakuna kung sakaling sila po ay makasuhan ng medical malpractice dahil sa vaccination injury. Secretary Duque. Lama po kung meron po tayong na i- Uh, na, na develop na program just in case lang po for protection. Yeah. Compensation po doon sa for example uh, nagkaroon ng severe adverse effects na hospitalization and then yung mga vaccinators natin pro, paano yung support natin? Do we have that in the plan? Like uh, habang Going to the then go ahead, Secretary Duque. ay uh, meron po tayong uh, management no, of these uh, adverse events. Uh, but meron po kami sinuite na policy recommendation para po sa mga uh, mapamatas na lumitha ng isang indemnification fund for adverse events. No. Ito po yung paglikha ng uh, compensation fund para bayaran uh, ang uh, uh, individual na magkakaroon ng uh, same use ano po, same use adverse effects following immunization. At gusto po sana natin dito sa amin po uh, policy recommendation is to uh, make the provision retroactive to allow uh, indemnities to be paid to those affected uh, before the bill even gets rat ratified. Uh, ito po ay uh, halitulan, meron po isang modelo, pero hindi po uh, ito man isasama doon sa indemnification fund naman, 
na nakikita doon sa COVAX uh, facility. Ang uh, prinsipyo po dito ay uh, mabigyan ng compensation po ang sino man na magkakaroon ng serious uh, adverse events following the uh, intimidation. So, uh, yan po, uh, ibigyan po namin as one of the policy recommendations at uh, gamitin po na rin po ang pagkataon kasama rin po sa amin na uh, recommendation yung uh, grant of the emergency use authority uh, by the FDA. Kung nalaman niyo po, ang uh, authority ng FDA uh, emanates from the executive order one to one. Ngayon po, ang uh, amin na uh, ang uh, amin po problema rito ay uh, yung uh, wala pong batas. Mas maganda po sana marating sa batas itong grant of the emergency use authorization. Uh, why do I say this? Number one, yung pong uh, atin universal healthcare law ay eh, uh, as a bayanihan to ang uh, wave Really wave lang po natin dito yung uh, conduct of the clinical trial phase 4. Pero ganun pa man, hindi naman marinaw uh, na sufficiente na ba yung uh, clinical trial phase 3 or sufficiente na ba na hindi pa tapos yung clinical trial phase 3 ay uh, pwede na uh, magbigay ng emergency use authorization. So, palagay ko, ito ang maganda ng katataon allowing there is a uh, legislative space to accommodate our policy recommendations. Because I think once these are uh, made, uh, these are legislated, mas, mas uh, maganda po ang uh, programa, mas uh, uh, maliging mas maayos po ang ating uh, administration ng uh, COVID-19 immunization uh, plan. So, ito po uh, ang mga dalawa. Uh, marami pa po kami mga policy recommendations dito. Ipapasa na lang po namin sa inyo, Madam Chair, uh, Representative Helen Tan, dahil na uh, I hope this will merit your uh, consideration, uh, Madam Chair. Salamat po. Sige, Sec. Puke, paki-forward na lang po sa aming committee secretariat. Please proceed, Kong Che. Uh, thank you, Secretary Duque. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, rest assured, Secretary Duque, together with our uh, chair, uh, we will support that uh, policy and legislation needed for protection and indemnification. Uh, yun lamang po, Madam Chair. I wish everyone a happy, safety, and healthy new year. Magandang hapon po ulit. Thank you, Kong Che. I uh, would like to call on uh, Representative Ron Salo. Kong Ron? Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. So I have a few questions. First question, ma'am. Uh, siguro kay Secretary Galvez o kay Secretary Duque. First, dun sa, uh, um, nabanggit po ni Secretary Galvez po kanina, ang plano po ng gobyerno po natin na mag-purchase ng around 148 million doses. So divided by two, I understand dahil two doses ang kailangan po ng mga bakuna. So that translates around 74 million uh, na beneficiaries. And ito po yung target po natin na uh, bibilhin for 2021. Ngayon, uh, based dun sa presentation po kanina, lumalabas po na uh, 0 to 16 years old, hindi po uh, naman po ito nire-recommend na ibigay. And based the uh, study po natin, uh, in, in 2018, uh, population po ng Pilipinas, lumalabas po na 0 to 14 years old comprise 31% of our population. So lumalabas po, that translates around just uh, more than 30 million are actually ineligible to receive this particular vaccine. Uh, so lumalabas lang din po na around 70 million are actually eligible among our population. So ang, ang Clarification ko lang po, saan po pumapasok po, Secretary, yung issue ng prioritization? Of course, I understand. Iprioritize po natin na uh, unahin po natin yung mga uh, health workers and some vulnerables and senior citizens. Pero lumalabas din po sa survey na there are just around 25% of Filipinos are willing. So as low as 25% to 47% are just willing 
Uh, so kahit na 50% po yung willing, that just translates around 30 million Filipinos who are of the moment uh, eligible and willing to receive this vaccine. So gusto ko lang po maintindihan, Secretary, uh, yung pinanggagalingan po nung prioritization. Hindi ba mas maganda na i-open up na lang for as long as we're able to address immediately yung mga nangangailangan na uh, health workers, uh, senior citizens, and the vulnerables, then i-open na sa lahat ng willing, sa lahat ng may gusto. Thank you. That's my first question, ma'am. Yes. yes, I agree po uh, na talagang uh, talaga naman po na based on sa experience ng uh, mga nag out, kailangan maging flexible po tayo. Actually, ang reason po ng ating, ano, ng ating prioritization is one, uh, yung tranches po ng, ano, ng uh, mga ating mga vaccine ay ba tranches po yan na 500, uh, 1 million, or even uh, by the 100,000. So kailangan i-prioritize natin kung, kung, kung tinatawag natin pagka nauna itong vaccine na ito, sino ang priority? Para at least yung ating uh, WHO at saka DOH guidelines ma ma maayos katulad ng we have to preserve the institution. So yun ang, ano, yun ang pinaka-primary purpose po. Na, uh, kaya po tayo nagkakaroon ng prioritization. Para at least uh, yung pinaka-priority dapat matapos kaagad first tranche. And then yung second tranche, yung second priority, third tranche, yung fourth priority, ganun po ang ano po natin. Maraming salamat okay. po, Secretary. So lumalabas naman po kasi dito, we have more than enough vaccines for yes. all the Filipinos who are eligible and willing to take yeah. this particular vaccine. So ang binabanggit po ninyo, uh, yung prioritization po apasok po ito because of the uh, yung timelines ng pagdating po ng mga vaccine. Yeah, Thank po. you. Uh, second clarification kay Secretary Duque. Lumalabas po if we're going to vaccinate around 70 million people at pinabanggit po ninyo, Secretary, pagkakaroon po tayo ng mga teams. And based on this particular teams, six members po yung uh, members po ng team and there will be one uh, supervisory supervisor to oversee around three teams. So lumalabas po at ang kayo lang target po is 100 uh, persons to be vaccinated by one particular team every day. So nagpukumpit po ako for six months. Lalabas po ito kung ang target po natin for the second or third quarter pumasok po ito. Dumating na po yung mga vaccines. We'll be needing around uh, 20 3,333 personnel uh, to cover around uh, 6,000 plus uh, mga teams. So ang tanong ko po dito, Secretary, meron na po ba tayong naumpisahan na po ba itong pagkikrate po ng team na ito to uh, undertake the administ administration of vaccines or people? Kumusta po yung budget requirement for this in the training ng mga part of that particular team who will administer the vaccines? kayo, uh, Your Honor, uh, meron ng kayong pag-ugnayan uh, ang DOH with the LGUs uh, patungkol po sa mga human resource uh, requirement ng mga vaccination teams. Uh, tandaan po natin, dalawa pong klase yung teams. No? Isa pong vaccination team at saka yung isa pong naman composite team. Yung vaccination team, ito po yung mga magpabakuna, halimbawa, ito po yung uh, mga uh, mag-screen, uh, yung po uh, uh, mag- uh, dalawa po, ito po yung uh, breakdown nila. Uh, for each vaccination team, amin. Uh, dalawa, yung screening and assessment, uh, either a physician, nurse, and midwife, isa for health education, yung allied professionals, volunteers from partner agencies, alimbawa, mga teachers, social workers, medical students. Isa pong uh, for vaccination, proper, yung doctor or nurse or midwife. Uh, at dalawa po, ang uh, documenter, recorder, uh, the vital signs. Uh, pwedeng midwife, uh, barangay health worker, health staff, volunteers, at iba pa po. At may isang supervisor. Uh, uh, dapat ito mas maganda kung doktor uh, isang supervisor for every three vaccination teams at meron din po tayong adverse events following immunization composite team which consists of uh, two uh, human resource uh, isang taga-monitor whether in paramedic or nurse or midwife at saka isang surveillance uh, officer na nurse, midwife, or pharmacy. So kasama po ito lahat at uh, sa kasalukuyan, uh, pinag-uusapan na po ito with uh, our LGUs, yung training 
uh, na ginagawa is online, virtual, um, ongoing po ito at matatapos na uh, this January. And uh, yung mga uh, uh, human resource for uh, the actual inoculation, uh, ito po ay uh, kasama na doon sa ginagawa na natin under our usual national immunization program. So tama po kayo, ito lahat ay uh, pinagahandaan po natin. So clarification ko lang po doon, Secretary, sa lumalabas po, ready na po ba yung uh, Department of Health to roll out this particular three teams? Ilang na po bang available na ngayon? O ilan na po ba yung nakakreate po ninyo na teams? Sa ngayon? Uh, Pagawa lang po tayo ng inventory ngayon, but we will soon release the list. Kasama po ito sa master uh, listing natin, uh, sa ating po micro-planning and uh, mapping efforts, uh, doon po sa ating uh, 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 pahikipag-ugnayan din sa local government units ay uh, uh, tuloy-tuloy po para mabuo sa lalong madaling parahon. Hindi na kailangan antayin yung bakuna bago buuin. Kung hindi pagdating ay nakalasab na po ang lahat ng mga pangailangan. So yan po, uh, kasama po yan sa atin na uh, uh, implementation of our nationwide vaccination program, ang um, human resource training and management, ang atin pong uh, vaccine uh, allocation uh, and uh, ito po yung uh, mga uh, aspekto ng atin uh, nationwide uh, implementation, yung vaccine administration policy uh, at uh, kasama po dyan yung uh, Recording, uh, registration, yung ating po counseling and uh, uh, final consent form, screening at uh, ating po uh, vaccination proper at uh, post-vaccination monitoring surveillance from the COVID. Thank you very much, Secretary. Next question ko po. May pinabanggit po kayo kanina, uh, Secretary Galvez, and I completely agree with the third party arrangement or agreement. Ang talong ko po, uh, sino po ngayon ang recipients po o beneficiaries po ng national government? Sino naman po ang beneficiaries o recipients po ng LGUs? Sino naman po ang recipients ng private sector? And pagdating po doon sa pinag-usapan natin ng private sector, sino po bang kasama po dito sa private sector na uh, tinutukoy po natin? Ibig sabihin po ba nito yung isang private practitioner na doktor, eh, uh, considered po ba siya at kasama po siya at may access po siya doon sa mga pakuna? Ay yung sa, no, sa mga tinatawag natin po sir na no, yung uh, sa distribution uh, basically yung sa no, sa LGU pagkakamuhang LGU ang beneficiary po yung constituents po ng LGU. Ah uh, umagasano po yung uh, yung uh, national tutulungan lang po isa sa tinatawag natin mga supplies at saka yung tinatawag natin sa mga deliveries and also sa mga consumables. Ah uh, doon sa private sector sa sector ibig sabihin po ba nito LGU based talaga ang implementation yes. po nito kasi yes. siya sabi po natin Yes. Uh, si LGU, pero si national government will just provide the necessary support. Ang support yes. po dito, yung availability ng bakuna, pero yung administration, this is a purely uh, trabaho po ng LGU, pero ang mag-supervise mag lang would be the national government. Uh, integrated po, kasi po yung uh, ating DOH, hanggang uh, regional po yan, may mga tao po yan. So integrated po ang gagawin po natin, uh, kasama po yung uh, LGU at saka yung national. And then also, ganun din gagawin po natin in private sector. They are also uh, volunteering, like for example, mga private hospitals, to also to administer together with the, pri the pri private uh, private and public sector. So, yung pong anong ginagawa po natin, gusto natin yung integrated na po, whole of nation, whole of government uh, approach po ng ginagawa po natin. So, it is integrated at the local, city, uh, municipal level. Thank you very much, Secretary. For my last question, uh, my following question lang po sa akin, when it comes to yung sa information campaign ng gobyerno, ang sabi po nila, uh, one professor from UP texted me, ang concern po nila dahil they're receiving mixed signals from the government because there are so many spokespersons when it comes to COVID uh, vaccine. Ang tanong, sino po talaga ang official na pwede lamang magsalita when it comes to uh, COVID vaccines? And number two naman, uh, sa FDA, uh, may requirement kanina, tusog ito doon sa tanong ni Congressman uh, defensor kanina, binabanggit niyo kailangan po ng importer, uh, license ng importer, 
na mag-import ng mga bakuna. Sino po ba talaga importer po nito pag pinag-usapan natin ito? Hindi po ba gobyerno? Bakit natin kakailanganin po ng uh, lisensya ng isang importer when in fact it's actually the government that is the one importing? And number two, wala naman pong liability based dun sa pinag-usapan niyo po kanina because this is emergency use authorization wala pong liability whatsoever yung mga manufacturers. That's the reason why binanggit at tinanong din po kanina ni Congresswoman uh, Cheryl Deloso yung konsepto ng liabilities ng at, at compensation kung, sin, kung sakali man na meron man na adverse effects itong bakuna na ito. So bakit may kailangan ng sa FDA, bakit kakailanganin pa ng isang importer na pribadong sektor when in fact it's the government, it's the one importing. And at the end of the day, wala naman pong kung pinag-usapan natin yung liabilities, wala naman pong liability yung uh, private sector, yung manufacturer because it's actually undertaken entirely by the government. Yeah, Madam Chair. Hindi lang naman po kasi yung liability po yun kung Ron, no? yun din po kasing tracing. For example, may makita po tayo may problem sa one batch. Kailangan po, may yung importer, kaya natin siyang ma- ma-identify kung aring batch, kung aring lot yun, kung saan napunta. Kaya kailangan po talagang merong opisina dito sa Pilipinas na nagko-coordinate ng kung ano po yung mga dumarating dito, kung ano na deliver sa gobyerno at kung saan po nakakarating yon. Siya rin po yung nag assure sa atin, bagamat wala po siyang liability, kung ba kung may nangyari sa pasyente mismo, pero sa atin po, meron siya liability na makakarating dito ng tama ang kondisyon at saka nasa magandang kalidad yung kanyang produkto. Na nasunod po ang cold chain, na pag nang tinanggap po dito sa Pilipinas ng opisina niya dito, ay maganda po yung kondisyon ng atang kalidad bago po maipasa sa Department of Health. Kaya po talagang important in any government transaction, of course, that there, has, there is a local uh, contact no, who will take charge of bringing it in here. At lalong-lalo na po sa gamot. Hindi po kasi talaga yung licensing po kasi natin ng importer at ng distributor includes checking the capability of that importer to house it, to warehouse it, that they have the, uh, yung po kanilang logistics chain, yung kanila po mga tracking, yung kanila po refrigeration, and that they have trained staff who know how to handle these products. So ito po talaga yung uh, minimum requirement lang po natin na meron talaga dito marunong mag-handle ng mga produkto na counterpart nila. Kung Ron, yes. uh, that would be the last question. Your time yes. is up. Uh, hindi pa po nasasagot ma'am yung tanong ko po kanina when it comes to spokesperson. Sino ba talang talaga ang authorized to speak on behalf of the government uh, when it comes to vaccines? Thank you very much, DJ. Thank you, Alves. Can, can, I, can I answer? Sa ano po, in terms of sa negotiation at saka sa ano po, ako po ang ano po nun, uh, and then also in terms of yung... Thank you, Alves. You're the spokesperson for negotiation and procurement? Procurement, yes. Uh, yung lahat ng uh, negotiation procurement. Considering that uh, we are bound by the CDA, we cannot disclose uh, those uh, those uh, particular uh, uh, items that uh, they have, have, uh, have uh, given us na ano, na wag disclose. Secondly, pagka, in terms of yung tel- select selection, selection and uh, selection of the vaccine, vaccine, vaccine expert panel at DOST po yun. In terms of yung pathway, pathway po, uh, CFTA po yan, si Sir Domingo. And then in terms of implementation, uh, yung preparation, adi uh, po yun. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, opo, clarification lang. So yun lang po yung mga tao po ba na dapat na magsalita at dapat natin pakinggan when it comes to all of these issues related to the vaccines. As much as in-identify nyo naman po, Secretary, kung ano yung mga roles ng bawat isa doon sa apat na yun. Tama po ba yun? Yes, sir. Uh, kaya po katulad po niyan na yung uh, pertaining yung mga topic kasi yan sila Dr. Edsel at saka po yung member ng EDSTAC and also BEP sila po ang uh, authorized na magsalita in terms of yung clinical at saka yung mga findings na clinical trials. Second, pagka naman sa pathway nga po ng, ano, ng, uh, ng EUA at saka yung proseso, uh, si, uh, si, ano, si Yusek uh, DJ Domingo po. And then in terms of implementation, uh, si Sek Duque po at saka si Yusek Bergere. At in terms of yung ano, tinatawag natin yung uh, training, uh, yung, ano, yung about the vaccine, yung portfolio and also procurement at uh, yung procurement and also yung overall plan roadmap sa akin po yun. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Would like to call on our um, representative Carlo Zarate from the minority. You have the floor, sir. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Thank you Madam Chair. Uh, good afternoon po sa lahat. Uh, Direkta ko na pong uh, idugtong kaagad yung aking question ano. Uh, usa-usapin po po ng EUA. Uh, nabanggit na rin ito kanina ni uh, ng ating makasamahan doon po sa liability ano. Now, uh, gusto ko lang pong linawin uli dahil nga ito ay EUA. So walang responsibility rito pa ang uh, manufacturer. But uh, considering na sa ating bansa po ngayon, uh, very peculiar, there is this uh, tripartite arrangement. No? Uh, sino po ang uh, primary may responsibility rito to compensate, for example, if there is an adverse reaction uh, to the vaccine? Uh, is it the national government? Is it uh, the local government or the private sector? May get a response from either Secretary Galvez or DG uh, Domingo or... Secretary Duque, Madam Chair. Anybody? Secretary Duque? In terms of uh, immediate response and management of the adverse uh, events following immunization, that is well within the purview uh, sa tungkulin po yan ng Department of Health. But uh, if there are very serious uh, side effects na nakita, Eh, kaya nga po kanina na magbit ko kung pwede po ilagislate yung indemnification fund para mapondohan ang, uh, ang programa nito. So, uh, our uh, people, the individuals who will uh, experience serious side effects can be adequately compensated uh, for uh, those uh, adverse uh, serious uh, adverse events following immunization. Uh, but uh, yung pong uh, baka si Secretary Gabe sa mga kapagpaliwana uh, mas mahigaw, ano ba yung pananamutan? Kasi accountability po ang tinatanong ni uh, Congressman uh, Zarate ay eh, uh, baka po si uh, Secretary Gabe ang uh, makapagsasalit po. Uh, yung sa ano po, sa COVAX po natin, lahat po ng mga bansa, <coughs> we signed for the indemnification clause na wala pong uh, sasagutin ang ating mga manufacturer unless it is a uh, parang willful uh, neglect at saka tinatawag nating na uh, mayroon po silang pagkukulang. Kaya nga po ang inihiling namin po, uh, uh, Your Honor, is magkaroon po ng le legislation for the indemnification kasi ito po talaga po napaka po Mr. Madam Chair, napakahalaga po nito dahil kasi yung COVAX po required po tayo na mayroon tayong indemnification law. Uh, alahanin po natin meron yes. po tayo 40 million po na no? 40 million na doses uh, na nakasalalay po dito mas maganda po sana yun po ang inanong namin na magkaroon ng bayan ni Henry na isama na rin po yung ano yung indemnification clause plus yung ano yung tariff ano yung uh, tariff and custom duties ay mawala na rin po para tuloy-tuloy po diretso po sa warehouse yung ano yung yung ating mga products at the same time uh, isa lang isa rin law na dapat magkaroon po ng protection yung ating mga uh, mayors at saka LGUs for the advanced market commitment kasi wala po sa law yun eh, na meron po tayo kailangan po talaga may may uh, uh, tiyatawag na time of delivery sa ano po indicative time lang po so yun po ang inano po natin so yung ano po uh, nagpasalamat po ako kay Congressman Sarate na yung po sa indemnification maganda po na meron po tayo kaya tayo ng law na ipaipasa po Madam Chair dagdag ko lang po uh, Congressman uh, Zarate. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, ah, yes, uh, DJ uh, Domingo. Go ahead, please. Opo, Thank dagdag you. ko lang po. Ano, sa iba pong bansa, katulad po ng Estados Unidos o kaya po sa United Kingdom, talaga pong nakakabatas yun kapag po tayo ay nagbakuna, knowing that we are doing it for the good of the whole population and that it's always possible that somebody might get a very unusual, severe reaction to it. Kapag po nagkaroon ng vaccination industry na, na, ng injury, meron po talagang sa batas nila na indemnification or compensation para po doon sa nabakunahan. So ito po talaga ay ano po ano siya, no? isa po siyang uh, policy ng marami pong bansa sa buong mundo na yun nga po baka panahon na po sana na pag-isipan din po natin. Hindi lang po para sa COVID-19 kundi para sa palahat po ng mga vaccination programs. Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you to our resource person. Mahalaga po yun dahil sa tingin ko, uh, sabi nyo kanina, magro-roll out na tayo by February. Ano? Eh, kung wala po yung ganong klaseng indemnification uh, aspect, no? dahil uh, 
Sabi niyo, oh, ang base nito, executive order lang, wala pang batas. Mas lalo pong yung confidence level ng ating mamamayan ay hindi po ganun tataas. Ano? Kasi emergency use nga eh. Hindi pa natin, uh, it's part of the uh, phase 3 uh, trial. No? Uh, kung talagang uh, effective itong mga bakunang ito. No? Kahit sabihin pa natin nasa 95 yan or 50% uh, effect, ang efficacy niya. So, ang usapin pa rin po doon, uh, can we get the people's trust and confidence? No? So, uh, my next question is, uh, may sinabit na po ba kayong, uh, for example, uh, a, a proposed uh, measure that will be certified as urgent along this line, Madam Chair? Dahil magro-roll up na tayo by February. Secretary Duque. Meron ka po kaming uh, isilumite, nakapahal na po sa House of Representatives. Pero yung uh, mga iba pa po mga uh, policy recommendations namin, hopefully by tomorrow we can submit it uh, to the committee chair sa laban po. Okay, thank you uh, Mr. Secretary. Now, still related to the uh, emergency use authorization, I, I, I don't know if I heard right uh, the Secretary Duque earlier that uh, considering na wala pang ang batas in the uh, consideration of who will get EUA uh, is it uh, uh, did I get it right na pwede namang i-dispense yung phase 3 uh, source ng phase 3 trial uh, Madam Chair, you get an emergency use uh, authority na meron talagang uh, results ng uh, phase 3 trial, Madam Chair. Uh, uh, ako na lang po yung sasagot, Madam Chair. Uh, yung pong phase uh, 3, uh, po, yung emergency use authorization natin is based on interim results of ongoing phase 3. Kailangan naman po completed ang phase 1 at phase 2. Ito po kasi talaga yung early uh, safety trials. Yung phase 3 po, kahit po nasa kalagitnaan pa lamang siya, uh, ilang buwan pa lamang po, for example, in 30,000 subjects, if the evidence uh, is strongly uh, shows that there is good efficacy and then there are no particular safety issues, pwede na pong kumuha ng EUA. Pero required po yung kumpanya na ituloy-tuloy pong tapusin yung phase 3 hanggang magka-complete registration po yung kanilang produkto. Uh, thank you for that clarification, uh, uh, DJ Domingo. So, hindi ho pwede na walang, walang phase 3, either it's interim or you know, at what stage of the phase 3 trial. So hindi ka pwedeng bigyan ng EUA kung hindi mo sinabmit yung uh, requirement na yun. Is that a, a, a correct appreciation, uh, DJ Domingo? Yes, sir. Um, yes, Madam Chair, that's very accurate. No? Kasi ni, we base our decision on the EUA on the interim, at least for the interim results of the phase 3 trial. Without that, hindi po pwedeng mag-apply pa na. Hindi pa po pa natin pwedeng evaluate fully yung application. Uh, thank you for that uh, clarification. Now, uh, uh, earlier you said that uh, of the three that submitted application, only Pfizer-BioNTech was given an approval. Uh, ito curious lang ako na natan tanong lang ito. So kung approved na yung EUA niya, uh, why can't we start uh, vaccinating now or inoculating our people using uh, Pfizer BioNTech, Mr. Chair, Madam Chair? Well, as far as FDA concerned, po, pwede na po yun, ano? Pero syempre po, it will take some uh, a lot of other factors, yung pong supply, yung pong pag procure, pagdating dito, at yung pong pag set up ng ating implementation system, mm -hmm. which of course, sila Secretary Galvez and Secretary Duque are yes. now working on. Secretary Galvez, can you uh, respond to Kong Zarate's uh, query? Ma'am, uh, yung sana sa Pfizer, uh, kaya that's, that's why uh, the, you know, the WHO sa COVAX, yun po ang uh, pinakaunang uh, sa mga papasok po dito sa, sa atin. And considering that Pfizer, uh, hindi pa po tapos yung potrata natin, we are only uh, concluding with the term sheet and also sub supply agreement. Wala pa siyang definitive date na makakano po na darating. And considering also that uh, Pfizer uh, withheld yung, ano, yung yatawag natin tripartite, they, they only allow yung uh, uh, bilateral arrangement with us. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, uh, if I may make a follow-up. Uh, so, wala pa palang definitive. Approved na yung Pfizer. 
no? Ah, wala naman akong kinikilingan dito kahit Senobac yan, basta approve, bibigyan ng FBA ng EUA. But if it's already given an approval, uh, tapos walang definite. So how are we going to roll out this February kung wala pa pala tayong malinaw, no? Uh, uh, as outside of COVAX, I, I, I understand that there's a direct negotiation between our government and the manufacturers. Uh, dahil may meron naman tayong pondo para dito. So, oh. ano ang i-roll out natin by February, Madam Chair? Uh, ang i-roll out natin sa February is uh, yung uh, COVAX and then also yung Sinovac and uh, most most likely yung kung merong uh, darating na early early ano, early delivery. Uh, most likely as a Seneca, uh, po yung COVAX. Yung Pfizer po, ang indicative date niya po is uh, July. Kung Zarate, mag-interject lang po ako. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, I'm a, a bit confused. Yeah. Yes po. Uh, Secretary yes, Dr. Dr. I, I will yield. Yes po. Ang bilateral agreement po na minimension nyo na nire-require ng Pfizer, Pfizer is between, for example, Philippine government and COVAX, COVAX facility or uh, Philippine government and Pfizer. Ma'am, iba po yung COVAX. Uh, it is uh, being, ano, being uh, ano po ng Gavi and WHO. Ito yung free. Free po ito yeah, na. Yeah. Sabi po ka na nga na 20%, uh, 20% na population natin bibigyan. Mm -hmm. And considering na ang uh, WHO, ang mayroong ano po sa kanya is yung Pfizer, may supply. So yung Pfizer po ang bibigay po sa atin. That, that's free. Yung binibili po natin with Pfizer ay yung pong uh, 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 kinokontract po natin sa Pfizer Philippines. Which is ah, basically... Okay, so well, ang, kasi you mentioned the bilateral agreement. Yun yung requirement ng vi Pfizer. no So the answer is Meron tayo na, the national government and Pfizer. Yes, that, that, that's bilateral, meaning bilateral. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. You can proceed, Kong Sarate. Okay. May I continue? Yeah, uh, again, may I clarify, Madam Chair, uh, whether it's COVAX or a direct uh, negotiation with the manufacturers, may, uh, may I be clarified? Uh, uh, ito bang sa COVAX vaccine, no? through the facility of COVAX, kailangan bang mabigyan din ang mga bakunang ito ng EUA or not? Kailangan din po. Dahil kasi lahat po ng, ano, lahat po ng bakuna na yes. po, kailangan may EUA po. Yes. So I'm at a, a bit confused uh, and I hope that uh, uh, Secretary Galvez will clarify. So mag-roll out na tayo sa February but uh, as per FDA, ang nabigyan pala ng EUA is Pfizer. No? So, uh, uh, at you mentioned ba ka uh, ang uh, i-roll out natin yung uh, si, uh, ano ba yun? Uh, Sinovac and uh, the other one but uh, wala hindi pa ito sila binabagyan ng EUA so uh, pwede hong malinaw ito uh, ilinawin baka ang pinangangambahan po ng natin ngayon dahil magro-roll out na by uh, February and you will uh, issue short circuit na lang natin yung processes no uh, dahil ito na yung uh, vaccine from the COVAX facilities no? uh, through the COVAX uh, mechanism and uh, we still don't have this uh, emergency use uh, authorities uh, given by FDA. Pwede mong linawin natin ito, Mr. Secretary? Sinasabi ko po, uh, Sir Ate, napakalinaw po ng sinasabi ko na lahat po ng, ano, lahat po ng vaccine na i-administer dito sa atin ay kailangan po ng may EUA. So yung ano for example yung Sinovac hindi pa niya nakukuha yung EUA hindi pa ho siya darating po dito. Pwede po nating ano yan uh, i-delay yung po ang po natin. So ang ano lang natin yung tinatawag nating indicative date ng delivery uh, this coming February dahil nakita niya na tina-timing na rin na pagka once na nagkaroon na sila ng EUA for general use sa China uh, tama-tama rin po na naipasa na po yung clinical trial dito sa sa atin sa for EUA approval. So yung inan po ngayon dalawa pong pathway yan. Abang inaayos po yung kontrata, inaayos na rin po yung pathway for EUA. So nagtitingnan na po namin, tinatayamangan po namin na by end of the ano, February, uh, magkakaroon na po end of February, magkakaroon na po ng EUA yung Sinova. Kasi nakatiming po yun eh. Nakatiming po talaga yun. Kung hindi po nakuha within that timeline, pwede po tayong magmumove sa March. Kong Sarate, kindly uh, wrap up. Your time is up. I'll just wind up. Uh, yeah. Yes, I'm I'm just winding up, Madam Chair. Okay. So, uh, so ang inexpect po natin talaga uh, na iro-roll out by February ay yun pong vaccine from Sinovac. 
Tama po ba yun, uh, Secretary Galvez? Na we are negotiating directly with uh, uh, the manufacturer. So, dahil meron na sila application sa uh, FDA, no? inaantay na lang yung uh, mga requirements para mabigyan sila ng emergency use authority. Yun po ang uh, ina-expect natin immediately na i-roll out natin by February. Uh, is that a correct appreciation, Mr. Secretary? Yes po. Yun lang po kasi po ang ating, ano, ating isa, lahat ng manufacturer, sila po lang po ang mayroong mag-roll out ng, ng ano na ng February. Yung iba po, uh, mag, ano po uh, by May po po datating. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you po. So, uh, uh, just a quick ano na lang, Madam Chair. Uh, doon sa tanong kanina na napakarami po kasing spokespersons, ano, uh, in fact, kaninang umaga, nanonood ako ng news, eh, meron ding national anti-COVID-19 vaccine spokesperson, no? former General Padilla, na nagsasalita din. So, I think uh, uh, magkakaroon ng ano ang ganitong sistema, uh, yung messaging, instead na uh, malinaw, ay nakakagulo. No? Uh, and of course, we know for a fact na meron naman talagang mga uh, sa non-disclosure agreement, eh, there are items or uh, information that you cannot disclose. But uh, again, napakalaking usapin na this past days na mahal itong sinuwak at ang kanyang uh, sa Thailand, it's only $5, but pagdating sa atin dito, aabot siya ng $38. I think uh, it behooves upon our officials uh, dito sa vaccination program uh, to state the facts immediately. No? Even without violating the non-disclosure agreement, like you can say na uh, it's, uh, uh, in fact, in one interview, inamin naman din ni General Garbes na hindi ganun kalaki yung price niya. No? So, uh, it, uh, again, uh, pupunta ito doon sa usapin ng pagtitiwala ng ating uh, mga mamayan dito sa ating vaccination program because a slight uh, naduda, no? uh, baka may kumita dyan, baka kung ano, no? uh, nagkakaroon na ng a lot of uh, speculations. <laughs> Dadagdag uh, sa problema po natin yan. Uh, so yun lang. Thank you, Madam Chair. Pwede ko lang po sagutin. Uh, kasi po, ano, yung, nasabi ko na po yun sa Senate eh, na actually yung, ano, yung, yung, ano, yung presyo ng, ano, ng, ng Sinovac is comparable with uh, Indonesia and India. So nakita po naman natin yung, uh, ang presyo po ng, ano, ng Indonesia is 13.5. Sinabi ko po yun na uh, almost identical. Mm -hmm. Hindi ko lang po masabi yung ano, yung yung ano uh, kitawag nating saktong ano and then here comes yung ano yung an, ano an um, unvalidated na news na uh, yung sa Bangkok nga is 5 dollars sinabi ko kanina ng umaga na hindi imposible yun na 5 dollars kasi yung ano pa lang yung raw materials pa lang baka ubos na yung 5, 5 dollars at saka yung ating uh, freight uh, more than 2.5 yan so ang ano natin sinabi ko nga doon para at least ma matigil na yun natin ang sinabi ko mababa sa 700 kasi yung 3600 yun po ang presyo ng Sinopharm iba po ang Sinopharm at saka iba po, po ang Sinovac so yung Sinovac isang presyo niya nakabawas po tayo ng more, more or less 4 dollars ang ano niya po is uh, mababa pa po sa 700 kaya very napakalaki po ng disparity so medyo no uh, yung no yung data mali po talaga okay secretary Galvez but yung sa AstraZeneca initially i heard 5 dollars ang per dose so 10 yeah, dollars uh, ang ano naman yung AstraZeneca alam natin na kahit na sa internet 5 dollars yon kaya pwedeng sabihin po yon ng spokesperson kasi sa internet uh, alam na po yon pero yung okay. sign up po talaga at saka bang presyo medyo secret po talaga yung mang noon pero for the purpose of uh, transparency sinabi ko na nga po sa inyo na mababa po sa 700 yung ano po 700 pesos yung one dose okay thank you so much we still have 8 members to interpolate kind uh, kindly uh, be patient na matapos lang po natin no so uh, we now have representative Ebcas thank you madam chair and good afternoon to everyone actually some of my uh, questions were already answered uh, isa lang ang uh, tatanong ko uh, the diminishing public confidence in the safety of vaccines will be one of the many challenges we have to address immediately. Even before the arrival of COVID-19, vaccines were already secured. Right now, people are, are either hesitant or flat out and willing to be inoculated against the virus as several independent surveys have reported in the past weeks. I would like to ask 
uh, the health authorities, if there is already an information dissemination campaign plan or government efforts to increase the Filipinos' trust on COVID-19 vaccination. I'm not just talking about online or television briefings, but more inclusive mechanism that can adequately inform and assure the public of the seat of the safety of these vaccines. I mean, Madam Chair, yes, uh, we are uh, closely in uh, collaboration, coordination, uh, the DOH with the Philippine Information Agency, uh, plus, of course, uh, some uh, advertising agencies will also help us enhance uh, all of our uh, IEC uh, campaign, information education, communications campaign, with regard to uh, improving and increasing the uh, vaccine confidence of our people uh, with regard to uh, the uh, different vaccines, anti-COVID-19 vaccines, which we are about to roll out uh, as soon as the supplies uh, arrive. So we have the uh, task group on uh, demand generation and uh, communications that uh, are at the moment uh, uh, assessing the multiple uh, drivers uh, to inform uh, planning, uh, including uh, social processes, uh, an example of which uh, 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 assessment of multiple uh, drivers to inform uh, planning yung uh, ano po ba yung mga iniisip at uh, naramdaman ng taong bayan patungkol sa mga benepisyo ng mga ating mga bakuna yung kalitasan ng mga bakuna yung pong ano ba yung mga risk na kanila pong uh, isinasalita ano po yung mga risk din sa mga pasyente in particular at uh, ano po ba yung mga negative or misinformation na nangyayari at bawat isa nito ay bibigyan natin ng tugod for appropriate response. No? So sa social processes ay uh, binubuo po natin yung tinatawag natin the support uh, for vaccination by the influencers, no? social influencers, no? uh, patulad ng mga uh, PMA, Philippine Nurses Association, uh, Philippine uh, Association of Medical Technologies at saka uh, uh, mga iba pa po major healthcare uh, organizations. No? So, uh, atin po uh, uh, bibigyan din ng angkop na messaging uh, patungkol sa vaccination norms, yung workplace norms, yung decision and travel autonomy, yung uh, tiwala sa mga vaccine providers, yung uh, tiwala sa pagsasagot ng uh, tama patungkol sa mga napakadaming tanong uh, tungkol po sa akuna mostly revolving around safety and efficacy. No? So, marami po tayong uh, uh, gagawin yung uh, paglikha at paglilinya for alignment ng mga messages and platforms across public and private sector. Uh, kasama po dito yung televised weekly briefing thematic uh, public service uh, advisories uh, using uh, quad, quad media. No? Uh, meron po tayong dedicated uh, web page, meron po tayong mga uh, healthcare workers uh, targeted uh, using uh, advocates, yung po mga local chief executives and LGU responders, kasama po sila dyan. Ang mga media practitioners ang mga non-health responders, community organizers, multi-faith-based organizations and academia. Sasagawa na din po tayo, uh, mag-uumpisa na yung atin town halls and assemblies para magpalawin magpalawin po natin ang uh, information uh, dissemination uh, uh, mandate of uh, the DOH and other collaborating agencies. Uh, Secretary, follow up lang, isang follow up. What specific 
task force or uh, government agency nagpupunta doon sa mga rural areas kasi nung nakaraan buwan I've been roaming around no uh, of the electric cooperatives in the rural areas eh din marami nagtatanong din sa akin na ganito so sino ba itong uh, task group na sinasabi mo or your uh, government in charge na nagdisseminate ng information yeah, yes sir Yung collaboration po between the DOH and the Philippine Information Agency, kasama po yung atin na health education uh, promotion sa uh, officers ng uh, 17 uh, DOH regional offices. So, uh, yan po, nag-organize na po sila ng uh, mga uh, local, regional and local task forces to ensure adequate uh, information, education, and communications campaign to improve uh, vaccine confidence, reduce vaccine hesitancy, increase buy-in by the general public of our COVID-19 uh, vaccination program. Uh, maramay, salamat Secretary. Madam Chair, maraming salamat. Thank you so much, uh, Kong Ebkas. Next to interpolate is uh, Representative BHD, uh, Bernadette Herrera D. Do we still have? If none, we can call on Representative Ted Haresco. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Mohang uh, Teenager, your having Chairman. Good morning for the very timely uh, committee. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Thank you, uh, Secretary Galvez and uh, Secretary Duque. Napaka comprehensive po ng uh, report niyo. And, uh, very heartwarming, uh, Madam Chairman, lalo-lalo uh, uh, na po sa amin sa Burakay. Uh, Ms. Uh, Madam Chairman, I'd like to ask uh, several uh, policy questions. Number one, Madam Chairman, uh, yung uh, prioritization criteria, uh, the Philippine government has borrowed so far some uh, $10 billion. And uh, this $10 billion would require us in Congress to look for uh, additional uh, 50 billion pesos just to service the debts of this uh, $10 billion. Now, in the document submitted by Secretary Galvez, Madam Chairman, uh, wala po ako nakikita dito ng uh, economic recovery uh, specific uh, programs and plans, Madam Chairman. Ang nakikita ko lang, uh, Madam Chairman, kay Secretary Galvez is uh, more on the medical and health uh, prioritization. And on this medical and health, Madam Chairman, uh, hindi ko na itindihan na uh, katulad dito sa food security, uh, hindi ko nakikita yung prioritization uh, katulad namin sa aklat doon na, na March and April, uh, Madam Chairman, aklat provided the emergency uh, food supply of rice to the whole of Palay Island. And uh, doon, wala ko nakikita ng uh, action plan on the food security. Uh, Number two policy question, Madam Chairman, is the tripartite, which is an uh, open uh, remark by Secretary Galvez. Pwede ba nga quadripartite na private sector, local government unit, national government, and for example, uh, a prestigious hospital like St. Luke's or uh, Bacolod Doctors Hospital na uh, quadripartite instead of limiting itself to uh, tripartite. Number three policy question, uh, Madam Chairman, uh, since sinasabi ni Secretary Galvez na nag-uusap siya sa mga taipads, katulad ni uh, ang ating businessman na uh, kagalaggalag na si Ricky Rason, uh, meron pa mga provisions na pwede isubmit yun na uh, uh, interagency task force on the create or bayanihan three bill na nagbibigay ng tax incentive sa mga 
uh, philanthropist yeah. or uh, large businessman katulad ni uh, Ricky Rason or Ramon Ang na ma mabus yun uh, vaccination program ng national government. Again, Madam Chairman, uh, I would like to salute uh, Secretary Galvez and Secretary Duque na inuna nila ang uh, Metro Manila at Calabarzon that represents uh, more or less 60% of our GDP. But the show window to the world of the Philippines is uh, areas, tourism areas like Boracay, Cebu, Davao, Tagaytay, Baguio, lalo-lalo na po ang Boracay uh, which is uh, pinpointed by the Forbes uh, magazine as the number one tourist destination post-COVID. Now, uh, sa investment... Sir, kindly po, wind up. You actually consume the five minutes. Thank you. Sa investment po ng 250 million pesos, balik agad yun ng 1 billion pesos na kung mabuksan lang ang nagusto ang Boracay. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Madam Chair, can I answer? Go ahead, sir. Uh, on the, you know, the uh, recovery, sir, ano po, uh, ang uh, ating pong uh, National Task Force, IATF, ay binubuo po ng tatlong cluster. Uh, yung response cluster, yun po yung uh, anti-COVID response sa ating mga variant and also yung kung ano yung existing uh, affectation po natin. Nasa gitna po yung vaccine cluster. Kaya po talagang nakakonsentrate kami sa vaccine kasi uh, nationwide po ang vaccination is unprecedented so that we can be focused. Ang third ano po natin, ang third cluster po natin is recovery cluster which is under NEDA. Yung lahat po ng tinatanong nyo, nandun po mismo si, you know, si Secretary Dar, uh, siya po ang in charge sa food security, class, uh, food security task group. So nandun pa rin po yung ano, so ibig sabihin separate po yung trabaho namin with the response cluster at saka po sa sa recovery cluster under sa national task force. Ako pa rin po ang uh, national task force implemented but yung recovery po, uh, NEDA po ang in-charge po doon. At siya po ang gumagawa po ng recovery plan. And yeah. then, yung, yung, kaya ang ano po, ang, uh, ano po namin, ay, kaya po yung sabi ko na yung organization natin, si, uh, kumukumpas pa rin po si IATF Chairman uh, Francisco Duque. So meron po, uh, meron po tayong tinatawag na uh, National Task Force with three clusters, uh, response cluster, vaccine cluster, and the recovery cluster, which is uh, doon po yung recovery. And then yung tripartite, quadripartite, quadru ito po pinag-usapan namin kahapon. Pwede po yun. Actually, pwede po yun. Very flexible po tayo. Sinabi ko nga po sa LGU para integrated yung ating vaccination. Kausapin nyo na yung, yung, ano, yung private sector na malak malakasan nyo. For example, uh, Boiti sa Cebu. So kausapin na ni Cebu Mayor na yung kalahati na ibibigay mo, ibigay mo na sa LGU para dadami yung aking, ano, dadami yung aking uh, uh, vaccine. So meron ang bibili ng LGU, meron pang bibili yung yung private sector. At the same time, yung LGU, under niya rin yung, ano, under niya rin yung private sector na nahand on. So yung mga, mga, ano, mga laborers, constituent, kung ibig sabihin, sa isang, ano, sa isang quadripartite or multilateral agreement na nahagit mo na lahat yung multi-stakeholder expansion. And then po yung tinatawag natin, ano, tama po yun, yung sa number three, yung tax relief. Kaya nga po, umingi kami po ng, ano, at least, uh, at, at po, uh, personally, kailangan po natin ng bayan ni Antri. Kailangan na natin ang indemnification clause, indemnification law. Kailangan din po natin yung yung exception ng taxes ng ng vaccine para mabilis po. Uh, kasi po pagkaanan po yan, very ano, very uh, delicate yung vaccine. Kailangan din po maano sa customs. They, they, we need a law to ano to to ano to be tax exempted at same time yung custom duty sa saka bat mawala na po. And then yung prioritization po, uh, sir kasama po ang tourism sa prioritization. Actually, nandun po kayo sa under essential workers. Kasi po, nakita po namin talaga, tourism, dumapa po ang tourism. Eh. So we make it appear talaga na yung tourism is one of our priority in terms of our uh, economic recovery. So nandun po yun. Uh, bibigyan po natin ng attention po yun. Lalo na po ang Bohol, Boracay, at saka yung Palawan. Bibigyan po natin ng priority. Thank you, thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Uh, narinig po natin kay Secretary Calves na uh, he addressed the three policy issues, lalong-lalo na po yung mga tanong sa akin, yung mga doktor, katulad galing sa Philippine Medical Association, 
ay sana po Secretary Galvez sa uh, Madam Chairman ay mag-issue ng formal uh, instructions sa mga medical societies and associations para alam nila yung procedures uh, kung paano bang quadripartite para masigurado po na accessible din po para hindi na masyadong uh, 100% sa national government yung pag-vaccinate ng mga mayayaman na katulad dito sa Metro Manila. Number two, Madam Chairman, sinasabi po ni Secretary Galvez na kailangan ng bayanihan three. Ay, uh, sana po ma ma convey ni Secretary Galvez at saka ni Secretary Duque kay, uh, sa ating mahal na Pangulo, na Pangulo President Duterte, na ang pangangailangan ng bayanihan three. On the hand side, uh, Madam Chairman, nung pinasa natin yung bayanihan two, ay nagsuggest po ako personally as a member of the bilateral committee to set aside some 5 billion for uh, the buying of the purchase of option rights for at least five vaccine uh, that were being developed out of the 36. Pero na-delay yata yung pag-release ng budget so hindi tayo nakabili ng option rights. Ngayon po ay uh, sana po sa bayanihan 3 Masigurado po natin na yung 70 million uh, uh, target uh, vaccinated Filipinos ay ma-achieve natin at saka wala po makukulangin na yung ating mahal na sekretary, sekretary uh, Pinkoy Duque sa uh, pag-implement. Ay sana po, uh, Secretary Galvez, uh, makonkretize siya po kasi 1 billion dollars ang balik ng Burakay sa banko 1 billion dollars napakalaki po yan uh, sa 304 billion na binibigay na to reset sa ating GDP thank maraming, you, maraming, maraming maraming salamat uh, Madam Chair thank you po for patiently waiting uh, would like to call on our deputy speaker Lord 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 Madam Chair, can I uh, uh, exit now because uh, our call um, time is uh, only uh, 5 o'clock. Madam Chair, Madam uh, Chair I am on the line. Can um, we wait for uh, D.S. Legarda? Yes. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Congresswoman um, Helen Tan. Uh, am I on the line? I understand that Secretary Galvez, General Galvez, is asking to leave. Um, may I request uh, Secretary Galvez to stay just for a few minutes and we were only given five minutes and I was able to speak with him last night, but I can see his picture already there. He must have left. So I would request him to stay on just for five minutes. Uh, General, are you there? I yes. Need to yes Thank you. Uh, having uh, listened to the proceedings since past nine this morning, I will no longer belabor to ask the same questions, but would just like to summarize, Madam Chair. It is very clear that based on the DOH, Secretary Duque, and the IITF General Galvez's presentation that the selection of vaccines for rolling out to the vulnerable populations in our country of 110 million would basically depend on first, efficacy, second, safety, third, the availability and timeline of these uh, vaccine manufacturers, and fourth, uh, the uh, rollout schedule, and of course, the storage facilities available in the country attuned with the requirements of the products. May I know from General Galvez and all the other speakers today, aside from efficacy, safety, storage facilities, as well as uh, the cost and the availability are there any other considerations in the selection of the menu of available COVID-19 vaccines that are being considered for Philippine rollout? Secretary General Galvez, please. Yes, uh, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am, for the, uh, for the uh, uh, comment. Uh, first is, uh, yung ano po, yung uh, mga tinatawag nating uh, criteria uh, nasabi na po ng, ano, ng ating uh, vaccine expert panel during, ano, during the Senate hearing and also today na meron talagang uh, qualification. Kasama po doon yung sinasabi nga natin safety and efficacy, yung cost, uh, tinitingnan din po natin, at saka yung complexity ng handling ng 
tinatawag na supply chain. At the same time, yung yung maganda rin po na ina-add po namin is yung long-term commitment po ng ano, long-term commitment ng uh, manufacturer and also yung yung diplomatic relations natin sa country where uh, the ano, the vaccine came from. Yung po ang mga consideration po natin na nakasinasinama po natin para at least ma maging ano po tinatawag natin yung ano yung source ng ating vaccine will be sustainable. Um, salamat sa inyong uh, pagsagot sa aking katanungan. Uh, mukhang wala po akong na-miss sa mga considerations maliban dun sa diplomatic relations which I believe should be last in the prioritization dahil ang safety at efficacy siguro po ang dapat mas mataas na prioridad, di ba ho? Yes ma'am. Okay. Actually, actually ma'am, uh, wala po na, hindi po natin yan po yung safety and efficacy at saka yung tinatawag na cost efficiency. Okay. Ang katanungan ko po, Knowing that the Philippine government has limited resources, but perhaps sufficient to roll out the vaccines available. Second, taking into consideration the fact that the lives of the Filipinos, ang buhay ay mas mahalaga kaysa anumang consideration. Why would we consider a vaccine having hurdled the minimum WHO standard of 50% like Sinovac, where there are many others which are readily available. I understand where you're coming from when you said that 80% have been already purchased previously by uh, other countries. I would not always want to brand those countries rich countries because we are a rich country in terms of natural resources. So I would probably rephrase that later on, but that's another matter. Now, ano po ang ating consideration Bakit natin mukha lang pinipilit ang mababang efficacy na vaccine kung meron pong 90-95% taking into consideration the storage facilities which may be difficult uh, when Pfizer is concerned pero ang Moderna naman ay 90% at hindi ganun kahigpit uh, o kalamig ang storage facilities. So, in short, yung pondo na ilalagay sa Sinovac, but hindi na lang po ilagay sa ibang vaccine na mas matiaas, mataas ang efficacy level at ang safety naman ay napatunayan na sa ibang bansa. Secretary uh, General. Number one, ang ano po natin unang-una, uh, limited uh, supply. Meaning, ang Pfizer, hindi po lahat yun masusuplayan po tayo. Nakita po natin na meron po siyang limitation. So, meron lang siyang makukuha tayo, na for example, kung kunyari lang po. Uh, meron po silang offer sa atin na ang maximum po natin, kunyari 15 million. So, kung 15 million lang po ang Pfizer, hahanap pa tayo ng tinatawag na additional portfolio para madagdagan po iyon. Pag samasamahin na po natin ang Pfizer, Moderna, at saka po yung J&J, ang makukuha lang po natin more or less mga 60 million. So, kulang pa po ang sa population po natin. So, ang ano po natin, ang strategy po natin is for as long as it is approved by the WHO standard, approved by, ano, by uh, the FDA to be safe and effective, uh, yun po kukunin natin, tatawag natin national volumes okay. uh, para, para, para mapuno po yung 148 million po natin. Very clear. Hindi po tayo nagpipilit ng anuman basta na hurdle yung 50% at transparent ang ating pagpaliwanag po sa publiko, pipili po sila kung gusto nila ang Sinovac na 51% ang efficacy insofar as the Brazil test on healthcare workers is concerned or ang Moderna na higit sa 90%, 94% yata at yung Pfizer or AstraZeneca na around 70%. So are we saying then that the frontliner, health frontliner, healthcare workers have a right to choose na iro-roll out ng gobyerno, ng local government kung gusto niya na 50% Zinovac o Moderna na 90%. Ganun ba ho? Kung hindi congressman, hindi senador, hindi makapangyari ang tao, simpleng tao sa probinsya, maaring sabihin, ayoko po yan ang iturok niyo sa akin, gusto ko po ito. Or dahil bibilin ang gobyerno ng Zinovac, yun ang iro-roll out nyo ng libre, baka yung mahihirap or yung mga walang kapasidad magbayad yun ang ituturok sa kanila pero ang efficacy niyan ay higit na mas mababa kaysa sa mga ibang vaccine na bibilin ng pribadong sektor. 
Uh, Na-explain na po kanina ni na Dr. Edsel. Uh, uh, sa I heard mga, that. I heard it. Uh, nakita yes. po natin na hindi lang po yung efficacy ang titignan natin, kundi yung prevention for being severe. At saka I yung, heard that, sir. Uh, yes. yes. So, ganun po ang inanap po natin, just in case, na uh, yung healthcare workers uh, namili po siya. Pero ang sasabihin po natin sa kanila na uh, you can choose, but uh, kung magasa, no, yung nakita natin, ito yung uh, uh, vaccine. Dadating siya this coming July. Kung you are willing to wait, uh, pwede na pwede yun ang administer natin but for the you know for the purpose of really preserving you know yung healthcare workers uh, the, the, the the you know the healthcare worker that uh, choosing uh, what is the best plan for, for 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 him or for her it endangers also in the lives of uh, or yung tawag na institution that will you know that will administer you ano po ang inaano po natin madam is uh, at least yung pinaka primary ano po natin talaga is ma preserve ang healthcare institution considering that eh, the healthcare workers are very vulnerable. Yes, uh, we want we want them uh, na ma to choose po at saka kung ano po may produce namin kaagad yung most ano most most ano most at tinatawag na most sought na na na, na brand. Pero yung nga po ang inano natin na sa communication po natin na this brand whether whether no whether whether it is a, a Moderna or Pfizer it also heal the same ano po. For example po madam, magbigay na po example. Nung na hospital po ako ng ano ng ng, uh, ng December talagang halos uh, talagang medyo nang hina po talaga ako the doctor told me that uh, I will ano I will inject you with the uh, anti flu vaccine when he injected me the flu vaccine I did not anymore uh, ask for the brand pero nakita po po na po, po ngayon na ang ganda ng pakiramdam ko na malakas ako dahil sabi niya we have to preserve you we will give you that shot so yun po ang ibig kong sabihin na regardless na kung nagugutom ka, dapat yung pinaka-first na available para mawala ang gutom mo, dapat yun yung kainin mo. Okay. Uh, General, thank you for very much for our conversation last night, right? And you recommended that I call Ambassador Romualdez, and I did. Ayon kay Ambassador Romualdez, and I have his permission to quote him in this hearing, the 20 million doses commitment of Moderna to the Philippines is only awaiting approval, meaning 10 million, according to him, can be paid by the Philippine government. But according to him, uh, yours, you said that there may not be resources to pay for the balance of the 10 million doses. And that is the reason why the private sector has to come in. But if we have a budget allocation for vaccines like Sinovac with only 51% efficacy, why don't we ilihis na lang po natin yung pondo para sa Moderna na meron 10 million doses na wala pang buyers. Kailangan pa pumasok ang private sector dahil 10 million lang daw ang inyong commitment sa pondo ng gobyerno. Is that accurate? That was my understanding of my conversation with Ambassador to Washington, Babe Romualdez, and he gave me the permission to relate to you our conversation last night per your suggestion to clarify with him in our conversation last night. General. Ma'am, ito po, sa decision-making process po natin, titignan po natin yung parehong brand, Pfizer and Moderna. If we will buy all, all, ano, all Moderna, we cannot maximize Pfizer. Meaning uh, the volume, for example, the volume of Pfizer is 50 million given to us. And then we will buy 20 million Moderna. Ang mabibili lang po natin na, ano, na Pfizer is only 20 million. So in order to maximize, considering that the price of ano of uh, Moderna and Pfizer, napaka laki ng pagkaka ano it more than three times. So we, I will buy more Pfizer than Moderna. That's why. Uh, I, uh, yes. Uh, Sorry, uh, General. Uh, my question was not between Pfizer or Moderna. It was yung nakalaan pong pondo para sa Sinovac na higit na fifty percent lang, but hindi na lang ilagay nyo sa Moderna na meron palata yung twenty million available. Ayon kay Ambassador Romualdez. Ma'am, I, I believe uh, mangyayari po is, uh, for example, ganyan ang gagawin po natin. Uh, if we will buy Moderna, it will eat up a lot. Na, ano po. Kasi ang ano po natin, na, nakita natin ang price ng Moderna, sabihin natin $33. And you $25 buying, per dose, two more, doses, $50. Yeah. Yeah. Ano po, yung ano lang po yun, uh, one, one, ano, one, one ano po. Uh, ano, ang sasabi ko po is only, ano, only, only uh, nominal ano yung nandoon po nakapublish po sa okay. ano lang uh, internet uh, for example 33 million 
at ang nabili lang natin po yung ano yung iba is only uh, $10. Uh, hindi po siya no, hindi po siya no. Hindi po tayo magkakaroon ng equity. Uh, meaning so, equi equitable access is violated. So ibig niyo sabihin po dahil sa cost, dahil mahal ang Moderna nang in short General, nanghihinayang lang po ako na meron 20 million doses available for the Philippines ng Moderna na 90% ang efficacy. Kung hindi po ikiklaim ng Pilipinas po yan, sayang naman po at kalahati lang po ang bibili ng gobyerno. But I hope the private sector can buy the 10 million so that that can be uh, distributed uh, to private sector workers as well. Ma'am, uh, hindi ko po kasi maano po yun, eh, yung hindi ko ma-reveal sa inyo yung financing. Eh. Uh, because, uh, I understand. That's uh, fine. Alam, alam po natin, ang qualified po sa World Bank is only two, two, ano, two, two brand, Pfizer and, and Moderna. So yun po ang ano natin, yung loan natin. Pagka once na nagano po tayo, uh, yun po ang magiging anyway, anyway po natin. So yung, yung, yung dalawa po na yun, yung, yung dalawang, uh, yung dalawa po na yun ang anyway natin. So that's why, Ang ano po natin is uh, tingnan po natin yung, yung, yung tiyatawag natin if we will violate the principle of equity because of the disparingly high, high, ano, high, high, ano, high yung price. Medyo ano po tayo. Ganun, ganun po ang ano, na, nakita po namin na uh, in our evaluation for contracting, tinitingnan po namin ng equity. Kaya nga po nakita po natin na uh, we bought more, ano, more on AstraZeneca because it's only very affordable. Which is uh, really, uh, uh, really, ano, really conforms with equitable access. Pero ang Astra po, 70% lang ang efficacy, di ba ho? Opo. Kaya nga po, nakita po natin, kahit na 70% siya, uh, nakita na po ng explanation na the efficacy is only one of the, ano, one of the, uh, one of the, ano, one of the element of the, ano, of the, uh, uh, element of the vaccine if it is effective. Ang pinaka-importante pa rin po, yung, yung tinatawag natin, yung sinasabi nga kanina, na 100% that you will not become severe. Yan po ang importante pa rin po. Kasi yung po inahon po natin, the vaccine is to, to save lives. Ang benefits niyo po. Okay. My last question, Madam Chair, I hope I'm not uh, just uh, less than one minute, is lahat po ng local governments ay gusto mag-procure at maglalaan po ng kanilang parte ng ira para bumili, maliban sa ginagastos ng national government. Pero kailangan ng tripartite uh, mula sa national. Sa Lahat ng 80 provinces, nag-capacity building na ba ho ang IATF? Alam na ba ho ng mga gobernador at ng mga city mayors kung paano sila ma-procure using their um, ira or nakalaan na pondo? Uh, and how is it possible that they could abide by the timeline uh, based on the IATF uh, procurement of all of this? Uh, alam na ba ng mga kalibliban ng mga uh, syudad at mga probinsya kung paano ang kanilang gagawin. Uh, uh, nagbigay na po yes. ma'am ng, ano, ng uh, directive ang uh, DILG regarding this, that matter. Actually, nag-usap na po kami ni Undersecretary Yusek Flores at saka Yusek Dancing on, on that matter. Maybe kung nandiyan po si uh, Yusek Epi, uh, pwede po mag-asagta po, mag, uh, mag po. Yes. May I just suggest, I know I'm running out of time, that the DOH and the IATF perhaps give all local governments um, very clear and put it online, the requirements so that they can access uh, on their own if they wish and they have to have the funds for um, the vaccines that they prefer. So that hindi lang ang sinusubo sa kanila na murang Sinovac or Astra ang available and they can actually select based on their uh, choice and their uh, financial capability. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, General. Uh, thank you, uh, Kong Helen Tan, uh, for the time. I hope I've not exceeded, and I will continue to listen. Salamat po. Thank you, DS Lauren. Uh, your dangers, I will really leave. I will really leave because uh, I'm going to be late. For, uh, okay. Uh, really thank you for being here. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, I would like to call on uh, Kong Bernadette Herrera D. Kong BH. Do we still have Kong BH? If none, we can call on uh, Representative Marvi Marino. Do we have uh, Kong Marvi? And then we can call on uh, Representative Arlene Brosas. Kong Arlene? Yes, Chair. 
yeah, share. Yes. Uh, a few questions to share. Um, kaugnay po ito. Uh, sana uh, masagot na no kaugnay po ito sa direct na po ako sa question share ha. Yes. Sa, uh, oh, uh, sa panawagan ng people over profit and people over patents and doctors without borders sa kanilang on October 2 kasi last year sa meeting ng World Trade Organization on trade related aspects of intellectual property rights or TRIPS, India and South Africa proposed for a temporary waiver of certain TRIPS obligations in response to the raging COVID-19 pandemic. Yung proposal nila aims to waive drugs patent enforcement on the pre prevention containment or treatment of particularly COVID-19. So, uh, since November, this has been co-sponsored by the delegations of Kenya, Eswatini, of Pakistan, Mozambique, and Bolivia. Over 100 countries also support the proposal. Ngayon, um, ang gobyerno po natin, ano po ba ang position no, ng ating gobyerno kaugnay dito? Uh, may we ask from the Secretary of uh, uh, Health or siguro si, si perhaps si ano, no, si Secret, uh, perhaps si General Galvez uh, may, may oh, siya ano, yeah. no, uh, update ko ngayon dito. Yeah, Secretary Galvez uh, left uh, after that uh, interpolation ni B.S. Loren. Uh, do we still have uh, Secretary of health. Secretary Duque. Okay, who will answer in behalf of uh, Secretary Galvez and Secretary Duque? UH. Madam, yes, Madam Chair, this is very important kasi um, tinatanong ko po sana kasi ang Pilipinas kung magiging signatory ba siya, especially sa March 2021 na yung decision ng Council. So kailangan po sana Sayang, ano, na sana nasagot tayo ni, 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 since siya yung national task force, ano po natin, uh, siya ang nakakaalam ko anong policies natin kaog na dito, Madam Chair. And alam niyo pong mainit na usapin ito, lalo na sa international, dahil usapin ko ito na ang mga rich countries ang nakaka-access dito, no? At tayo ng mga mahihirap na bansa or developing countries, tayo yung hindi maka-access. So, um, ang tanong ko lang po, Madam Chair, kung uh, meron bang uh, uh, pinag-iisipan bang kumirma or maaasahan ba natin kumirma ang gobyerno pa ulit dito, Madam Chair? I think, uh, Secretary, uh, Yusek uh, Mierna Kabotahe or Yusek Berheri. Can you answer in behalf of the Secretary? You sec me or na? Anyone from the DOH? You sec Rosette. Uh, yes, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, if uh, pwede pong paulit lang ng question, I'm sorry. We're in another meeting. Sorry po, ma'am. Sorry. Ong Arlene, can you uh, repeat your uh, question? Sorry about that. Okay. Yes, uh, yeah. yes. Okay po, uh, Madam Chair, um, ang tanong ko po kaugnay sa proposal o uh, sa um, ipinupush no, na campaign ng people over patents or and people over profit or, and doctors without borders, kaugnay po sa October 2 last year meeting ng World Trade Organization on trips or trade-related aspects of intellectual property rights. Ang India and South Africa po nag-propose para sa temporary waiver of certain trips obligations in response to the raging COVID-19 pandemic. I understand tayo sa Pilipinas, concern din natin yan. Kaya nga kanina, nagtatanong si, si, si NTF um, Galvez no, na paano yung mga tariffs, paano yung mga uh, permits, licenses, etc. Ganyan. Ngayon, since November po, this has been co-sponsored by delegations of Kenya, Eswatini, Pakistan, Mozambique, Bolivia. Mga 100 countries na po ang nagsuporta ng proposal na ito. Ang tinatanong ko po, what is the position of our government? Particularly po ng DOH, uh, kaugnay dito. 
ngayon, uh, in-expect na ba ng natin na uh, magiging signatory tayo or nakita na ba natin ito since March 2021 na po ang decision ng Council to Ogmay dito? Uh, yes, Madam Chair and good afternoon po, Honorable Brosas. Um, I am sorry, but I cannot provide you the response as of this time because I have not received this uh, information yet. Uh, but rest assured that we will be submitting our position uh, to the Office of the Honorable uh, Congresswoman, Madam Chair. Yes, uh, Honorable Brosas, uh, Madam Chair, uh, course room na lang sa specifically sa office ng NPF kasi to kay Secretary Galvez talaga siya siguro uh siya siguro ang makakasagot yeah. dito no we'll ask na lang office of uh, Secretary Galvez to reply on your query kasi mahalaga po sa atin to kasi uh, yung mga trips po na usapin ay uh, usapin ng importing and exporting ng mga pharmaceuticals di ba usapin po yan ng mga um, licenses, permits, usapin po yan tariffs, taxes, grades, ganun po. So, um, para sa call ng accessible and affordable medical product, products, including yung vaccines, at saka yung mga uh, medicines for the prevention, containment, and treatment ng COVID-19. Kasi baka naguhuli na po tayo o wala tayong alam o hindi natin nakikita ito na babasa, eh mahalaga po sana na magbigay din tayo ng boses natin out there sa international ano, na tayo ay matulungan sa pinalalagyan natin. At malaki po ang maitutulong ito kung uh, ma-wave Madam Chair? Yes, please proceed. Loud and clear, naririnig yes, ka yeah. namin. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, akala ko na wala po ako. No, no, no. Anyway, yun po, um, sana masagot tayo. No? Kahit in Britain nito kung ano ang ating position. Okay, okay. we'll ask the office. Madam Chair. Okay. My second question is about the Bayanian tool. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, my second question is on the sa Bayanihan 2 po, it is written there that uh, there should be 10 billion for COVID-19 testing and procurement of COVID-19 medication and vaccine. Ngayon, ang tanong ko po, are savings already generated for this 10 billion peso standby fund for vaccines? Um, concern po natin ito kasi, di ba, tatanong natin, um, Ano, na-utilize na ba? Nasaan na ba yung pondo? Uh, meron na ba? May na-generate na ba? Saan ang galing? Ganun po. Wala na naman sasagot, Madam Chair. We have representative from DBM or DOH. From the DBM. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Yes, Ma'am Mary Ann. Uh, yes, ma good afternoon, Ma'am. Uh, as far as the 10 billion standby fund is concerned, uh, actually, we have yet to receive any uh, indications from the OH or the other implementing agencies as to the need for uh, the release of the 10 billion specific for the vaccine concerns. And as of now, Madam Chair, uh, for the Bayanihan 2 funding of 140 billion, we have already released 103 billion and uh, there's still a uh, amount of a balance of 36 billion out of that 140 billion so uh, we are still awaiting if there's already a need to release that 10 billion from the OH or the other partners madam chair On paper. Yes, Madam Chair. Um, uh, wala namang sinabi ang DBM. So, uh, may we know sa DOH kung nag-request sila ng 10 billion peso standby fund, ano bang status nito? Or makasagot sa National Task Force ng 
ano ang status nitong 10 billion pesos standby fund for vaccines? Uh, Madam Chair, may we request Yusek Mirna Kabutahe to provide a response to this? Yusek Mirna? Thank you, Madam Chair. I am not private to the uh, negotiations, but what I know is that uh, we have a uh, team that is negotiating, that is the team of uh, Sec Charlie, and they will know what are the needs uh, for the vaccine. So they have already put in uh, mind what the funds are being used. No? So in terms of the uh, loan, the unprogrammed fund, uh, we are matching that with the uh, World, World Bank and ADB loan. So we're working together with UF. Uh, it has already passed the ICC and we are now uh, uh, doing the different agreements. But for the rest of the 10 billion, uh, maybe just submit a, an answer so that we will be clear with the uh, DBM, uh, PSDBM and UF and uh, vaccine SAR how much they have already negotiated so that we can give uh, an indication of how much uh, we will need for our vaccines from the 10 billion bayanihan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Yusek. Uh, last question, uh, Kong Arlene. You've consumed... Yes, Madam Chair. Ma uh -huh. Madam Chair, yun actually yung gusto kong malaman kasi Siyempre, gusto kong malaman ng taong bayan kung ano na nangyari doon sa uh, nilagay nating 10 billion standby fund daw dito sa vaccines. Now, what we were talking about the vaccines ngayon, tapos ngayon, hindi naman masabi sa atin kung ano nga yung mga um, ano na ang uh, nagamit, pinagkagastusan or whatever dito. And now, we are um, actually seeing news no, na meron tayong mga loans na ginagawa na actually ang ayaw naman natin dito ay mga mga loans o utang na detrimental sa ating national economy and recovery. Um, ma, may we know no, kung sino po dyan sa represent, mga representatives dyan kung magkano na yung utang with regards to the vaccine. No? Meron na po ba tayong ganyang information ngayon? Yusek Rosette? You have the information. Who can answer that uh, query? Uh, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, but uh, we do not have that information as of this moment uh, because it's the Office of Secretary Galvez negotiating. Can we ask Yusek Porisima from the Office of Secretary Galvez if he can uh, reply to the query of uh, Representative Ardian? Do we have Yusek Porisima? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. I'm your Secretary Sima. I'm not privy of the uh, negotiations conducted by uh, Secretary Galvez. Uh, okay. We'll uh, just inform uh, the committee uh, regarding the questions being asked by the Honorable uh, uh, Member of the House, uh, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, can Madam I Chair? Add that uh, question of Representative Arlene? Madam Chair, yes, Director Atoy from our Bureau of International Health uh, Cooperation, to just give us an overview of uh, the uh, loans that we have been proposing. With your permission, Madam Chair. Okay, Director Atoy. Ngayon na hapon po, Madam Chair. Um, yun po ating uh, gagamitin ang pangbili ng bakuna using multilateral banks, both ADB and World Bank, nag-submit na tayo sa MEDA, ICC, ng 300 million US sa ADB, 300 million US sa World Bank. Yan po ay approved na ng MEDA, pero at the moment, ang both banks, sila po ay nagpapa-approve na additional budget. Hindi pa po approve doon sa dalawang banko. Pero yan po ang inaasahan na pambili natin ng mga bakuna. Um, if I may also pa, kasi dahil hindi nga po natin alam pa kung ang 
package na makukuha natin ay talagang moderna, which is mas malaki ang magagastos kung dadagdagan pa ng DOF ang ating loan. Uh, ang tutusin po sa negotiating team, ang kasama po ni Secretary Valdez, kasama po ang DOF sa, ne sa negotiation po. Kaya po talagang yung sa kaperahan, sila po talaga ang um, mayroon. Pero dito po ang sa DOH ang implementing arm ng loans po sa ato. Yan po, Madam Chair. Kong Arlene? Kong Arlene, do we still have Kong Yes, Arlene? thank you, Madam Chair. Yes. They are actually, yes. Kindly uh, wind up. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, that's my, uh, that is my uh, final question na po. Pero ihabol ko po sana kung meron tayong vaccine development and drug industry dito sa ating uh, paano tinutulungan ngayon yung ating development ng national vaccine industry dito sa ating bansa. Meron po bang ganun? Siguro yun na yung final final, Madam Chair. And mag-request po sana ako ng uh, mga uh, utang, no? Kasi yun naman yung sinabi, no? Mga utang, proposals. Kung proposals pa ito na utang, sabi nila 300 million US dollars sa World Bank and sa ADB. So, kung meron pong ano, DOF representative dito, maganda po sana maka-request ngayon ng mga ganung mga datos. Yun po, and yung vaccine industry. Okay, thank you, Kong Arlene. Uh, we'll just course through your uh, query to appropriate agency and uh, provide uh, answers. We'll send you the, their answers. Is that okay? Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Last, no. Second to the last to ask question is Representative Sara Elago. Do we still have Kong Sara Elago? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good afternoon to all. Ang naging patakaran ng Duterte administration sa taong 2020 tungkol sa balik eskwela ay no vaccine, no school opening. Nilinaw na ito ay may kinalaman sa resumption ng physical classes. Madam Chair, sarado pa rin ang mga paaralan para sa pagsasagawa ng limited na face-to-face -face classes. Ang tanong ko po sa DOH no, bilang head ng IATF sa so COVID-19, mananatili pa rin po ba ang palisiya na ito na walang bakuna, walang physical classes? Yes or no? DOH? Uh, Madam Chair, if I may respond. Yes, Ms. Ed. Yes, uh, yes ma'am. Uh, good afternoon po. Uh, Base po dun sa mga eksperto at saka sa mga rekomendasyon galing din sa Food and Drug Administration, children cannot receive the vaccines yet because there are no, uh, that hindi pa ho sapat ang ebidensya para makapagsabi that is going to work for children. So as hanggang sa wala pa ho tayong ganung uh, protocol and evidence, uh, yung pronouncement po ng presidente ay uh, susundin po natin until uh, our experts and maybe international uh, evidences will be uh, generated po na pwede na po natin mabigyan ng bakuna ang ating mga kabata. Madam Chair, uh, nakaasa lang po ba tayo sa bakuna? No, dahil uh, nung nagsimula po ang, ang pandemic, no, Marso, nasa 1.3 billion uh, students no, sa buong mundo po yung affected ng mga school closures. Uh, ngayon po, mula 1.3 billion, nasa uh, 300,000 na lamang yan. No, dahil uh, marami po no, sa mga bansa, if not partially open, ay fully opened na po. Uh, uh, pinapayagan na yung limited na face-to-face -face classes doon sa nasisimula po sila doon sa mga areas na may lowest uh, localized risk at, at transmission rates. Uh, nakaasa lang po ba tayo sa bakuna, Madam Chair? Uh, what are the other indicators for dynamic decision making on the reopening of schools for face-to-face -face classes? Madam Chair, if I may respond, please. Uh, Had you said. Yes po. Uh, Ma'am, uh, yun pong ating mga ginagamit na parameters, no? it's just not really the vaccine. Actually, bago po dumating yung variant dito sa ating bansa, 
uh, yung threat ng variant ay meron na ho talagang naging desisyon that magkakaroon na ng pilot itong face-to-face -face among the low risk classification ng mga areas. But when the threat of the variant uh, was... Uh, Uh, the president was informed of the threat of this variant, so he tentatively, no, temporarily suspended this face-to-face. -face. So, ang parameter po, uh, we are assuming, no, scientifically, na kapag ho yung mga priority population po natin, na bakunahan po natin, and we have reached that target, eventually, no, yung transmission po bababa, and we can eventually say that maybe the children, no, can be protected also. But of course, we know that there would be still that risk. Kaya nga po, ang payo ng mga eksperto natin, antayin natin. Kasi sa tingin, uh, base sa kanilang pag-aaral, I think in US already, no, with Pfizer, they're already studying this vaccine among children. So antayin lang po natin. Not, uh, vaccine is not the only parameter. Yun pong minimum public health standards, ay, uh, yun pa rin po ang ating inaasahan. Pagkatapos po, of course, yung mga low risk na areas that we have classified, uh, yun po naman ay makakatulong no? if ever magdidesisyon uli na magbubukas po tayo ng ating mga paaralan. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, nananawagan po ang representasyon na ito ng kabataan na pag-aralan po muli ng yung ginawang temporary uh, suspension no? pagdating dyan sa a dry run, yung staging na, na uh, pagbubukas po ng limited na face-to-face -face classes do doon sa mga lugar na walang kaso ng COVID-19 o yung may mga pinakamababang rates ng transmission at localized risk. Ang niiwasan po natin dito ay hindi po masakripisyo yung learning, the being ng mga learners habang pinibigyan ng prioridad no? yung kanilang kalusugan, yung kanilang mga kaligtasan, no? kasabay no? ng lahat po ng education stakeholders kung atuluyan po maantala no yung paghanda para sa ligtas na muling pagbubukas ng mga paaralan no malaki po ang impact niyan dun sa pangkabuan na pagtitiyak natin ng karapatan sa edukasyon ang mahirap madam chair dun sa pag-asa lamang sa bakuna kung delayed po yung pagbabakuna no kung hindi po malinaw no kung paano ba yung national guidelines no sa decision making sa school reopening ay madedelay rin no yung mga paghahanda, mga pag, mga pagpaplano para sa pagbubukas ng paaralan para sa in-person learning na meron ng established at napakaraming known na benefits para sa ating mga pag-aaral uh, at sa mga mag-aaral. No, kaya ang pwede po nating mga konsiderasyon, pwede po tayong kumuha ng uh, ng karanasan doon sa mga nagkaroon na ng tagumpay no pagdating sa partial or full opening no para dun sa mga lugar na pwede na at uh, titiyakin po natin no sa bahagi ng mga kabataan na tuloy-tuloy ang panawagan natin ng transparency at accountability sa regulation ng lahat ng COVID-19 vaccines uh, based sa efficacy at sa safety dahil napakalaki po ng epekto niyan hindi lamang sa pangkabuuan ng kabuhayan at trabaho kundi sa pag-aaral ng ating Uh, mga kabataan, ng mga estudyante sa buong bansa. Sinusuportahan din po natin ang naging panawagan no, ng mga naunang uh, legislators hinggil sa pag-aaral na tungkol sa pagpapalakas ng national uh, vaccine industry dito sa ating bansa. No panahon na, napalakasin natin yung uh, mga uh, resources, investment para sa science and technology, sa research and development no, para uh, parte ng paghahanda at sama-samang pagbangon natin Uh, tungo sa recovery mula sa COVID-19 pandemic. Maraming salamat, uh, Madam Chair, at uh, hingi po tayo para sa komite ng kabo ang report no, tungkol sa ugnayan po ng muling pagbubukas ng klase sa National Vaccination Program. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you, Kong Sara. Uh, do we still have Congresswoman BH? Kong BH, Congresswoman Bernadette Herrera D. Okay, I think wala na po siya. Before we adjourn, I have some questions to um, FDA. FDA or DOH, meron po akong phone-in question lang. Uh, although a uh, question ko din ito, doon po sa vaccines natin, for example, yung Pfizer kasi may EUA na, 
uh, kasama po ba doon sa indication or contraindication yung uh, patient na nagkaroon na ng COVID? How do we uh, treat them doon sa vaccination program? So kung halimbawa isang patient nagka-COVID siya recently, um, health worker siya, automatic ba kasama din siya doon sa vaccination program? Uh, Madam Chair, as of now, ang only contraindication for the Pfizer vaccine is severe allergies. Uh, and watch out for anaphylaxis lang. So right now, like yung mga ongoing vaccinations sa states at saka sa ibang bansa, yung mga nagka-COVID na, especially the health workers, are given the same, ano, the same dose and the same schedule. Okay, so hindi rin a requirement na magpa-swab ka muna before magpa-vaccine. Hindi po. Madam Chair, may I answer? Ah, okay, you said me or not. So in terms of, um, in terms of the Pfizer, tama si DJ Eric, but there's also a literature, yun ang sinasabi niya sa Eric, that we, we should look at the individual uh, specifications for the vaccine. What is being recommended for Pfizer is... Uh, you give the uh, vaccine 90 days after a positive COVID. Oh. But as a general rule uh, for all the vaccination, kahit meron siyang COVID or wala siyang COVID in the past, we will give the vaccination. But Music Eric also mentioned earlier na meron tayong screening at the time of the vaccination. So tatanungin din sila. Meron bang silang symptoms, etc. Et so that they can respond the uh, vaccination aside from the uh, severe contraindication and to Pfizer, ang severe contraindication lang are severe uh, allergies. There are also some manufacturers who are saying that uh, pwede din bakunahan yung mga may mga ibang comorbidities that they should be assessed by their doctor and the immunization should uh, occur in area ng pwede lang mabantayan. For example, HIV and AIDS. There are studies which show that uh, patients with HIV and AIDS have been given uh, vaccine. So, ang iniisip natin, when we now talk with comorbidities, pag-a-assign tayo ng special center for this uh, may mga special uh, area. So, we can have San Lazaro for all the HIV AIDS uh, positive or may link dyan na hindi basta-basta sa ordinary uh, vaccination facility sila magpapabakuna. There's a special team or a special place which we can designate para ma-assess so that their doctors can give the most signal if they can be given the vaccine at the moment. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yusek, clarify ko lang po. So, for example, you mentioned this is through uh, history taking no, or assessment of a certain uh, physician or vaccinator. So, tingnan nila kung merong symptoms sila, fever, cough, and colds. Uh, paano yung mga asymptomatic natin? Siyempre, ngayon marami na asymptomatic kung hindi sila magpa-test talaga ng uh, COVID, hindi natin malalaman na carrier sila. So, paano sila natin ngayon makakapture? Uh, Madam Chair, WHO recommends that the uh, testing is not uh, necessary whether asymptomatic, uh, asymptomatic sila. Uh, we will just... Uh, vaccinate because the testing have more logistical problems. So kung asymptomatic sila, whether they are COVID or asymptomatic uh, COVID, we still give the vaccine. Hindi naman yung sila nag-manifest ng symptoms at the moment. So uh, they can be given per WHO standard po. Okay, sige. So malinaw po yan. Uh, I don't know if Dr. Edsel is still with us. Nandito ba si Dr. Edsel Salvanya? Kasi he missed in his presentation to explain the difference between the types of vaccine. Kasi you said kanina yung uh, Pfizer is um, yung anaphylactic reaction, di ba? Kasi RN-based vaccine siya. And the other vaccine like AstraZeneca, viral vector vaccine. Gusto sana nating uh, marinig ano yung pagkakaiba ng uh, mga bakuna na yon. Uh, DJ Eric, kaya mo ba yung sagutin or any expert? Yun lang pong ano, it's really a matter of the vehicle that we're using. No? So the Chinese vaccines 
are mostly inactivated virus. No? So talaga pong ano, yung virus talaga siya, gets replicated biologically and then ina inactivate po yun. Uh, yung viral vector, galing po siya sa ibang virus, adenovirus po yung ginagamit nila. So ito po si Gamalea at uh, saka si AstraZeneca. No? This is from the adenovirus that causes colds. And then they take part of the, ano, uh, they, they change part of it na para pong mailagay po yung part ng, ano, ano, ng coronavirus, COVID-19, na makikilala po ng ating katawan. So, ibang ano po talaga siya, it's a completely different ano, uh, na technology. Yung MRA naman po, talagang ito, labo, kaya po siya mabilis gawin, ano, tsaka mas mura siya. Kasi talagang laboratory, completely laboratory, ano siya, uh, manufactured. Meaning that there's no virus. They only just get parts of the mRNA and then you synthesize it in the laboratory continuously. Kaya po siya mabilis gawin at saka mas mura and there's no virus at all involved. Nagkukuha lang po ng reaction yung cells natin pag pumasok yung mRNA sa atin. Yung cells natin produce then the, ano, the proteins that our immune system then uh, wakes up to and then starts building antibodies. Uh oh But uh, BG, uh, with mRNA-based vaccine, mas mataas ang um, anaphylactic reaction? Or yeah, um, mukha po. And it's not because of the vaccine itself, but because of the, apparently it's because of the, yung pong vehicle. Yeah. Uh, the chemical part that is included in the vaccine itself, which has already been identified. Okay, thank you. I think we have na representative BHD. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Pasensya na, naglolo ko, yung, naglolo ko kanina pa yung aking, ano. Anyway, Madam Chair, my question is, ano, I'd like to inquire regarding lang pinapatanong ni Speaker, paano natin madedetermine or ano yung ibibigay sa mga na-vaccinate na? Um, meron ba tong may ID ba, may card ba, para pag ano, ipapresent nila? And then, ang isa pa is, pag dumating from abroad, pag may dadating tayo from abroad, Um, i meron bang certification na dapat dalhin? Kasi nung nagtatanong ako sa IATF, parang wala pa daw policy ang bansa natin when it comes to vaccinated individuals coming in the Philippines. So I'd like to know kung ano na ang rule natin pagdating sa mga vaccinated na tadating sa bansa. Uh, Yusek Pier na. You said clear na. Thank you, Madam Chair. The answer is tama po si uh, uh, Congressman, Congresswoman na uh, Herrera na wala pang policy ang uh, IATF uh, as regards the uh, those coming in with, who are already vaccinated. But we will study that because it has been uh, it has been proven that uh, the vaccine is going to really prevent uh, transmission. It can prevent severe disease, as has been explained. But hindi pa aaralin ko ng mga eksperto and they will give us uh, uh, advice sa IATF kung uh, how they are going to tackle those who are already vaccinated and live down in the country. Maraming salamat po. But uh, so, timeline na, we issue, you will issue vaccination card, right? Yes ma'am. Yung mababakunahan po tayo, we will issue a vaccination card. We're trying to do it uh, digital. Kaya pag uh, on the day of the vaccination, after their pre-registration and registration, mag-issue po tayo ng uh, uh, vaccination certificate, uh, which includes, kagaya ng sabi ni Secretary kanina, kailan yung first dose, ano yung lot number, ano yung batch, so that uh, ano yung klase ng vaccine, para po ma-monitor natin kailan yung second dose nila, tapos ano po yung mga adverse uh, events, uh, para lang natin, na natatag po natin yung uh, klase ng vaccine na binigay sa uh, tao. Salamat po. Madam Chair, um, mga ano yung timeline for those coming in the country? Kasi yung policies, ano ang tinitingnan nilang timeline as to when the policies when it comes to that? Yung mga dumadating natin ng mga OFWs or yung mga dumadating na tourists or kung ano man na, ano na, vaccinated na. I have a similar question. Uh, kay Yusek Berheri kagabi kasi I have a friend coming home. Is, she's a Filipino pero vaccinated na siya in uh, Dubai. So I asked kung if she has that vaccination card, kailangan pa ba ng protocols? Do they have to follow pa the 14-day quarantine? 
Um, Yusek Berheri. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon po, uh, Congresswoman Herrera. Uh, according to experts and also you, you may find even WHO is recommending that as, at this certain point in time, uh, we still need to comply with the minimum public health standards even though we had been vaccinated already, primarily because the vaccines currently in the market and being provided to the different populations uh, do not have sufficient evidence that it can uh, uh, it is it, it can block transmission. So therefore, it can still uh, be an avenue. No, may risk pa rin po na magkaroon ng pagkalat ng sakit. Pangalawa po, wala pa rin sufficient evidence on how long the immunity will last if you receive the vaccine. So hindi pa rin po natin alam. That's why experts around the world are recommending that we still continue on to do the minimum public health standards even though we are vaccinated already. That's why the protocol of IATF as of this time would be that for every uh, passenger or traveler coming in the country uh, who has already been vaccinated in their originating country should still follow our protocols of quarantining and testing. Okay. Uh, thank you. Madam Chair, uh, another question. Um, Yung isang inaalala ng mga ano is that we are prepared, about we're preparing for the vaccines and all, but how prepared are we with the uh, syringes? Kasi natatakot ako baka maging, 3M, maging N95 na naman yan ng 3M na wala na tayong ano. Kasi all over the world na naman nag-aagawan na ng syringes as I was informed. So I just wanted, and then sinasabi sa amin, yung Philippines parang hindi pa nagpapareserve ng mga syringes. So I'm just afraid now, when the time comes that the vaccines are here, wala naman tayong enough syringes. So may I know ano ang plan natin doon? Have we set aside enough money? Have we reserved money already for that one? Madam Chair, may I answer? Okay. Uh, in terms of the logistics, yung tinatawag natin ancillary, we have already about 30 million worth of uh, syringes that are in our inventory and we are starting to procure the required uh, uh, logistics and ancillaries uh, for the rest of the vaccination. What we need to purchase immediately is if you are going to get the uh, Pfizer vaccine, they would require a 0.3 ml. Wala po sa regular uh, supply natin yan. So, yun po ang pinamadali natin para meron tayong uh, vaccine uh, ng syringes for them. Although Pfizer, we are looking at how Pfizer is going to come in. Uh, they are saying that makakasama na yung syringe, baka pre-filled syringe or there's a syringe that will be available. Nevertheless, we are now having our procurements for this uh, 0.3. We have already some inventory, but we continue to procure. This will come from the 2.5 billion of the uh, funds allocated under GAA for vaccine because we will not use it for vaccine per se, but it is for the peripherals, including uh, cold chain. So that is the 2.5 billion in the DOH budget. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, so Madam Chair, ibig sabihin, wala tayong problema na when it comes to syringes. I just don't want a repeat of what happened to the N95 na all over the world nag-aagawan tayo. So is that correct that we have 30 million in inventory, not for procurement, but in inventory? Yes. Yes, Madam Chair, based on the report of our logistics, but uh, we do not want to uh, have stock outs in the middle. So we, are, we have started uh, procuring, Madam Chair. How many... How many do we need in total to ensure? Kasi I'm sure yung 30 million nyo, kasama pa rin dyan yung mga regular vaccines na ginagawa sa mga health centers, tama? Or this uh, is just specifically for our vaccine program? Uh, both, Madam Chair. Uh, if you already need the uh, peripherals, our syringes for the uh, COVID vaccine, it will be available. Uh, we will pull some of the fun, uh, some of the materials from our a regular vaccination, but we, we will replenish them immediately. The uh, procurement are ongoing. So, Madam Chair, how many in total do we need to ensure that we are safe? Uh, we have computed for 70, 70 million. Uh, I don't have the data, Madam Chair, but we can uh, provide you the uh, requirements that we have uh, computed. 
Opo, um, sana po mag-submit because kung 70 million yan, ibig sabihin 40 million pa yung kulang natin. Then baka mamaya magkaagawan lang uh, and I'd like to make sure that um, we are already, you know, nakaprogram po tayo dyan sa portion na yan. Yes, Madam Chair, we will provide you the uh, schedules and the amounts that we have uh, and what we're already doing about these quantities. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, through you, sana po mag-present din sila sa atin kung paano nila balak gawin yung vaccination cards, kung may QR code ba yan para for contact tracing because this is really the perfect time na ma-monitor natin. So I hope there's a databasing system that's put in place and I wish that um, through you, Madam Chair, they can present to us um, that program because I don't want to start a vaccination program without the database system in place na naka-QR code dito or naka-ID ba yan or for 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 tracing lang ba para lang alam na alam natin kung sino na yung nabakunahan at hindi at atong klaseng bakuna ang natanggap nila at ganun din sa mga padating sa ating bansa. Um, I believe dapat lahat yan may card na yan kung nabakunahan sa isang bansa siya nabakunahan kung hindi pa papabakunahan ba pagdating sa airport. So ito yung mga polisiya na dapat ma-present po sa amin dito sa Kongreso. Through you, Madam Chair. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Kong BH. As promised by the Secretary, uh, he will give us an updates from time to time. No? Kasi yung mga development in the coming days and months, uh, pwedeng magbago yung vaccination plan nila. So rest assured that uh, this committee will uh, work closely with the Department of Health at tutulungan din natin sila na magkaroon ng uh, communication or strong uh, information dif dissemination doon sa grassroots natin. I have question pa uh, kay DG. Thank What you. Is, Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Kong BH. Uh, DG, ano ang halal status ng ating uh, mga vaccines? Especially yung Pfizer, no? Dahil may EUA na siya uh, for the benefit of our Muslim brothers and sisters. Um, we will ask, ano, we will ask Pfizer about it, because hindi uh, wala kami information on their halal, ano, if they even applied for it sa halal board. But okay. uh, let me, ano, I will write Pfizer and ask them, and I will relay, ano, their answer for them. Also, yung mga uh, vaccines natin na on process ang assessment ng ating uh, expert panel siguro dapat maisama siya, no, doon sa in inquire natin. We will ask them uh, when uh, all of our applicants. We will ask them if they have any halal certification. Okay, thank you, DG. Last question: uh, Ano yung mga measures na ginagawa nyo at this time to guarantee that there will be no unauthorized or illegal use of vaccines? Well, so you, what we're doing now is we're coordinating already with them. We do anticipate na once we start bringing in vaccines, papasok din po ang market. Legal, no? Counterfeit, pwede pong parallel uh, import, pwede pong ibibibenta. No? So we're coordinating now very closely with customs, NBI, and the PNP. Kaila General Sinas na ano po, the bold uh, Sinas, para po talagang maging, ano, maging strict tayo at controlled. And of course, We'll coordinate with DOH para po dun sa supply chain kung alam natin saan dadaan yung legal. Uh, talaga pong the whole government is anticipating na may makapapasok po talaga pag ganyan na may papasok na legal. Pero di gustong sasabay po dyan na illegal and more working on it. Okay, thank you so much. Maraming salamat sa lahat ng ating uh, guests from 9 a.m. till 4.30 p.m. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa... Uh, cooperation and for your time no so can we hear the favorite motion do we still have members on board na wala na sila lahat so parang wala na mag motion to adjourn kung alfred uh, hi madam chair i uh, hi. for the adjournment of this very fruitful and meaningful committee meeting Okay, there's a motion to uh, adjourn this uh, meeting. Ako yata ang magsisecond the motion. <laughs> uh, the motion is approved. Thank you so much. Sobrang informative po yung ating uh, hearing and productive. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat, to the members and all resource persons.
Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.